NBC Sports presents the best of the National Football League, the American Football Conference. Brought to you by Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Hertz, where the winners rent. By Chrysler Corporation. See the mileage makers at your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by Radio Shack, the nationwide supermarket of sound. Underway. Harper circles under, takes it at the 14. He's to the 20, the 25, and returns to the 29 yard line. Randy Rich of the Browns is the man who made the tackle along with Ron Bolton. The officials will spot the ball at the 30 yard line. Matt Robinson is the quarterback. Notice the wrapping on that right hand. That can give him some problems, Lynn. Well, that's, they're going to take an opportunity to see what he does from center because they do not want to fumble at this stage of the game. Scott Durking, number 25, Kevin Long, 33, are the two running backs. Kevin Long gets the first call, and he picks up three yards to the 33. It'll be second down and seven. Mike St. Clair makes the tackle. The wide receivers. Wesley Walker, number 85, and Derek Gaffney, number 81. Jerome Barkham is the tight end. Number 85, Wesley Walker. He is the game breaker for the New York Jets. Undoubtedly, he's going to be double covered most of the afternoon by the Cleveland Browns. Second down, seven. Walker wide to the near side. Kevin Long. 38 yard line, third down and two. Gary Shirk, Mickey Sims makes the tackle. We'd like to welcome those of you across the nation that are now joining us. The Cleveland Browns kicking off to the New York Jets. The Jets have the ball at their own 38-yard line, third down and two. This has been their opening series. Mickey Schuler comes in, two tight ends on the set. Woody Bennett, Clark Gaines, and Kevin Long are in. Third down and two. Clark Gaines in motion. First down, Kevin Long. To the 41-yard line, Tom Darden made the tackle. The offensive line for the Jets from left to right is Chris Ward, Randy Rasmussen, Joe Fields, Eric Cunningham, and Marvin Powell. You know, you talk about that offensive line of the New York Jets. Many feel it is as good as any offensive line in the National Football League, particularly the two offensive tackles, 72 Chris Ward, 79 Marvin Powell. Jets first down their own 41. Opening drive of the ball game. Bruce Harper, who stayed in, he is brought down at the 45-yard line by Lyle Alzado, and he picks up four yards on the play. Number 77, Lyle Alzado. He has a little stunt going on right now. He's taking the inside, and he happens to be guessing right because he's going right in the direction of the ball carrier. And he comes up and makes the tackle along with number 59, Charlie Hall. But he made about three yards. Second down and six. Gaffney in motion. First pass is complete to Walker. First down, down the sidelines, out of bounds. Oliver Davis stops it. Well, there's a man they want to get the football to, number 85, and particularly in the open field with his tremendous speed. They want a, a defensive back. They have to make an open field tackle on him. Quick screen, faking to the back. Not much of a fake at all, but getting the ball out quickly to the wide receiver. And there's one-on-one -on -one situation out there. And I guarantee you that Oliver Davis, number 21, would not like to come up and make the tackle on 85 Wesley Walker all afternoon. At the Cleveland 47-yard line, first down. Second first down of the ball game for the Jets. Jerome Barkham in the slot shows motion. Scott Durkee, the ball carrier. Charlie Hall was there for the defense. Let's look at that Cleveland defense with Mike St. Clair, Mickey Sims, Jerry Shirk, 
and Lyle Alzado up front. Lyle Alzado, number 77, is the new man in town, and they need his pass rush. But the man that stabilizes that defense, number 72, Jerry Shirk, talked to him before the ball game. He said he's healthy, ready to play. Linebackers, Charlie Hall, Dick Ambrose, Clay Matthews starting on the right side. Walt Michaels, the head coach of the Jets. Second down, a little over four. Durking. It'll be close to a first down. Mickey Sims makes the tackle. The secondary for Cleveland, Ron Bolton and Oliver Davis on the corners. Clarence Scott and Tom Darden at the safety. They've got a good defensive unit back there, particularly number 27, Tom Darden, who was an all-pro free safety last year. They're down and one. The ball just outside the Cleveland 37-yard line. So again, Mickey Schuler comes in, two tight ends, and Clark Gaines comes in. Three running backs, Scott Durkin, Kevin Long, and Clark Gaines. Gaines on the right wing, third and one. Durkin, it will be close. He is on the skin part of the infield. May have had a little trouble with his footing, and he had a lot of trouble with the Cleveland defense. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you, in a short yardage situation like that, a very key man is the middle linebacker because the defensive line is bunched up, and they're going to be pinching inside. Number 52, Dick Ambrose, is free, and he has to read that play, and he has to go. He can't be waiting around looking. He's got to create something and try to get in the backfield and get some uh, penetration. He did that time. Whether it was soon enough or not, we'll see right now. First down. That shows you, Charlie, just how quickly that middle linebacker has to react because Ambrose reacted very quickly on that situation, made a good play, but still wasn't good enough for the, to stop him from making the first down. At the Cleveland 36-yard line, first down. New York Jets have a good drive going here for the first one of the 1979 regular season. They stay now with two tight ends. The remaining back is Kevin Long. This is a throwing formation. They give instead to Long. He jumps outside. He's in trouble. Picked up a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight. Kyle Alzado is there. Number 52, Dick Ambrose on that last play along the line of scrimmage. That middle linebacker has to be quick from side to side because he has to beat blockers to the to the ball carrier, and he does does a fine job. Number 52, Dick Ambrose. And here's, he made the play, even though he didn't make the tackle. He made that back change direction, enabling the rest of the defensive pursuing team to come up and make the tackle. Second down and eight. Now Robinson has thrown only one pass. It was complete to Walker. Breaking clean is Kevin Long. He may have the first down. Jerry Church finally stops it. I'll tell you what Robinson did very well that time. They came up. They didn't let the Cleveland Browns get set. They went on a quick count, and I think they caught them before they were really set to play defense. Side of a good quarterback is a quarterback that's going to change his cadence. He'll go on a quick count, he'll go on medium range counts, and then he'll go on long counts, trying to confuse that defense. Make sure that they're the ones that are playing defense and not the offense playing defense. If that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like Matt Robinson's having any problems with that, that bad thumb right now. But he's only thrown one time. And he, you notice that the pass that he threw was a very sure pass. Third down and about an inch to go for the first down. 26 yard line. Lynn, do you gamble here? Do you go deep in the end zone or well, do you just pick up the first down? I think what they're going to do is go for the first down because they've had successes on the last two occasions. They don't want to bog down now. They figured they can make a couple of inches going straight ahead. Short yardage situation, Durking Long and game two tight ends. Kevin Long dies and puts back. Dick Ambrose met him over the top, and Clay Matthews, the right linebacker, was also there. Well, I'll tell you, they talk about middle linebackers, but so far, number 52, Dick Ambrose, is showing me something because he's been in all, all these plays, these crucial plays, but unfortunately, number 77 is Lyle Alzado. Take a <laughs> Uh, Lyle says, I, give me anything that I can get a hold of, whether it's a face mask, the headgear, or anything. Yeah. Just give me a part of that different colored jersey. And he tried to get the football, too. First down, just outside the 25-yard line of Cleveland. Jets started this drive back on their own 30-yard line. This is the 12th play of the drive. Sweep right side with Bruce Harper. 18-yard line. Alzado coming down the line, makes the tackle on Bruce Harper. That play didn't look like much, but it picked up about six yards. 
in order to get outside somebody has to be doing some blocking on that offensive unit second down and four just outside the 18 yard line Walker goes wide to the far side Gaffney is wide to the near side running backs are split through Harper and Kevin Long now they close up formation Kevin Long was shut down by the defensive right side of the Browns. Cut back inside and was brought down by Mike Sinclair. Charlie, a good running back, has to be heavy, running with his head up to make sure that he knows where his offensive linemen are blocking the defensive linemen. They're too big on defense to take him where they don't want to go. So what you do is just block him. Number 72 is Jerry Shirk, an outstanding uh, defensive lineman. And he's going to be blocked on by 65, Joe Fields. And Joe just took him the way that he wanted to go and the back cut behind him. At the 13-yard line, first down. Turkey. He has three yards on the play, and Jerry Shirk, the defensive right tackle, the 10-year veteran, was there along with Clay Matthews from USC. Matthews, number 57, was the number one draft choice a year ago, but he was injured in preseason, into the first part of the season. He really didn't know what he could do. He has come on to beat out Gerald Irons as starting right linebacker. Charlie, they just made that, that decision this morning to go with Matthews as opposed to Gerald Irons. Second and seven. Second pass for Robinson. Incomplete. He was going over the middle. Kevin Long was there. Barkham was also in the neighborhood. And he may have been just throwing it away. No, he wasn't throwing it away. That ball took off on him. That was like an up shoot pass. A thing that you don't want down there because there was a couple of safety men back there in the end zone that almost had a hand on him. They what, can't afford to give it up down here. What causes the ball to take off? The release, that he, the way he releases the football. Is that thumb? The thumb definitely has a factor. Okay. Definitely a very He's got tape on that jam thumb that he suffered a couple of days ago. Third down and seven. Robinson slips. He'll be sacked. He's dropped back at the 17 of the 18-yard line. By Lyle Alzado. Yes, sir, you're talking about the man that they wanted to put pressure on the quarterback. The thing they did not have last year was a good pass rush. The acquisition of number 77, Lyle Alzado, they hoped would solve some of that problem, and it did. Firstly, there was good coverage in the secondary because there wasn't anybody open. Otherwise, Robinson would have released the football. Pat Leahy with a field goal attempt. It will be from... 25-yard line, an attempt of 35 yards. Timoresco holding. It is up. It is good. The score, the New York Jets three, the Cleveland Browns nothing. We'll be back to Shea Stadium with a kickoff in a moment. Seeing Galbraith of the setbacks, and Archie wants a little quiet. We haven't had any of that since about high noon today at the Superdome. <laughs> Galbraith to the 21 yard line. Harris. Uh, they're giving that a little short turnout. Manning will go back to it. Harris caught about six or seven passes today. Both these quarterbacks have just been outstanding. No fumbles, no interceptions. Unreal. No turnovers. Really is. Very few penalties. Opening Cut. day of the new season. That's right. There it is. 10 out of 14. Manning. Blitz. He's got it. It's gathered in by Chandler. Chandler took it away from Bias. I tell you, Wes Chandler, look at him. He's got his hand in the air. The best game he had last year was at heaven for 117 yards. And he just must love to play against the Falcons. The Saints picked up the blitz. And Archie Manning, he knows he's got a man-on-man -man down the left sidelines. Look at this catch. Wes Chandler. Ricky Bias was all over Chandler. And he comes up with the football. 42-yard pickup. Arella Harris to the right side, Chandler left. Chandler. Manning. 
Childs incomplete. Remaining in the third quarter. This is third and ten at the 31 yard line. Manning. Incomplete penalty marker. Penalty marker. Mike Harris, the intended receiver. Rollin Lawrence, the defender. That's Lawrence. That's Lawrence. He may have pushed him. Mike Harris was cutting to the post. The interference, let's see if we can pick it up. First and 10. I'll tell you one thing, Harris was open too. Manning goes back, good pass protection, sets up in the pocket right here. Uh, you really can't see it, but he was pushed just a little bit before that. And now Lawrence looks around right away for the referee. Harris left. Muncie. Fumble the ball, but had the whistle. It was a fumble. Today it's different. Second and eight at the 13 yard line. Mike Harris across. Manning bootleg and now throws to the corner and it is touchback. It is a touchback intercepted in the end zone by Frank Reed. It'll be first and ten at the 20 yard line for the Atlanta Falcons. Well, man, I think even Ohio State Stadium has had this much noise at this point. Little with another fine kick. He's done a job today. Here comes Manning. Manning to the 15. Look out, and he's out to the 19, and what a hit. Manning annihilated on the far side, as that was Ken Green, also Roy Green over there, after a 16-yard return, and the Cardinals are fired up. Well, the ball's in Dallas's court now. You've got a good offense? Show us, because we just took the lead. And again, Jimmy Hart has been one of the great quarterbacks at taking your mistake and getting on the board very quickly. Been pointed out to us that one, and look at that drive, 32 yards on the fumble recovery by Worley. We pointed out to us one of the outstanding special teams player for the Cardinals. John Bearfield is not in the lineup. He has suffered a slight concussion, and he won't be back. So the hitting has been something here today. From the 18-yard line, first down, Saldi in motion. Quick pitch, Ron Springs. Springs having footing problems, and St. Louis is fired up. That's quite apparent, isn't it? That's Carney that makes the big tackle, number 56. It looks to me like Dallas is using a lot of different fronts and sets now. Good blocking there by Donovan. Looks to me like Springs is feeling his way a little bit right now. He just slipped that time, sort of looking for somewhere else to go. The question is, would Landry bring in Dorsett? Springs, 9 for 14, and now in a seesaw affair. Is that final now? It is. Minnesota defeated San Francisco 28 to 22 in a nip and tuck game. Sammy White recovered a fumble for a touchdown. All right, here comes Ron Springs trying to go wide on a second down and 10, and nothing developing is Tim Carney, number 56. He is playing like he's obsessed. He's telling Starbuck, I want some more of that. He says, I want some of you, I guess. He looks like he was challenging everybody. Well, you he, know, Tim has had some problems with his temper, but he's gotten it under control this year. Well, they, they used to say he was wacky, but the one thing he does is really hit people. He used to hit before the play and after the play a lot. Now he's hitting during the play. Look at this tackle. Third down and nine. Starbuck from the shotgun will try somehow to get the Cowboys moving. On the third down and nine, the shotgun, good protection. He throws Preston Pearson. Had he caught it, he would have had a first down, but he couldn't hang on. And you do not see Preston Pearson do that very often. Ball was surely catchable. And of course, he just doesn't miss them. Pretty much self-explanatory. He had 47 right catches a year ago. That's not indicative of what Dallas usually does. No, they're usually just over 50%. Look at this. He says, I threw it right in there. Don't you want me to throw it and catch it? So now Landry's looking for Pearson. <laughs> Danny White, as you look at Willard Harrell standing back, at the 35-yard line, there's his average, 41 yards, a fine kick. Fair catch is called for by Harrell, and he's got it at the 41-yard line. A 40-yard kick by Danny White, and the roar is deafening here at Bush Memorial Stadium. As the Cardinals with that one-point lead, they have the football from the 41. I thought it was rather interesting that on the sidelines, on the Dallas sidelines, that there's a great debate about whether Roger threw the ball correctly or not over there. And 
it's not that uh, all teams don't have these problems, but of all the teams I've ever seen with a lot of superstars, Landry's managed to keep all the egos at a pretty decent level, better than any coach at, of all time. And you can see Pearson and Staubach discussing that last play. Anderson and Morris now from the 41-yard line, a first down. 2-11 to go, third quarter. Hard on first down, pumps once. He's got Tilly almost intercepted by Aaron Kyle. Boy, was that close, and Kyle almost had one. He wouldn't have been able to run with it, but he had had the interception. All right, here's the young man that caught the TD pass, turns it in, comes about. Look at Kyle, though, the number one draft pick from Wyoming. You just can't play it any better than that. In another Eastern Division battle, we have a final. The Giants and Eagles, and the Eagles won it, but not easily. Giants playing good defense, as always. The Giants play the Cardinals next week in New York. Second down, 10 from the 41 and a half yard line. 2.07 remaining in this third quarter, 14-13 St. Louis. This is Wayne Morris, and Morris has Brunig all over him. And he's gonna pick up two yards at best. And Dallas with that good reaction defense that time, particularly Bob Brunig, a man shaken up on the play now for St. Louis. You know that we haven't had a call yet for Harvey Martin, number 79. That's Terry Steve that's getting up to sacks two years ago, 16 last year, and they said he was coming back healthy and a new Harvey Martin. He wanted to regain his stature. Joe Bostic has replaced Steve. He's the third-round draft pick, a rookie out of Clemson. They like him, but obviously he doesn't have a lot of experience. Third down and eight. Hart is hit as he tries to throw. Is it fumbled? Yes, it's an incomplete pass. There for a moment, picking up the ball was Dennis Thurman. You thought that ball might be live, but it was ruled an incomplete pass. Who is it that makes the move? Henderson? It's the, yep, it's Hollywood Henderson. I believe the arm was going forward, but the ball wasn't on the hand. That's going to be a pretty close call. I don't, you know, I believe that the right arm went through, but the ball was already gone. <laughs> How did he Henderson. get through there so quickly? He's like a... A reptile. He came right by Brahaney, and Brahaney never even saw him. He played in the Pro Bowl in 1978, and Henderson wants to return. Back deep goes Wayne Manning, as to kick the ball will be Little again. Steve Little. No rush put on this time. He didn't hit it well. Off the side of his foot, he's getting a roll, though, and it's going to roll out at the 20-yard line. I think Bratkowski give his signs. If we start the fourth quarter, he had a chance to talk to David Whitehurst. This is Dick Stockton along with Johnny Morris. Six to three, the Bears lead. Second and 12 for Whitehurst. Barty Smith, Tredell Middleton, 80 to 34 in the backfield. Whitehurst to throw. He uh -oh. has time. He's going to go to Lofton. Double covered, and Lofton oh. had it and dropped it. He had it and dropped it at the 38-yard line. Schmidt and Plank were there. The ball came right up over the top, and sometimes those are tough to, when it comes right over the top of your head. And the pass was there, though, right in the old bread basket, and he dropped it. Uh, tough break for the Packers. They're now going to go from a third and 12 situation. The Bears know it's going to be a pass, and they've got their six defensive backs in. Let's see if he can pick off a signal here, John. Johnny. Okay. I'll bet you it's a pass. <laughs> well, they've already given it to him. Okay, third and 12. Three wide receivers in. Tullus 87 comes in. Under Thompson in the slot. Whitehurst has time, but he better get rid of it. Incomplete. He was trying to pass. It is an incompleted pass. Alan Page was the initial impetus on Whitehurst. He had enough time, but you just can't live forever in that pocket. Let's see it again. The Bears had the Packers covered downfield, and Whitehurst wanted to throw, but he saw them covered, so he tried to hang on and hang on there. He's so he waited, he waited, and he just waited a little bit too long as Alan Page was, came off the ground, and Mike Hartenstein was also in on a good play by the Bear defense, tenacious. Whitehurst now 5 for 17, 92 yards. David Beverly. And deep to Walter Scheid. Walter Scheid could get a good run back here. Penalty marker down. Dave Simmons. The Bears are going to be penalized for either clipping or holding I or something think. like that. 45-yard kick, and Sampson is, is hurt, and I think it was a clip. Personal foul against the Bears. As you know, there are new rules. You can't cut a man now on the, on the uh, 
special teams. You've got to hit him above the waist. And sometimes in the reaction of what you're doing on the game, it's the first game they, they might forget or by instinct when you've been doing something for 15 or 20 years. Personal foul, clipping, number 84 on the run back, first down. Bosch Nagel. Let's see if we can take a look and see Bash Nagel's 84. He didn't hit him, uh, cut him, he just hit him in the back. Well, the Philadelphia Eagles held off and beat the Giants 23 to 17, and we have a, a lot of close games in the NFL, including this one at Soldier Field. I can't from the 20. I can't even start my car in the morning. He's got a 780 miles an hour. He gets. I wonder what his gas mileage is. <laughs> Here is Newhouse trying to go wide, and he has five, six, seven yards. Robert Newhouse, Pat Donovan threw a big block, number 67 for Dallas, and that gave Newhouse the running room. So did Young Springs. Watch number 20 to the right of your screen now. The rookie from Ohio State gets out in front, and he and Donovan together sort of team up. Don't do a bad job out there. Cardinals are falling like redwood. Ken Stone getting a shoulder into him. Picked up of six, and the Jets in his late starting game leading Cleveland three to nothing. Leahy, Leahy's 34 yard field goal. There's Tom Landry on a second down and three. He doesn't even perspire. This is Ron Springs. He's got some running room and a first down as he's out to the 33 yard line. Bob Pollard made the stop. And Ron Springs being welcoming into the National Football League. He has been indoctrinated in a hurry in a real rivalry here today. Good job by Fitzgerald, the offensive center, who, by the way, is healthy, completely healthy for the first time in a long time. And when he is, the big Irishman from up uh, in Massachusetts is really a fine football player, an offensive center. I understand the injury to T Terry Steve, not all that serious. He had the wind knocked out of him. He will be back when the Cardinals get the football. 30 seconds to go in this third quarter. From the 33, a first down. Staubach to Newhouse. Newhouse, a lot of congestion to the 35-yard line. Keith Simons, number 70, seeing a lot of action. He's been in there quite a bit now in place of Charlie Davis at that nose tackle spot. I wonder how young Jim Cooper, number 61, is faring at right tackle. That was Rayfield Wrights for years, and then young Frederick was in there, and... And now young Cooper, who's really sort of a free agent. Well, you know, they thought that Rayfield Wright would be 100%, but he's had the knee. Pat Leahy with a 35-yard field goal, 16 plays on a drive that covered 53 yards, 7 minutes, 52 seconds, time consumed. Ricky feature number 83. But the key man on the return is number 89, Keith Wright, for the Cleveland Browns. And Pat Leahy will be kicking off. From the 35 yard line. Two yards deep in the end zone, right out to the 10, the 15, 20, breaks it. Excellent return near the 40 yard line. Keith Wright in his second year from Memphis State. Ken Stroy is the man who made the tackle. Wright drafted in the fifth round a year ago. So now the Browns, for the first time in this season, when it counts, go on offense. With Brian Seip at quarterback, Greg Pruitt and Mike Pruitt are the two running backs. Look for Mike Pruitt today. I think he's going to be a big man in this offensive attack for the Cleveland Browns because the Jets undoubtedly will be keying on 34, Greg Pruitt. Cleveland from their own 40-yard line. Rucker in motion. Second back through with a flag down is Greg Pruitt. Dan Blinka makes the tackle along with Joe Pellegrini, but there was a marker on the play. The opening drive of the Jets, there was not a flag. Penalty against the Browns, it is refused. The receivers for Cleveland, Dave Logan and Reggie Rucker on the outside. Here's the call from the referee, Fred Silva. Three, defense, grabbing the face mask. Illegal motion, replay. Okay, we had offsetting penalty. So we'll bring it back to the 40-yard line, and the down will go over. Ozzie Newsom is the tight end joining Reggie Rucker and Dave Logan as the three receivers. Ozzie Newsom, the tight end number 82, is going to be, an, he's an outstanding tight end right now. In his second year, they feel he's really going to be super. Dave Logan, Reggie Rucker, they have played very little so far this preseason because of injuries. Really, this is their first full game. So we 
start all over with offsetting penalties from the Cleveland 40. Mike Pruitt. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Marty Lyons is there along with Stan Blanca. The offensive line for the Cleveland Browns, Doug Deacon, George Beeler, Tom DeLeon, Robert E. Jackson, and Henry Shepard. It's a good offensive line, and Byron, uh, Brian Seidt felt that that offensive unit of the Cleveland Browns can move the football against anybody. Head coach Sam Ritigliano of Cleveland. On defense, they have a Robert L. Jackson on offense of Robert E. Jackson. I asked Sam, you know, what do you call him? He said, I call him Robert Offense and Robert Defense. <laughs> Second and ten. Rucker in motion. Sight throw. It is there on target. Reggie Rucker is out of bounds near the first down. Bobby Jackson was chasing him for the New York Jets. They'll spot it right at the 50-yard line. We'll see how they call it. It will be a first down. Reggie Rucker missed most of the preseason because of a, a leg pull or muscle in his leg pull. But Looked like he was completely free and healthy on that play. Defensive line for the New York Jets this year. They are 4-3 with Lawrence Pillars, Joe Pellegrini, Joe Klecko, and Marty Lyons up front. Joe Klecko, number 73, he's the man that makes things happen out there for the New York Jets. He's playing that defensive right tackle position. 50-yard line, first down. Jets lead it 3 nothing. Greg Brewer to the 45, to the 40, and then out of bounds. Donald Ike was chasing him. They'll mark him out around the 38-yard line. It's a first down. Some outstanding blocking on this play. And, of course, what the Cleveland Browns want to do is get the ball to number 34, Greg Pruitt. And you can see 64, George Beeler out. Number blocking 82. Talking about the tight end, Newsom. He does a good job of blocking number 59, linebacker Martin for the New York Jets, enabling Pruitt to jump outside and get the first down. There's a lot of blocks that have to be executed very well on a wide play like that. That time... Cleveland Browns did it. At the New York 38-yard line, first down Cleveland. Greg Pruitt, right side, big hole. Brought down near the 30-yard line by Burgess Owens. The linebackers for the Jets are Greg Buttle, Stan Blinka, and Bob Martin. Number 54, the middle linebacker, Stan Blinka, according to the, the Jet coaching staff and Walt Michaels, is a real pleasant surprise because they figured he was good, but they didn't think he was going to be as good as he is right now this soon. He's doing a very good job for them, and he is not making mistakes defensively. Drafted in the fifth round from Sam Houston State. He went there, by the way, on a track scholarship. And the track coach was also the football coach to Vince McCann and play football. Second down and two. The New York 30-yard line straight ahead is Mike Pruitt leaves near the 26. He'll have the first down. The secondary for the Jets, Bobby Jackson, Donald Dykes, the rookie at right corner, Schaefer Suggs, Burgess Owens at the safety. Number 26, uh, Donald Dykes, not only does an outstanding job playing defense, but he is dynamite in rushing that punter and that extra point and field goal kicker. He's blocked two already in preseason. First down, Cleveland, New York 26-yard line. 12 seconds on the 30-second clock. They take a lot of time. Seven seconds. Five seconds. The play gets off with three seconds on the 30-second clock. Good on a sweep is out of bounds. This is Mike Pruitt of Purdue. Marty Lyons, the number one draft choice from Alabama, defensive right end, and Bob Martin, the right linebacker, were both chasing him. A gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. You can credit a fine defensive effort that time by number 22, Burgess Owens, to number 93, Marty Lyons, because... They wouldn't let him inside. They kept stringing out that offensive line and stringing it out till the rest of the pursuing defensive units could catch up. Second down nine at the New York 25-yard line. And then, like we said in the opening, both ball clubs, strong offenses last year. They start with strong offenses this year. Quick over, Greg Pruitt. Pruitt's in the clear. Inside the 10-yard line. 34. Greg Buttle makes the stop on Greg Pruitt. That was and a, Bobby Jackson was also there. Charlie, a quick opening play that time on a quick count, hoping to catch New York Jets. Maybe uh, not totally prepared for the play. Number 54, Stan Blinka. He's making a read, but he is dead because number 54, the center, Tom DeLeon, is right there. He had the proper angle to block him, and there was no way that Blinka could make the play. Good execution by the Cleveland Browns. 
at the eight yard line. First down goal to go Cleveland. Jets lead it 3-0. 342 time remaining. First quarter from Shea Stadium. Mike Pruitt. Close to the five yard line. It'll be second down and goal to go. And Joe Klecko makes the tackle. Of course, a lot of ball games starting earlier today. Houston had to come from behind to defeat Washington 29 27. It was Philadelphia over the Giants 23 17. Giants uh, gave him a bit of trouble early, but that was it. Final in a close one. Look at this. Hello. And Minnesota over San Francisco, but the 49ers put more points on the scoreboard than anybody thought they would. Good to trouble. Good defensive play. Greg Bottle, and listen to the fans here at Shea Stadium. There was absolutely no place for him to go on that play because the defensive unit of the New York Jets really did a fine job. You see, it's a pitch out, hoping to get outside or hoping to cut back. He doesn't care, but Bottle, 51, is playing very, very well. And Lawrence Pillars 76 is the man who Lawrence caused a lot of coming up from the inside, making sure he could not cut back. So Pruitt had absolutely nowhere to go. Good defensive play by the New York Jets. So it's now third down goal to go at the 12. And don't forget the Browns, of course. If Don Katra, an excellent field goal kicker. Type the throw. Sends everybody out. It is there. Touchdown. To Greg Pruitt. He had to he had to pinpoint that pass. Reggie Rucker, number 33, was also out there, but 34 Pruitt was coming down and running toward the corner of the end zone. They had a blitz on, but it was picked up very nicely by the Cleveland Browns. Good release, good timing by Brian Brian Sipe. Pruitt is there, six points on the board. 60 yards on the drive in 10 plays, and Cockroft to attempt the point after. Dave Logan holds. The kick is up. There's a flag down. The kick was through the uprights, but there's a marker on the play. Offsides against the Jets. It will be refused. And the point count. So it is. Cleveland 7. And the New York Jets 3. We'll be back in a moment. Let's see what uh, Dave Beverly did following his punt here. Well, he got a little love hug from Lee Kuntz right here after he kicked the ball, but there was just a little tap on the shoulder to let him know he was there, and down went Beverly. Very good job, but no penalty call. Let you know it's a contact game, David. First and 10 at the 32-yard line for the Bears. Peyton has carried 27 times this afternoon for 90 yards. Ball at the 32. Long count by Phipps. He goes up the middle to Williams. Williams picks up five yards about, so it'll be second and about five. Phipps 11 for 19 through the air for 68 yards. One interception by Michael Hunt, which resulted in the Green Bay score, Markle's 28-yard field goal. Robin Earl is on the bench. He's on crutches, and Skabinski has the knee injury. And it was, we told you, as you know, Eddie Lee Ivory has suffered a twisted knee. Second and six, not a good day at all for the running backs. Second and six at the 36, Peyton. Doesn't get anywhere. Gary Weaver. Might have set him back a yard. He'll be third down. This is the fourth quarter. The Bears are going against a very strong wind, while the Packers will have the wind at their backs, which could benefit them later on in the quarter. But right now, it looks to be a 15 or 20 mile an hour wind from the looks of the flags. Third and four at the 39 yard line. Opening minutes here of the fourth quarter. Six to three. Three wide receivers in there. Bashnagel, Richards, and Scott for Chicago. Phipps has time. Peyton has it, gives ground. He has a first down. Walker Peyton is loose. He's at the 45 and the 40, and he's tackled inside the 40-yard line. And talk about field sense. Walker Peyton grabbed it, gave ground, and then looked for room. And in an open field, you can forget about it. Simply a fantastic play by Walter Peyton. As Mike Phipps went back, the Packers in their standard four-man rush could not get the pressure on Phipps. Peyton came out of the backfield, and watched the grab. This was not an easy catch. 
He came back, juggled the ball, and just instinct. This is just cat-like moves as he cuts back and forth on the field. Barber tries to get him from behind. Finally, it takes three or four Packers to bring him down, but not before Chicago has a first down. 38-yard line of Green Bay, but no amount of statistics could ever show you what Peyton did on that play. Here's Walter again. Scrambles up for a couple of yards. Barzalaskis makes the stop. Maybe a yard, second and nine for the, the Bears. Dominated the first half, but could manage two field goals. And in the second half, Green Bay with an interception, better field position, very much in the game at 6-3. That's the score, 6-3, the Bears in front. 87, Cobb is the tight end. Strong side is to the left. Scott, 89, is wide left. Up the middle goes Williams for a couple. Terry Jones, and now a problem with Douglas. Michael Cobb was in out there getting to know each other very well down there. And sometimes they get too familiar, I guess. But it's a physical game. Every man reacts differently to getting hit. Am I right? You were in there. And I would say that's that's the case, and you gotta be tough. Third and seven at the 35. Five backs in there for the Packers. They show a blitz, but they don't come at all. And Phipps pass complete to Walter Payton. Payton gets by one. He's at the 20. And he can't spin away inside the 20-yard line. Boy, you better have a lot of clamps to bring him down. Estes Hood. Boy, did he put a move on Douglas. Mike Douglas, number 53. Left He's him got in the an dirt. impossible job. Here comes Peyton out of the backfield. Now watch the moves. I hope we get a chance to see it. But anyway, he made a move and cut to the right, and there was no way that Douglas could stay with him. Impossible. He made the dive, tried to stop him, and finally, up comes Hood to make the tackle. Another first down. Ball at the 18-yard line. Walter Peyton carrying the ball, gaining the yardage, catching passes now in this fourth quarter. Both wide receivers out to the left for Mike Phipps. Up the middle goes Williams, and he gets to the 12-yard line. Good run for Williams. Peyton now, by the way, has caught four passes for 49 yards. He has rushed for 93. Straight ahead here. Here goes Williams. Good block by Dan Neal. Finally, the Packers stop him, but they created the hole. You saw the gap there. You create gaps like that, you're going to get yards and bring it right on down. And Johnny, they can be so conscious of Peyton and what he can do on the outside. And they've been vulnerable to that inside run in the past, and they certainly were there. Second and four. 12-yard line. Oh, fumble. Williams fumble, and the Packers recover. Costly fumble for the Bears because they were moving the ball smartly. And Dave Williams, who was activated along with Lynn Bodine, a guard this week, fumbled and the Packers recover might have been Barber but let's take another look it looked like he never really got control of the ball on the handoff it came right out of off his hip and there's a pile up and the Packers were on the bottom Green Bay has the ball Farah, the former Dallas kicker a 34 yard field goal for that Patera field goal boy Tom this last 15 minutes could be something huh from the 35 yard line second and eight for Dallas Cobbett back to throw. Protection is there over the middle. And he hit the big tight end, Cosby, and he's seen a lot of action in this game. Boy, I mean that Pollard, number 82, really, the Cardinals really came on defense this time. Watch the right part of your screen. They're getting running starts, and Rafferty and Fitzgerald and, and young Cooper, they're hanging in there. I'm telling you, there's some shots being laid on each other. Don't take your helmet off this afternoon. Had some people out of this game with the concussions. John Bearfield for one. And now from the 46-yard line, it's a first down. Just underway in the fourth quarter. The last eight meetings, these two teams have won four each. However, Dallas won both of them last year, and Dallas is trying to win their 15th straight opening day game. Here's Ron Springs trying to go wide. Mark Arneson's over there. But he breaks it forward and gets to the 49-yard line. Good effort. He could have lost four and ends up getting about one back, I think. Artisan has the ball carrier, springs dead to rights. Watch this, fake inside off the eye, and now we're going to belly and go a little bit deeper and try to get outside with it. Artisan is waiting. 
This is the reason linebackers come back to camp just for moments like this, and this time it gets away. Springs did a good job. Pollard finally does it, huh? Second down eight. Mike Dawson has come out of the lineup. John Zook has replaced him, a defensive right end. Here's Staubach. He wants to throw it. Steps up. Newhouse intended receiver Roger Worley around the ball again, and he has been around the ball all afternoon long. That's going to bring up a third and eight. Pretty quick move by Roger. He is, by the way, over 200 yards for the 45th time in his career. He's 16 of 26, 224 today. But they pay off on touchdowns, right? He needs some points right now. But that stat is not going to make Tom Landry happy. Four for 10 on third downs, and they come to another one. Preston Pearson is in. This is third and long, too. He's got darn near eight. Roger Starbuck, pressure put on. He releases the ball to Drew Pearson. And Pearson makes a sliding catch at the 30-yard line. First down. He was hit hard as he released the ball, but a 21-yard pass completion. Well, I said I thought the last three balls he threw against Pittsburgh were as clean as I've ever seen Roger throw the ball. But this is one of the great passes. I'm sure that he'll say the snap by Fitzgerald, the blind snap from the shot. Go watch this throw. A little bit of heat breathing on his back. You don't even see it. And I'm telling you, it's low and a fastball. And number 88 just slides under Roy Green right there, but too late. He has lost nothing. Oh, what a great throw that was. Pearson now has five catches for 99 yards. First down from the 30-yard line, Ron Springs. He's going to throw. He's a left-hander. Wide open. Tony Hill. Touchdown. I didn't know that Springs was left-handed, and I'm not sure that St. Louis knew that. Maybe he isn't. <laughs> All I know, he threw a pretty good spiral, and he did what you should do on running passes like that. He threw it early. He didn't allow the defense time to recover and perhaps come over and knock it away. Look at Tony Hill. That's the last person he thought he was going to get a ball from. Here it is from the eye, sprint out left, takes a couple of good steps. Now watch him. He's going to project this baby and throw it. Rafferty gives him a little time. That's not a bad spiral. Tom Landry may have called a pretty good play, you think? Yeah, Stone was cut. Unemotional guy, but seemingly always able to arise to the occasion. And now with a 19-14 lead, Toronto having trouble with the snap. Eric Williams is after him, and that ball's in a bunch of white jerseys. So the point after goes awry, and it's a 19-14 game at the 12:35 mark. Well, the Honey Bears here in Chicago are voted by the experts who know, next to the Dallas people, as the loveliest ladies. They're down one where they had a little uh, problem with one of their people. First and ten at the nine-yard line. Nate Simpson is in the game. Costly fumble, a pass, grab there by Lofton, number 80, out of bounds after a short game. Hicks, the middle linebacker, Tom Hicks, number 54, for the Chicago Bears, had ligament surgery, and he's been solid in pass defense. He's come back from a, a bad shoulder and a bad knee to hold his starting job at the middle linebacker spot from the University of Illinois, Tom Hicks. Of course, I want to remind you, as you saw, U.S. Open tennis coming away after this game. Second and six at the 13-yard line. Barty Smith, the up back. His number 32, Steve Atkins from the University of Maryland, seeing his first action driven out of bounds by Hampton. Steve Atkins, who a lot of people think have deceptive speed, a la Franco Harris, in his college career at Maryland, had some off days and some good days. He was a bit of an enigma, but they say that the guy has some speed to go outside and is a tough inside runner. Well, let's see the situation. What do you think Zeke and Bart Brad, Zeke and Bart Starr will come up with? Third down, about six yards to go, deep in your own territory. 8:45 to go. I think you got a pass. Six defensive backs. Six defensive backs for Chicago. Uh oh. Osborne came in. Question is, who moved? Mel Jackson, number 71, might have, and he did earlier in the game. And that's going to make it. The U.S. Open following here. It'll be Jimmy Connors and Bruce Manson if that match continues. 
as we'll be joining Pat Summerall and Tony Trabert as back deep, Roy Green and Willard Harold. And everybody's buzzing about that touchdown pass by Spring. Uh, it's very important, though, that they miss the extra point. And now St. Louis has a chance that if they get good run back, they can get back in this like nothing. Good back kick. It's Harold, and he's not going to bring it out. Septian got into that one. He got it all, didn't he? Boy, that coach loves that. No run backs. Just drop it on the 20, and we'll start from there. Super kick. Let's check now that offensive line for St. Louis. Let's see if Steve is going to come back into the lineup. As I mentioned earlier, the Cardinals concerned about the backup depth. They traded Roger Finney to New Orleans, who was a backup of a year ago, and Steve is back. He will continue at the right guard for the Cardinals. And Mullins left and just went home, didn't he? So yeah. they didn't have any backups. He was playing well, too. He's a local boy from St. Louis after giving up football for a while, went back. The Giants lost him to the Cardinals. From the 20-yard line, St. Louis trailing 19 to 14. Jim Hart throwing a lot on first down. Somehow gets rid of this intended for Gray. A real good example, though, of the way I think that there's a fairness in the league nobody gives the credit for. Randy White that time locked horns with Bob Young and then made a late run at Roger at uh, Jimmy Hart on the play. And he got there late, and he grabbed the quarterback and didn't hit him and held him. And we never get a chance to show that because people think everybody's really trying to kill everybody else. And I think that good, good sportsmanship should be shown once in a while. Let's see if Sandy Grossman, our director, happens to have that. Watch number to the right of your screen. Watch 54 now. Go around. And he'll come in and hold the quarterback up and not hit him right there. That's class. And that brings up a second and 10 from the 20-yard line. A give to Wayne Morris, and Morris gets back to the line of scrimmage. Harvey Martin made sure of that. He stubbed that one very well. The guy was the NFC Defensive Player of the Year in 77. Guess who was in 78? His partner, Randy White. Well, they got the co-MVP in Super Bowl. Uh, um, my numbers are running together. What Super Bowl was it in New Orleans we did? That was 12, I think. And they, they split a Corvette. Each of them took a couple of doors and a fender and split it. Or whatever the car was. The <laughs> Third down, 10 from the 20-yard line. I don't think they could get in there, they're big. 11.46 left in this game. Chandler into the tight end spot. We haven't seen a lot of Anderson here lately. Here's Hart back again. Over the middle, here's Wayne Morris. That's a first down. And Morris all the way out to the 38-yard line. Aaron Kyle cut him down, but Wayne Morris went airborne on that play. Good job by the other receivers. The other receivers took everybody deep, including Hollywood Henderson, and then they turned back and made some blocks and allowed uh, Morris in to sort of get a little bit of running room right in here. They've turned on their secondary people and are screening them off. Good effort by Morris. And a big play for St. Louis as they keep this drive going. First down now at the 38-yard line. Hart wants to throw again. The throw to Chandler. Chandler is going to catch it and move it to the 44-yard line. Henderson making a stop. And Chandler doing quite a job today. Guess what? The Cowboys safety blitz that time, and Jimmy Hart and company were ready for it. They handled and picked up the blitz, and they made the completion. On the near sideline, that's John Bearfield. We mentioned he suffered a concussion in this game, and they're taking him out on a stretcher. I'm sure as a precautionary method. And Bearfield, who's looked so good, the second-year man out of Texas a and i I'm just going to get him out of here. And Los Angeles now leading Oakland. What a shootout that should be. Wendell Tyler, one-yard touchdown run. Los Angeles draws first blood. Second and five from the 43-yard line. Hard on a play action fake to Anderson. Gets some time to throw, and Pat Tilly can't hang on. A little behind him. Hart was shaken up a little bit, wasn't he? He's bending over. He watched the ball go, and I think Harvey Martin might have run by him and accidentally, and I mean that, sort of belted him and knocked the wind out. They weren't on the ground, and I think Hart was watching the ball probably go, and that's when quarterbacks really get hurt is when they're sort of watching the ball go toward the target and they relax a little bit. Well, he's got a third down coming up, third and five. Quickly now, before the play, they get out of the huddle. Here's the fake. Jimmy goes up. He doesn't throw a great pass here. It's Bethea putting some pressure on it. It's Bethea that comes through, 76, huh? Good so rush. 
The third and five now from the 43. The Cardinals eight of 13 on third downs. Hart to try again, looking for somebody to clear. That's steep. Did he get it? No, incomplete. Boy, he tried to put that ball in between two defenders. <laughs> Benny Bars was glued on his back, too. Number 31 got away with it again. He's running right in the shadow with the intended receiver and made it. And there's Bearfield being taken off the field. Well, we hope he's all right. Wade Manning now goes back for this anticipated punt from Steve Little. Part of this game is 10 of 23 now for 91 yards. But he has thrown two touchdown passes. This Little's got to relax and just start stroking it. I've watched him warm it up. He can kick it out of sight. This one hit very high, but not very long. Manning with a fair catch at the 28-yard line. So Dallas with a good field position, and that was only a 30-yard kick that time by Little. So, Lynn, we've got two minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter. We've had two scoring drives, a field goal for the Jets and a touchdown for the Browns. Well, you had mentioned uh, in the pregame show that uh, these were very explosive teams offensively. The big question mark was defense. Now, each team has had possession. Each team has scored. So they are moving the football. The problem right now for the Cleveland Browns and the New York Jets is stopping the opposition. Bruce Harper and Ken Troy are deep. Cockcroft will be kicking off. Now, the Jets want Bruce Harper on the return. So he and Troy play a game that keeps changing style. Good kickoff. Taking a yard deep. Harper has it. He's the Jets. 50, 20, out around the 23-yard line on the return. Tripped up by Willis Adams, the number one draft choice out of Houston. Today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New York Jets and the National Football League is prohibited. So the Jets go to work on their own 23-yard line, first down, and they trail in the ball game 7-3. Scott Durking and Kevin Long are the two running backs. Matt Robinson is the quarterback. Kevin Long and whistle sound. There may have been a violation of the 30-second clock, a delay of game. That will be it. Either that or illegal procedure. They're going to get him for an illegal procedure. It'll be a five-yard penalty. That'll be a movement of any interior offensive lineman from tackle to tackle once he goes to three or four-point stance. He cannot make a move. Here's the call. Ball start on 72. Chris Ward, if you could read lips. Because uh, we didn't pick up his microphone here. Fred, you may have forgotten to turn it on. Okay, bring it back to the 18-yard line, and it'll be first down 15. Good fake. Robinson throws. It is incomplete. Going to Derek Gaffney at around the 34-yard line. Ron Bolton had the defensive coverage. Had a lot of zip on the ball that time. I'm talking about Matt Robinson. He was just uh, a hair off in the, in the throw to uh, Derek Gaffney. It's been a great catch if he'd have been able to come up with it. In the fourth quarter, Dallas leading St. Louis 19-14. Well, St. Louis has come back a couple of times in that ball game. Jim Hart has thrown two touchdown passes with Dallas leading. Bruce Harper and Clark Gaines are the two running backs. It's second and 15, passing down. Barkham in motion. Draw. Harper for the first down. Oliver Davis finally stopped him at the 36-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, his speed got him some extra yards on that one. Linebacker 52, Ambrose is coming. And watch this move on Clarence Scott, 22. He was going one way, but just couldn't make the adjustment coming back to make the, the tackle on number 42, Bruce Harper, coming up with a big first down. First down and 10, a gain of 18 out to the 36-yard line. Now Durking and Long are the two running backs. The Jets will alternate four men in the backfield. Take Robert that. to the throw. And he is sacked for the second time. Alzado with his second sack of the ball game. The thing about Alzado, number 77 of the Cleveland Browns, is he is a man that's going to be coming after you every play. A lot of fine defensive players will ease up every once in a while. Not that man. He's not going to ease up, and he should not be in good shape right now. No, I was going to ask. It is warm. The humidity is 77 degrees. Now, will that get to a Lyle Alzado? It should, because he hadn't been in training camp that long. He's only been in training camp for about a week. 
Second and 17. Robinson throws. It's there. Markham down at the 40-yard line. Merritt Scott making the tackle. So it will be third down in the neighborhood of six yards to go for the first down. A pickup of 11 on the play. Number 83, Jerome Barkham is a key man in the passing attack because I'll, here's one reason. He's an outstanding receiver. Secondly, when you have a guy like Wesley Walker, number 85, defensively you must double cover him. That means that a man like Jerome Barkham is going to get single coverage. 13 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Four out of the pattern. Deep and long and incomplete. Barkham, the intended receiver, a flag goes down. Yeah. Barkham never saw the ball. They will call offensive pass interference. And, it, and it was. The one official didn't see it, but it was definitely that. But it was a good play by number 83. Yes, because don't give the ball to the opposition. He take the penalty, come on back, at least give us another shot at it. That will be the call. He was hanging this ball up in the air. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, it was a terrible pass. <laughs> well, I was trying to be kind. But right there, as you can see, Jerome Barkham is saying, I can't get it. I don't know where it is. You look like you're going to catch it, Clarence. Clarence shot 22, so I'm going to interfere. Offensive pass interference, it is refused, so it is forced down. And Ramsey, Chuck Ramsey, is in the kick. He does not use a kicking shoe this year. And Keith Wright is dropping back. And Ramsey's punch vastly improved in preseason when he went back to his college style of not using a shoe as he stays a beauty. Oh, into the end zone. Now that pitch was some 70 yards in the air. And time runs out into the first quarter. The score, Cleveland 7, the Jets 7. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. CBS Sports Spectacular resumes Saturday, September 15th. I'll be in Houston, Texas for the 10-round lightweight bout between Howard Davis and Termite Watkins. Along with several other events, CBS Sports Spectacular, newer and better than ever this year. And a lot of live coverage of events that you'll enjoy. First and 10 for the Bears at the 19-yard line. 8.23 to go. 6-3, to three, Chicago leading. Payton. And the stop is made by Mike Douglas. Reeve Sorry was blocking in front of Walter. How do you think Neil Armstrong will play it now? You figure about eight minutes to go in the game. If you control the ball on the ground and maybe come out with three, possible uh, to get a 9-3 advantage with maybe a couple of minutes to play if you work it right. Uh, the tendency has been to go conservative and not throw now unless they are in a throwing situation. But that isn't always the right way to do it. You know, it just depends on a situation. Second, second and seven now. That's Nagel 84 to the top of your picture. Scott 89 to the bottom, second and seven. Fitz on a passing down. Walter Payton. The ball is incomplete. The ball is down. Fans getting on Mike Phipps a bit there. The screen had set up. Actually, it was a pretty good play. The screen had set up, but the pass was uh, not too accurate. But overall today, Mike Phipps has done fairly well. His percentages are good. That's the, and that's the thing. He has been uh, judicious with his passing. He has hit the short pass as well. His percentage is pretty good. He is 13 for 22 for 108 yards. And, and that's what Neil Armstrong wanted. I don't think, as you say, Vince uh, Evans had the best preseason of the three quarterbacks. But you don't want to take a chance and maybe hurt a confidence, perhaps. You want to go with the technician, and that's what they have with Phipps. Five defensive backs for the pack. Third down on a draw. They give it to Walter Payton, who has a first down and more. Walter Payton, who has done it all for the Chicago Bears today, gets to the 34-yard line and a first down. Simmons and Barber make the stop. And a lot of times people say, oh, you say he did it all. He's doing it all today. Yes, he got some good blocking at the beginning, and then he just weaved his way. Just notice how he cuts back and forth. Now, his legs keep driving, even though two or three Packers have a hold of him. And that was a key play. That kept this drive alive. 109 yards for Walter Payton, 49 yards receptions. He's carried 31 times today. And it's hot down there. Jerry Eckwood gained 121 for Tampa Bay. Fitz wants a timeout. 
And that is going to be kind of tough at this stage because you don't want to use one of your timeouts here in case he comes close at the end of the game. Eckwood had 121 yards for Tampa Bay last night. That's our score with 6.50 to play in the game. As we mentioned, there was a flag just before we left you, and the penalty was against Thomas Henderson for illegal use of the hands. So now the Cowboys, instead of having the football to 28, going to be back on the 18-yard line. This man, Tom Landry, would like to have uh, the offense sort of consume some time, sit on it for five or six minutes, and uh, I think St. Louis lost a golden opportunity. That drive uh, should not have sputtered as badly as that. They've got to work their problems out. Well, they've gone away from O.J. Anderson, haven't they? Well, I don't think he knows the pass routes probably as well, and Jimmy's having to throw the ball a lot harder. So from the 18-yard line, the Cowboys with a 19-14 lead. Stavik off to Newhouse. Look at Newhouse, just kind of wind his way around out to the 24-yard line. Steve Neal's eventually dropped him. Here's Carney now getting a shot at Newhouse. He loves to hit anything, but sometimes what you see is not what you get. <laughs> Look at Carney. He is so mad. I, what do I have to do, he says. <laughs> Gain of six, second and four. Hope that's not a penalty when you pound your fist against the ground. What are you trying to say? <laughs> Springs, Newhouse, the running backs. Pearson. And Hill, the wide receivers, new house again. And oh, oh as he hit and drilled back. That's Eric Williams, and now Williams is going to get a flag. Evidently a little bit too aggressive on that tackle, and that's going to hurt St. Louis because that would have brought up a third down instead, 15 well, yards. Well, you know, you can't uh, you can't yell obscene things either. He might have said something. But my goodness, I can't believe that you can no longer first talk down, to your opposition. Number 55, defense, first down. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's what it was. That is a no-no. Yeah. That's talking with your hands. But how many fingers do I have? But that well, was not a very good play at that time. A good tackle, you should just walk away and say, hey, nice, and help the guy up because you did the job. You won it without that. They call him Eric the Red out of USC. That is the sixth penalty against the Cardinals for a total of 50 yards. From the 41, first down. Stavik, got time to throw. Tony Hill, I guess the intended receiver, but looked like he may have slipped and had fallen down trying to get over there. Boy, they really double-teamed Steve Niels on that play. He came blitzing from that left-hand side, and they took him out of there. Hey, that Cardinal defense has played extremely well today. Roger, uh, while very effective, there are not a lot of options open. He's had to work for it. Starbucks, 17 of 28, 241 yards in this game. Dawson has come out. John Zook replaces him. Newhouse just told Springs what to do that time. The rookie has lined up right behind him. Now they split. Second and ten. This is Saldi again in motion. Staubach counters with Springs, and Springs spins out of the grass. Bob Rozier and then Charlie Davis over there. Here's the great thing that the 34 can give you. If the linebackers move into the hole and move up and don't get scraped up, they can be very effective and make a lot of tackles. Third down six, and we have eight minutes now left in this game. The Cowboys with a 19 to 14 lead. They led early in this game, 10 to nothing. There was 10 to seven, and then 14, 13, the Cardinals. Large third down conversion here, though. Third and again about seven. Preston Pearson has come back in on this passing situation. Staubach, the blitz is on. Giving chase is Lee Nelson. It's caught. A catch by Preston Pearson for the first down. Again, Staubach has averted everything the Cardinals can throw at him. And what can you say about a catch by Pearson who dropped one earlier that hit him right in the hands? Watch this. A great throw. Lee Nelson is covering and very well in the corner. Now watch this catch. And somehow the feet, yeah, you're right, they're inside. Here's the rush. The Cardinals now getting a little bit desperate. They send everybody but Bud and Tommy Bettison himself. Tommy Bettis, Yankowski, rolled him over. 
11 yard completion two big scrambling plays in this game one for 41 yards this one for 11 keeping the drive going first down at the St. Louis 46 yard line Staubach again Harry Smith had that played very well defending against Tony Hill well it's little things like that Tom isn't it one two plays a quarterback can make that makes the difference on going all the way to the Super Bowl it's also the penalty that you got after a great defensive play when you get a silly penalty it keeps the Dallas drive alive they would have been third and long back there the score out west San Diego leading Seattle two teams are on their way up the ladder Williams with a two yard touchdown run and it's the Chargers under Coriel seven to three Dupree replaces Cosby at tight end second and ten now from the 46 yard line Staubach to Springs Springs is going to get across the 45 inside the 45 to the 44 yard line there's the young rookie back an example of running outside the hole he was supposed to cut back inside and that time he ran off and got uh, sort of mugged by three fellows that uh, nobody could help him or protect him from because he ran outside of it so on a third down again they're going to send in lee nelson and roy green third and eight mike dawson also coming in as eric williams tim carney and steve Niels come out of the lineup the Cardinals are going to have to make their stand here pretty quick. Where's Preston Pearson? Is he out there? He's out there. He's split at the bottom of your screen. You've got to put a beeper on him so they can follow him. Stomach on the third and eight. He's going to Pearson, and he didn't get him. Roy Green had covered him well, and it's a fourth down coming up. And Roger is mad. He dropped his, he dropped his elbow and threw a bad ball, the worst ball that Stomach's thrown today. Boy, he hasn't thrown very many of them. He just drops his shoulder under. This is from the shotgun. He gets a little pressure. He can feel it. He just, for some reason, threw a, a flutter ball. That was an old knuckler that did a little dipsy do. You can see he didn't like that one at all. Willard Harrell will go back now, standing at the 10-yard line. Danny White to kick. We still have six minutes and 42 seconds left in this game. 19 to 14, Dallas with the lead. A typical St. Louis-Dallas shootout. Boy, these teams, they've really gone after each other. St. Louis very much improved this year, though. They're healthy, and I think Bud Wilkinson uh, has an outstanding football team. I think Dallas is going to have to call a timeout. Yes, they are. They've got a mix-up somewhere on this punting team, so they will use the timeout. Stopping the clock was 642. Well, you know, the last time, there's a delay of game. They didn't get it off in time. Five yards. Delay offense. That'll move it back to the 49. We started to say the last time the Cowboys lost their first opening game of their preseason or regular season opener was in 64, and that was St. Louis. In St. Louis. 16 to 6. That's when they had a guy by the name of Charlie Johnson at quarterback. My heavens, I played against him. It's fourth and 13. Danny White will try to nail it. Going for the coffin corner on the far side. Harrell is going to let it hit. Cardinals almost oh. running into that ball over there. Great kick. We have a flag thrown. A 44-yard kick on that play as Roy Green and Lott were over there. They didn't know where that football was. What happened? Nobody made contact. It's a contact game. What could this infraction be? I don't know. Maybe... That was Henderson down there, and making the block on him was Roy Green. We have no foul, illegal touching. Uh, Ill illegal touching, no foul. I'm glad that they called that off. Uh, I mean, I know if you eat garlic, you don't want to breathe in the huddle, but illegal touching I've never heard of. Center, watch the middle of that offensive line for a line of block. All it is is right up the middle. Uh, they just trap. The center block to his left. Dave Scott got a standoff block and Andrews right up the middle. So now Atlanta has taken the lead 33 to 31. They moved 80 yards in 10 plays. Conversion attempt coming now as Eddie will attempt it with, Joan, with James holding. Eddie's kick is good. So it is the Falcons 34. The Saints 31. Here it is again. There's big number 70, if you could see him, the left guard. What a hole for William Andrews, and the rookie from Auburn scores. And 
we'll return to the Superdome after this word from your local station. That's our score, but look at a couple of others. Close games throughout the National Football League. Fourth quarter, Atlanta leading New Orleans, 34-31. St. Louis now trailing 19-14 to, to the Dallas Cowboys' fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 35. Bears trying to chew up the clock at this point. 6.50 to go. Up the middle to Walter Payton. Number 37, Willie McClendon, is in the game. The rookie from Georgia along with Peyton. First downs, Bears have 15 and the Packers seven. How many carries did you say Peyton had? That 31, yeah. 32 now. You know, he's not a big man. You know, that, that's a lot of carries. I mean, he just does this year after year, five foot 10, 200 pounds. Second and nine at the 36, Dave Williams, 22, back in the game. Phipps. Looking downfield, completes to the 40-yard line to Williams, the back, coming out of the backfield. It'll be third and five. Michael Hunt, the middle linebacker, who has an interception. Bears have escaped pretty well, considering a fumble by Williams going in. There's a score of the Cleveland Browns with Lyle Alzado to help their defensive front line, leading the New York Jets 7-3, to three, second quarter. Jets going with Matt Robinson at quarterback. Another key play, third and five. And five defensive backs for the Packers. They're looking to the sideline. A little bit of confusion. Three wide receivers for Chicago. Third and five. Mike Phipps in trouble. Open field. Will run it. He has a first down. And he's tackled inside Green Bay territory at the 47-yard line by Dave Simmons, the rookie from North Carolina. Phipps, one thing he is doing is playing intelligent football today. That time they put the double team on Peyton out of the backfield. He was looking for Peyton, but he was covered. So what did he do? He decided to run as he got away from Barzalaskis and then even faked after he was beyond the line of the scrimmage. But that's all right. As far as the Bears are concerned, Mike Phipps got the first down before Simmons made the tackle. As long as you don't throw it beyond the line of scrimmage. <laughs> you can kick it, though. Did you know that? That's right. First and 10 at the 47 with 4.48 remaining in the game. Clock becoming important here, especially with the Bears getting first downs. Peyton reversing. Try to get back to the line, he couldn't. He loses about four yards. Good pursuit by Mike, Duggle, Mike Douglas and Weaver, linebackers. The Rams leading the Oakland Raiders 7-0 in the first quarter. The Rams of Georgia Rosenblum. Perhaps the biggest behind closed doors story of the offseason. Second and 13 at midfield. Packers, of course, want to keep the Bears out there, want to make sure they stay in long yardage. They're trailing 6-3 to three on a delay to Walter Payton. Oh. Payton still on his feet, gets to the 40. It'll be short of a first down by about four yards. Steve Luke once again makes the stop. He's been there all day, but this Payton's something else. Simple draw play as Peyton shifts over, and then he's just told to pick his way, and that's exactly what he can do and do well. Just ran by people there. Had him going the wrong way. Bars of Lus Luskis. Luskis comes from behind, and Steve Luke is finally in on the tackle. Very close to a first down, about three yards short. They we give him a hand. A third down situation. They give him a hand as he comes out of the game. McClendon and Williams are the backs. Peyton has gained 118 yards, and he looks tired out there, Johnny. Third and three at the 40. And the Bears calling a timeout will leave them with only one. I believe this is the second timeout that the Bears have called in the second half. Neil Armstrong must be counting on not needing them at the end of the game. <laughs> Minnesota Vikings, who won their opener against the 49ers, will come here to Soldier Field next week to do battle with the Bears. New Orleans trailing in a close game with Atlanta will go up to Lambeau Field to face the Packers in Green Bay. Cardinals and Giants next week as well on CBS. Also on NFL regional games, the Washington Redskins and the Detroit Lions at the Silver Dome. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Cloud Nine with their opening night win over Detroit will go against Burt Jones and the Baltimore Colts and the Dallas Cowboys against the 49ers in San Francisco. Next Sunday, consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. CBS Sports presents NFL with perhaps one of the most balanced conferences, the NFC, that they've had in many years. Peyton goes out for one play because he's back in. That's what he's done today. He actually didn't even go out for a play, did he? He just went out for the break. Uh, well, a tantamount to <laughs> yeah. a play, I guess. He got a chance to rest for a second. Right. All the scoring by the virtue of the field goal. Bob Thomas kicked two in the first half, 25 and 19 yards, both in the second quarter. And Chester Mark called a 28 yarder for the Green Bay score. Third and three now, 40 yard line. Fifth to third and three. He has a lot of time. And his pass is complete to Bosch Nagel. First down. First down at the 35. Hood defending. So the Bears continue to keep the ball. 3-12 remaining. Brian Bosch Nagel, who played in four Rose Bowls for Ohio State, had a good training camp, plays behind Scott most of the time. Just a good pass blocking, nice precision pass, and the Bears have really improved upon that over last season. Johnny, he's one of those guys who plays hurt. I mean, there are people, of course, that come up with things and, and maybe it hampers their effect. But Bash Nagel goes out and he plays hurt a lot. First and 10 at the 35. Both wide receivers out to the right. Peyton going to the left. Tripped up, but still picks up maybe four yards. He had Noah Jackson blocking in front of him. The rookie Charles Johnson, number 99, makes the play. The clock is winding down. 2.58 left in the game, so they have really chewed up a lot of time on this drive with two or three key third down plays to keep it alive. At this point, and the game is by no means over, Neil Armstrong's decision to go with Mike Phipps and the kind of game plan that they've had has, has worked to perfection. It has. Second down, five to go with both wide receivers. Bash Nagel and Scott are out to the left now. Second back through. Peyton, once more, Charles Johnson, Neil Armstrong on the sidelines, 2.23 to go, second year, he's 53 years old, was also an assistant coach at Houston, head coach in the Canadian League, before he worked for Bud Grant eight years as the defensive coordinator. We'll have to start checking the record book. I don't know what the, the record is for times carried a ball in one game, but Walter Payton's got to be getting pretty close. They hope that stuntman Stan Barrett gets more than close as he attempts to break the sound barrier in his rocket-powered land vehicle. Project SOS, the speed of sound, Saturday, September 15th on CBS Sports, preceding the CBS Sports Spectacular. Walter Payton's going out of the game, and Willie McClendon from Georgia. There's Bart Starr, who's realized that it's not a matter of a guy here and a guy there to rebuild. It's been agonizing is the way Bart has described Green Bay coming back to the fold. There's Walter taking some oxygen, getting uh, wiped off because he'll probably be back in the game. He's got at least 34, 35 carries. 36. 36 None. carries. That's a lot on a hot day like this. And he's had to carry the load as far as the running game is concerned. And uh, he earns that big salary that he gets. He's such a threat. 125 yards for Peyton. He's caught four passes for 49. And don't forget, he doesn't have Roland Harper. And while Skabinski figured to do the job, he's been racked up. Earl was racked up. And they had to use Williams, who was just picked up this week. So it's third and three at the 28 with 2.23 to go. Here is Williams, short of a first down. So it'll be fourth down, and they're going to call for Bob Thomas. Mike Douglas, who along with Luke, been in on most of the tackles today. Luke not on that play, but he had been. The Packers have called a timeout. They used one of theirs, which uh, uh, it's probably strategy-wise. They want Thomas to miss, make him think about it. They're also using the two-minute warning uh, clock, so they'll have two timeouts left when they do get the ball. 2.16 to go. Thomas is not on the field right now as Phipps comes to the sideline. Don't forget U.S. Open tennis following our game. Bjorn Borg is the man everyone wants to catch. Vitas Geliolaitis and Guillermo Vilas both won some very tough matches yesterday. Billie Jean King at 35 years old also advanced. And we'll have tennis action following. John McEnroe 
is scheduled to play today. Uh, they've had a conference at the sidelines, and they may attempt to go for it rather than go for the field goal. Fourth and one. Of course, a field goal would mean that Packers the Packers left. would need a touchdown to win the game. And maybe because of the fact that the wind's against them, it's at the 26, it'd be about a 32, 42-yard field goal. Uh, they figure maybe the odds are better to try and get the first down and eat up the clock. A little more than a yard, Johnny, and Cobb, 87, is in there now. This, Short yardage, and this is a... This could be the old ball game right here. This is a bit of a gutty play by Armstrong. Fourth and one, 21-yard line. In motion, Bashnagel. Phipps rolls out, and Phipps... Throws the ball, incomplete. It's incomplete, and the Packers take over. So the move by Neil Armstrong backfires. It was Gary Weaver. Michael Hunt also put the pressure on. And the rollout, and now the Packers take over, and the Bears had a chance for three, and they elected not to go for it. I'll say one thing. They didn't go conservative. As Phipps rolled out, Gary Weaver got a hand on him, and then Phipps was lucky to get the ball off, did a good job, and they almost had the completion, but a good play by the Green Bay Packers, and Weaver in particular. They have the ball, two timeouts, two minutes, 10 seconds to go, and the two-minute warning. It's amazing how sometimes when you least expect it, a coach is conservative will do something that's way out. First and 10 at the 26. Whitehurst has to go 75 yards or shorter to tie. Here's a pass. Intercepted. Almost, almost intercepted. Take it for Thompson, Virgil Liver who has made some key plays in the secondary for the Bears, reached over and tipped it away there. Second and 10. Here we go again. They're going from the right hash mark and throwing that pattern all the way across the field, across the left hash mark and to the other sideline, which means the ball has to go a long way. Good pressure by the Bears. Uh, I don't know. They must have a particular strategy for doing that, but it's dangerous. Steve Atkins, 32, Barty Smith, 33 on the backs. Tadell Middleton not in there. Second and 10 at the 26-yard line. And Whitehurst to put it in the air again. Up the middle to Barty Smith complete at the 30-yard line. It'll be third and about six. Tom Hicks, the middle linebacker, makes the stop. And we wound down to two minutes to go. Two minutes to go in the game. We'll wait for the official two-minute warning, and there it is. So when we resume, Green Bay will have third and about five, a long five, trailing six to three. Brown passed him up. They had a chance to draft him before the Jets took him, and he says he wants to prove that the Browns made a mistake. Cleveland from the 20-yard line. Mike Hood carries, and he picks up three to the 23. What happened in that situation, Cleveland had an opportunity to pick him. They wanted instead Willis Adams. They made a switch with a draft choice with the San Diego Chargers so that the Chargers could pick up the tight end, which uh, the Browns did not need because of Ozzie Newsom. So then they went for the wide receiver, and there was, uh, there was a little speculation yeah. about Lyons. Lyons said that one of the coaches of the Cleveland Browns informed him that he was going to be the first one selected by them if they had the chance. This goes to prove you can't believe every, everything you hear. <laughs> That's right. Second and seven. Side. Good protection. Throws on target. Great throw. Slips one, two. Drop. 25 yard line. A lot of excitement, just a couple of yards. It'll be third down and five. Stan Blinka finally got it. So Brian Seif is now three for three. And it's, it makes pretty good sense to go to that man, number 34, Greg Pruitt, because he was he was hemmed in, but he, he escaped a couple of guys before they finally came and made the tackle. But the Jets know this. When he has the football, you better get some gang tackling over. Get some people over there because you don't want one-on-one -on, -one on Pruitt. Michaels claims it's the number that he wears. Because that's Walt Michaels' old number when he played. Passes. Intercepted. Burgess Owens has it. Throw it. Slip. Owens came right over the top with the interception. Big break for the New York Jets. What are you talking about? Look what I found. Burgess Owens is an outstanding safety man for the New York Jets, but Pruitt slipped on that play, and I think probably why he did is because, Charlie, you know it, it rained earlier in the day, and that part of the field was not covered by the tarp. So it could be a little slick out there on the grass. 
taking a look, and you can see that he's coming. You can see that Pruitt, 34, fell down. 22, Burgess Owens coming up with a big interception. Great field position for the Jets. For the 12-yard line, Kevin Long inside the five. Where it's Scott. Makes the tackle. Officials were spotted right at the five-yard line. And I tell you, Kevin Long, when uh, there's Sam Bertigliano, he's not too happy about that last play, but that's that's just that's just one of the things that happened. The man slipped. But you take a look at Kevin Long. He's going now when he makes his mind up and sees the hole. Hey, I'm going now. I'm I'm not going to dance around. I'm getting as far as I possibly can and as quickly as I can. Second and three at the five yard line. Scott Turkey. They'll mark it down inside the one. Yeah, but that could be enough for a first down. They could have first and goal now. About a half a yard away. First down goal to go. 25, Scott Kirking. Breaking inside a good block by number 68, Eric Cunningham, a rookie, making the start here this afternoon. So Scott Kirking coming up with a big play. They've got four, they got to figure they've got at least four shots to get in now. Jets have the lead. Nine to seven extra points still to come. Well, I guess Matt decided to go with his best ball carrier in a situation <laughs> like that, Charlie. He wasn't going to chance any fumbles and losing any yards on first down. Take a shot there. He could actually take two quarterback shots, but he didn't make it. And he had two more plays, really, from that situation to try to get it in. Because you got to figure you got four downs. You're inside the two-yard line. you got four downs to make a touchdown. Tim Moresco to hold. Pat Leahy with the extra point attempt. Flags are down. It is blocked. Alzado is hurt. He is still down. And there were two markers on the play. Cleveland, Cleveland was offside, so they will kick over. Well, he might have knocked the wind out of him, Charlie. Supposed to block it with your hands, not your stomach. Right through the middle, that's the spot that a kicker doesn't want to see. Oh, oh yes. yes. In the bread basket. Looks like he's healthy to me, Scarlett. Huh? <laughs> okay. Cleveland was offside. He'll take it out on the quarterback. I'll say it was his hands right. on. <laughs> Obviously, somebody else's fault. And here's the extra point attempt again. It is done. The score. The New York Jets 10, the Cleveland round 7. We'll be back to Shea Stadium in a moment. receivers incomplete standing at his own 46 yard line to field the ball Eric Slavin Pearson has it at the 45 at the 40. Hit hard at the 39-yard line. There's a penalty marker. Jim Kovash. All right. Ricky Feature and Keith Wright are the two deep backs on the return. And Pat Leahy will be kicking off. We have 12 minutes and 11 seconds left in the first half. The Jets lead Cleveland by three. Keith Wright on the return. 15, 20, 25, 30. Good return. 37-yard line. Okay, excellent blocking out in front of, of Keith Wright on that play by the Cleveland Browns. 
That's a sign of a, a well-coached football team because they, he took that ball about five yards deep in the end zone. A lot of times they're told it's that deep down it in the end zone. Don't take a chance. But he brought it all the way out to about the 37-yard line. Good ball, field position. Paul Darby and Johnny Lynn with the tackle for the Jets. So Cleveland, first down their own 37-yard line. They trail by three, 10-7. to seven. Ryan Sipe, the quarterback. Reggie Rucker shows motion. Sipe, good fake, throws, has a man open. Dave Logan, first down. Dan Blinker, the middle linebacker, makes the stop on Dave Logan from Colorado, 6'4", 216 pounds. He makes a very nice target out there because of his size. This is the first game that he's had an opportunity to work the full game. I, Brian told us, uh, Sipe told us that they played a little bit in the last ball game, but he's been out with a, a leg problem. Dave Logan, Reggie Rucker, and Ozzie Newsom, all three receivers, the two wide receivers that tied in, have excellent speed. At the New York 47-yard line, Mike Brewer and Stan Blinka makes the tackle, the middle linebacker for the New York Jets. This man has is, is improved greatly over the last couple of years. Mike Pruitt, the number one draft choice out of Purdue University, has come along slowly, but now he's uh, becoming more and more of an integral part of this Cleveland Brown offensive unit. He's got to block. He's got to be able to block because when you have Greg Pruitt in the back backfield, this man, Sam Bertigliano, wants to get the football through it. And wisely so. Second and three. Pruitt, close to the first down. I believe he's got it. Lawrence Pillars brings him down. First down. 37 yard line, first down. Here is a note for the viewers in Cleveland. There has been a change on the times of two of the Cleveland games. Cleveland and Houston. On September the 30th, this is for a television time, will be a 1 o'clock start at Pittsburgh and Cleveland on October the 7th is now a 4 o'clock game. So if you'll file those two notes away. Sight throws, has a man, and it is complete. Reggie Rucker. Oh, that was a fine, fine catch by number 33, Reggie Rucker. This it proves, too, what concentration is, will do for a great receiver. Now, he followed that ball all the way. This is a quick pass going to the outside, just taking a couple of steps by Brian Seid and firing that ball out there. And, and it, it was meant that if Reggie didn't catch it, no one was going to catch it. Looked like he was almost throwing the ball away. I've done that on occasion. People come up and make the catch. Second down and a couple at the Jet 29-yard line. Fake on a pitch and a hand to Mike Pruitt, and he's got the first down. Schaefer Suggs at strong safety and Stan Blinka, the middle linebacker, make the tackle at the 25-yard line, first down. Well, the Cleveland Browns have moved the football each time they had it. Their only problem was the interception, and that came on kind of a freak situation when the running back slipped and fell. And also the Jets have been able to move on offense. They've so been, both clubs starting again where they left off last year. A lot of offense. They both need to show some more defensive work. First down at the 25-yard line of New York. Greg Pruitt. He cuts back inside. Almost the 20-yard line. Lawrence Pillars, Marty Lyons. The defensive ends were there. You know, because the play does not come to your side does not mean that you can just forget about it and wait for the next play to come. You've got to be all over the field. I'm talking about defensive players. You see Greg Pruitt going back into the into the huddle. But Lyons was one of the both of the defensive men involved in that play, and he came from the right side all the way to the left side. Which, which number means one you got to hustle. Choice. You got to hustle. Okay, number one draft choice from Alabama. 6'5", 245 pounds, and has 4'9", speed at 40 yards. Got a safety blitz coming. Throw it. He'll be a couple of yards shy of the first down. This is Greg Brewer. Marty Lyons was there along with Burgess Owens. Was it Owens that had the safety blitz on? Burgess Owens was coming, and uh, he, 
if they'd have held that count just a, a fraction longer, he wouldn't have been involved in the play because he was going to blitz. He'd be off sides if it because... held it much longer. <laughs> he had a running start. All right, Calvin Hill comes in and Greg Wood comes out at running back. Cleveland receives a good hand here in New York, possibly the Brooklyn connection of the Browns. We'll talk about that. Third down and two. It is a first down. The head coach, Sam Reticliano, is from Brooklyn. The defensive end, Lyle Alzado, is from Brooklyn. Peter Hadhazy in the front office is from Brooklyn. But probably most important of all, <laughs> Art Motel, the owner, is from Brooklyn. That may be the reason a lot of those other folks are there in Cleveland. <laughs> There's Sam Reticli. I know, I know this about Art Modell. He's a Clevelandite. He is now, for sure. At the 14-yard line, Seif goes into the end zone. It is knocked away. Good defensive play by the rookie, Donald Dyke. The number three draft choice from Southeast Louisiana. Keith Wright, the intended receiver. Good defensive play. Ryan Seif was going to the flag of the end zone or a corner pattern. He uh, did not throw. You can see the ball wobbling there. The man had his had the defensive man beat for a step. The ball had been there a little quicker. It might have been a touchdown. But it was a good defensive play by Donald Dykes, number 26 of the Jets. Second and 10 at the New York 14-yard line. Just over seven minutes time remaining in the first half. Sight throws in the corner and he overthrows. Dave Logan. Logan had a step on his man, Donald Knight. So they're picking on the rookie at the corner. They're testing him. They had a safety blitz on this time. He got rid of the ball. He had to because Joe Klecko, 73, is giving him a little greeting right there. But as you can see, Logan had a step on number 26, Donald Dykes. Had the ball been on the money, it would have been six. Greg Pruitt comes back in, and Mike Pruitt comes out. Charlie, that shows what a pass rush will do because he had to throw that ball before he was really set and wanted to throw it. Greg Pruitt and Calvin Hill are the two running backs. Logan is wide to the far side. Rucker wide to the near side. Ozzie Newsom the tight end. Into the corner one more time. It is incomplete. Exactly the same play. Well, what Going to Logan, trying to just loft it in well, the corner over the defender. I know the people from Cleveland realize that Dave Logan was an outstanding athlete at Colorado. One of the sports he played was basketball. So Brian probably figured that here's a man that has four or five inch advantage over the defensive man. Get it up in the air. His man, number 85, Logan, has just as good a chance of getting it as a defensive man, or a better chance of getting it. Was there a flag down yet? <laughs> Holding is refused. So now the field goal team will come in. It'll be fourth and ten at the 14-yard line. The kick will come from around the 21. Don Cockroft, the National Football League's all-time most accurate field goal kicker. His average is 67%. Dave Logan holding at the 21. A kick of 31 yards to tie it up. good from 31 yards and the score is now tied Cleveland 10 the Jets 10 657 left in the first half they were moving the football on the ground and he goes up there a touchdown but almost win it for him will he come back New Orleans will have the football that's the score. Correct score Chicago Bears 6 Green Bay Packers 3 3rd and 5 do we watch Lofton here Johnny Maybe so, but I don't know if they'll try and go real deep on it. They'll probably, they know the Bears will be playing loose. They'll try and get that 10, 12-yard pass. He's at the bottom of your picture, third and five. Big play for the Packers at the 31. Two minutes to go in the game. Tullis, 87, also in there. Whitehurst has some time. His pass, Barty Smith has it. He may be short of the first down. He's right around the marker. Let's see where they spot it. You know the Packers will go for it anyway. Inches, inches, and they'll go. Fourth and inches at the 36-yard line. 
Green Bay stays alive, and that's one of the things Barty Smith does so well. He may not have the speed of an Ivory who was hurt today, but he's a good, reliable receiver coming out of the backfield. But do you know what they're going to say in the uh, meetings oh. come Monday or Tuesday? Why didn't you just kind of leap forward a little further and then get out of bounds? You know, it's just one of those things. So now they are faced with a fourth down situation with a minute to go a minute and our timer our clock is broken again but I think it's a little less than two minutes isn't we'll it? see that clock pretty soon on our screen as we wind down Ron Rideout's number 76 is the fifth defensive lineman in there 155 remaining 155 but the Packers must get the inches right here. Got it and more. Steve Atkins, the rookie from Maryland, has the first down. Keeps it going for the Packers. They have two timeouts remaining. They line up without a huddle. The ball at the 38 yard line. Six to three, the Bears lead. Packers want to get at least into field goal position. Whitehurst has a lot of time, starts to take off. His flip is complete to Tullis and a fumble the pass was complete and then the fumble and the clock continues to run Tullis caught it and dropped it and recovered it and now the clock stops they're short of a first down by about a yard and the Packers will call their second timeout I believe they have one left that they have none left they have no more timeouts remaining this is their last one it is second and a yard to go 120 remaining in the game and that ball just sat there on the turf. Nobody seemed to see it. In and fact, the officials never said incomplete. <laughs> they stood there saying, whoever gets it has it, folks. Finally, it was Tullis who got up and got the ball. But now you talk about last minute strategy with no timeouts left. And a minute and 28, I believe that clock says. So they'll have to use the sidelines. Why, why the timeout there? Well, I think they felt they just had to get organized, think about what they're going to do. 10 round lightweight bout Howard Davis and Termite Watkins I'll be in Houston Texas as the CBS Sports Spectacular returns Saturday September 15th the Italian Grand Prix highlights will be shown as well as a preview of the U.S. roller skating championships roller skating is becoming a fast popular sport we saw in the Pan Am games and around the world actually the Packers only have to go maybe 30 or 35 yards to have a shot at a field goal the wind is at their backs. So with the score remaining six to three, they still have a, a good shot. And of course, if they get the field goal, get the chance and they connect, we could be going into sudden death. So don't go away. 120 remaining. Second and one. Packers have no more timeouts. Barty Smith has a first down to the 49 yard line. But the clock becomes so important as you see it there. Now the officials have called timeout for a moment because Just the Bears set. were a little slow so that everybody could get set. 107. Now they start it again. Cordell Middleton not in there. Here's the pass out to Lofton, but it just passed his outstretched fingertips. They want to ideally, Johnny, as you know as a receiver, is to get something near the sideline where they can gain yards and stop the clock. We have exactly a minute to play. Second and 10, the ball at the 49-yard line. You have that feeling that Lofton's going to explode sometime throughout this game. He's such a threat. Anybody who could broad jump or, or long jump, I should say, 27 feet. Maybe he can go straight up 27 feet. Who knows? Second and 10, 49 yard line. Packers thinking of field goal position here. Whitehurst fires Lofton. Oh! Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Lofton was hit hard by Terry Schmidt, who jarred the ball loose from James Lofton. And what a break that would have been for the Packers at the 30. But it's an incomplete pass. The defensive secondary hitting so hard for the Bears today. And here it is. And Terry Schmidt, got to give him credit. He jolted that ball. Actually, he had dropped the ball before Schmidt even hit him. But Schmidt, in going through with his tackle, gave him no chance to recover the bobbled ball. And that hurts the Packers. They would have been down on a 30-yard line. Third and 10 at the 49. And they're going to have to, they really have two more downs to move the ball. Blitz. 
Here they come. He dumps it off now to Barty Smith. Smith is running out of bounds, racing for his life. Hicks was trying to chase him. And Fensick there, too. Fensick pushed him out of bounds. More important for the Packers is that the clock has stopped, but now it's fourth down and about nine. So they've got to get at least the nine yards. And if they don't stop the clock, they've got to get up and, and somehow get it stopped. A, a good play by Whitehurst because Campbell was right on him, and he just dumped the ball over, and Barty Smith saved and stopped the clock, and they've got a chance now here. Five defensive backs. Campbell and Heron, two linebackers in there. Fourth and nine, midfield. Blitz, they got it. It was Bruce Heron, number 51, who ended the Green Bay Packers' hopes. The sixth quarterback sack with 47 seconds to go, and barring a mistake by the Bears, Heron with a blitzing smother of David Whitehurst has sealed it for the Chicago Bears. Here at the Superdome, Archie Manning didn't waste any time going to work on Rick Bias. He's worked on him all day long. Wes Chandler had a great day also. Here he goes up in the foot, up in the air. He's got the football. That's Ricky Bias on the stop. Three minutes, 59 seconds left to play on this game. Number 51 comes right up in there, Scott Free, as the back couldn't get there in time to stop it, and the Packers were not able to hand. That's the story of this game, another angle of it. The story of this game was that Green Bay was not able to counteract Chicago's blitzing defenses, and that's as simple as that. And you know, Johnny, uh, when Whitehurst did have a chance to throw, they weren't blitzing, and you wonder why maybe the Bears should be blitzing every play the way it worked for them. First and 10, 42-yard line. The Bears aren't going to try anything fancy. As Fipp sits down. Six to three. And Mike Phipps, who led the Bears to three victories when he started four of the last six games of the 1978 season, is going to continue leading and I guess uh, that's what he did today as Neil Armstrong has taken off the headsets Phipps 15 for 25 for 117 yards he used Walter Payton a lot today I'll tell you that with as the Bears are starting to congratulate themselves Mike Phipps will obviously be the starting quarterback for Chicago next week as the Green Bay Packers once again failed to beat the Bears in Chicago they have now lost six out of seven to the Chicago Bears over the past two or three years. And that's it. The Bears win it. The final score, Neil, six to three. Neil Armstrong is a winner. Looks across to Bart Starr. The injuries will, of course, be a story as far as Green Bay is concerned with Ivory. But Armstrong, the big story and the big question of the week and all throughout preseason camp, who's going to be the quarterback for the Chicago Bears? And Neil Armstrong said, finally, I'm going to use all three just as you would in a baseball team. Starting relief, who's ever hot, I'll go with him. And Mike Phipps, perhaps, was not in there just for passing today, not to make the mistake, and he handled it well. William Barnes, our producer today, Bob Dunphy, our director, a fine job by our technical and production crew. Johnny Morris, enjoyed working with you. Thank you very much, Dick. Good game. And one of those typical Chicago Bear games with the Green Bay Packers. Tough Black and blue division, it was six to three. Final score is six to three. Bears beat the Packers. Stay tuned for the U.S. Open coverage after this word from your local station. Burns is holding for Russell Erksleben. If good, it will tie the score. Movement on the right side. side. It's got, it's got. Don't. Nine yards, 11 plays to the field goal to tie it up at 10 10. With 6.57 left to go in the second quarter, Bruce Harper and Ken Stroy are deep. Now, at this moment, Harper's on the left side of the screen, but when Cockroft kicks off, he could well be on the right side. But they play a little game because they want Harper to get the football. Right, if it's, if, unless it's completely away from him, he's going to go get it. 
Troy, number 48, has sure hands back there, but he's back there for another reason. He's back there to block. Scott Croft is now set. First circles under it, takes it at the five. 15, 20, 25. 25 yards and return to about the 30 yard line. Now let's check the NFL scoreboard for other games. It took place earlier this afternoon around the league. There they are. Fourth quarter, Dallas leading St. Louis, 1914. Chicago, Green Bay. All right, we'll update those and also the finals. And let's get back to this game. Jets now from their own 30-yard line. First down. Robinson under pressure. He'll be sacked. Jerry Shirt got him. That is the third sack of the ball game for the Cleveland Browns. Now, the New York Jets do not have a sack. Last year, the Jets had only 22 all season long, tying Buffalo for the fewest in the league. The Browns had only 31, not that much better. So we have seen that improvement defensively for Cleveland show itself in the statistics. Well, you've seen the number game. 77 of the Browns, Lyle Alzado, come up with, I think he's had two sacks already. Right. He's put pressure on the quarterback that last time. Linebacker Clay Matthews, number 57, was blitzing, and that enabled Jerry Shirk to make the, make the sack on Matt Robinson. Second and 20, Robinson over the middle, pass is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Wesley Walker. Oliver Davis was following him, and Oliver Davis may have been shaken up a bit on the play. And this is something you will very seldom see, and that is Wesley Walker dropped the football. Yeah, he was open. The ball was there. Had he made the tackle, and, and, or had he made the catch and broken the tackle of number 21, Oliver Davis, it would have been really a big game. Oliver Davis, Davis as I mentioned, shaken up on the play. He's now coming out. Lawrence Johnson taken in the second round of the draft, replacing him third down 20 at the 20 yard line. Robinson holds both backs in the block, and he will be dropped at the 16 yard line. Number 77, Lyle Alzado. I told you that Lyle Alzado is the type of ball player that he comes after you 100% all of the time. And you can see Chris Ward, 72 of the Jets. He's a fine offensive tackle trying to make a move. But look at the strength of Alzado pushing that man 270 pound uh, Chris Ward away and making the tackle. That is Alzado's third sack of the ball game, And Chuck Ramsey will be kicking. The wind swirls at Shea Stadium. You really can't get a good read on it. Oh, they oh, got rush. oh, flag will go down. It will be a penalty against Cleveland. Contact was made on the kicker. Number 86 went after the block, did not get to the football, but he got all of Chuck Ramsey. And you have to touch the football, then you can go in. I don't know system. how he missed it. You can see number 86, Gerald Irons, coming in. He was right in a great position, right in front of the kicker. I don't know how he missed the ball, but he did not miss Ramsey, the kicker. It's a good break for the Jets and a very tough break for the Cleveland Browns. Because they had the pressure on. They had it coming. That was designed like it's designed on the blackboard to go in and block a kick because you're coming the right place right up the middle. The official spots the ball at the 21 yard line. It is running into the kicker, not roughing, running into the kicker. That is five yards, but an automatic first down. So at the 21 yard line, it is first and 10. Bruce Harper and Clark Gage. Other running back. Harper goes inside. Fourth quarter. Chicago leading Green Bay, 6-3. Like a baseball score. Not this one. Fourth quarter. Atlanta, New Orleans. They're tied 34-34. Rams over Oakland in the second quarter, 14 to nothing. Oh, they. San Diego has had a lot of injury problems. No score between Cincinnati and Denver. Kansas City leading Baltimore in the second quarter. Harper. Clay Matthews makes the tackle. I want to mention about San Diego. Everybody picked them as a playoff ball club, but they have lost three key players thus far. 
facing a very tough Seattle team. But if the Chargers can stay close in the first half of the season and get some people back, then uh, well, they lost Louis Kelcher. Yeah, well, that's like losing. Road. That's like losing three when you that's lose right. Louis. That's the one side of the defensive line almost. Doug Wilkins had an offensive lineman they lost, and they also lost a linebacker. Third down, five. Robinson over the middle. It is there. Jerome Barker. First down. 37 yard line. Clarence Scott makes the tackle. Jets on their own 37 yard line. First down. Number 52, Dick Ambrose, is the middle linebacker. And that, that's who number 17, Matt Robinson, is keying. He's going down. He's getting enough yardage for the first down, just turning around and hooking because number 22, Clarence Scott has him man to man. The reason he has him man to man is because I said earlier number 85 Wesley Walker's on that jet team and they're going to double cover him. The ball game tied at 10 10 between the Browns and the Jets. First down New York thrown 37. Good play. Good play. Oh, yes. Yes. Good you, move. You like that don't you? Oh, that's a smart move. That's an intelligent move. He had a uh, bootleg there when everybody was going the other way and I'm sure he just told his back I'm going to keep the ball but you can see number 57 is Clay Matthews he is fooled completely by it and here comes Matt Robinson now he's going to get as much yard as he, yardage as he can and then he's doing the wise thing but he shouldn't slow down there you better keep moving because defensive men have a tendency even though you're out of bounds to hit you anyway when you say good move I didn't know whether he meant the bootleg or the way he got out of bounds no, both of them. getting out of bounds is a smart move First down, Jets own 47-yard line. Pass is complete. Derek Gaffney just scooped it off the turf. Ron Bolton was there for Cleveland. This is a quick pass by number 17, Matt Robinson, getting it out there. He's winding up the ball. And look, his thumb has to be bothering. Look at that ball, how it's wobbling out there. Looks I'm, like not, I'm not sure if he didn't short hop that ball. If Kenny Fouch, our director, can just back that up, maybe we can see. Thank you, Kenny. Right there. Now let's see. Oh, he did get his hands on her. Good call by the official. Cleveland, 49 yard line. Second down, about six, and Gaines will be wrapped up at the line of spirit. Jerry Shirk just jumped on his shoulder. May get a yard at the 48. I had mentioned number 72 of the Cleveland Browns, Jerry Shirk is really important because he solidifies. Now look at Randy Rasmussen was taking a, uh, an angle on him. Shirk just zipped past him into the backfield, got penetration and made the tackle. That time, number 72, Shirk gets right, Randy gets wrong. Mark it at the 48-yard line of Cleveland. Third down, five. 226, time remaining, first half. Ball game tied at 10-10. Delay over the middle, Clark Gage. Dick Ambrose. Makes the tackle, 37 yard line. It's a good play. You can see a game between Lyle Al's 80, 77, 72, Jerry Shirk. They're crisscrossing or changing their, their lanes to rush the passer. But wide open was number 21, Clark Gaines, and coming up with a big play and a first down. Robinson two just got the ball off in time. And the two minute warning is now given to both benches, and we'll take a timeout. And we're tied up at Shea, 10 10. It is no gut. It is no gut. From the seven-yard line, first down for the Cardinals. Six and a half minutes left in this game. Here's Hart on the first down. He's thrown a lot on first down. Pat Tilly is down here. And we have a interception by Aaron Kyle, who's getting up and running with the ball. Kyle coming to the 20-yard line, to the 17-yard line. Now, there's an interesting play there. Tilly tripped over Aaron Kyle. They're going to rule the ball dead where he hit the ground. They're going to call the interception good, though. And there was some contact, but both players were going for the football. And please remember that the defensive back has a right to catch that ball, too, when it's in the air. And I'll tell you, Kyle has made, Kyle has made two sensational plays today. And this is one of them, a great play. And the ball was beautifully thrown, not overthrown. It might have hung up a little bit. It'll be brought back and touchdown, but uh, Dallas does have possession, which is very important. 
Aaron Kyle with two interceptions, one of those coming back in the second quarter, and last year he had four, so he already has half as many as the entire 1978 campaign. That moves it to the 48-yard line of Dallas. Did Kelly have to wait for that a little bit? I, I think he did. It, did he? But as you pointed out, even though Tilly tripped on him, they were both going for the football. Here's Tabak giving off to Ron Springs, and Springs across the 50, just inside to the St. Louis 49 and a half. Let's check some scores, Tom. The Jets, well, they're still leading Cleveland 10 to 7. Robinson, a one-yard run for the Jets, 10 to 7, New York. Robinson did play today. We had heard he might have hurt himself. We heard the, that he hurt his wrist opening his hotel room door. And L.A. leading Oakland 14 to nothing. Boy, what a game. They early in the preseason played, and Los Angeles won that one. Pat Hayden to Miller, a 17-yard TD. Here's Newhouse on a second and seven to the Cardinal 45-yard line. And the Cardinal defense, Tom, has been out there a lot this last, oh, I'd say 10 minutes of play. They've got to get a turnover now. It's turnover time with five and a half minutes left. Uh, there's Tim Carney getting up very slowly. Newhouse now has 94 yards in this game on 16 carries. We'll find out the time of possession of uh, the two teams and see if Dallas is beginning to eat up that clock, as we always say. Carney has come out of the ball game. Preston Pearson has come in for Dallas. Third down, two yards to go. Staubach looking this way. Drew Pearson. And Rogers really upset at himself. Dropped the uh, elbow under again and threw another flutter ball. Looked like Phil Necro. Watch him. He hurries to throw. He wants to hit the out man. Tony Hill was covered, so he decides to hit the sixth route coming across the middle. He just flat overthrew Pearson. Well, he got to hand it to this St. Louis defense, don't you? They've been very, very gritty in this game as Willard Harrell, 39, goes back for the punt. Danny White will be kicking from the 40-yard line. Inside, just inside, five minutes remaining in this game. Looks like they're going to put a rush on. No, not too big a rush. Danny White hits it very high. Fair catch is called for by Harrell, and he makes it at the 13-yard line. And there was no illegal touching. And so with a legal touch, when Atlanta and New Orleans get together, they have some photo finishes. Look at that now. 34 all. There's O.J. Anderson. We haven't seen him carry the ball in a long time in this game. A brilliant first half. First down now from the 13, and here he comes. And Anderson able to hammer it out to the 18-yard line. Randy White making the stop. And exchanges unpleasantries with the young running back from the University of Miami. Look at this move in here. That's the little second-place move that separates the average running backs from the other ones now. Randy White gave him a little extra shove there, and looks like O.J. said something about, hello, Mr. White, or something. <laughs> hello, Big Randy. One thing about Anderson, he's not afraid to stick it in there. Here comes Wayne Morris. He's close to a first down. Now they're going back to their running game. They had deserted that for a while. Let's see what happens to Brunig, the middle linebacker, number 53. He stays in there. Boy, a good block put on him by number 68, Steve, who was in and out of the game with an injury. You go in there and root out that middle linebacker, you really have to be a tough dude, I'll tell you. Look at this again now. Here Three is. receivers down here. Watch Chandler go for the ball. The Saints are using what Atlanta beat them with last year. Big Ben left. And Manning just throws it up for grab, and somebody's going to go up for the football. Wes Chandler comes down with it. It's a completion, but time had run out. See, they got Bethay and White at the tackles. They got Larry Cole and Harvey Martin at the ends. Linebackers look to be uh, Brunick, Didi, and Henderson, the starters. And, of course, Charlie Waters is back home watching. That's going to be a tough year for Charlie Waters not being able to play, huh? you got to believe that. There's 68, Terry Steve out of Wisconsin, a fourth-year man. He was acquired in that Conrad Dobler trade with New Orleans. He came over along with Bob Pollard, exchange for Dobler and Ike Harris. And his disposition's a lot better than Conrad's, right? Four minutes left in this game. First down from the 24-yard line. This is Anderson again. 30, he may go. Anderson may 
Brussels 10,000. All right, this is number 92, Rich Dimmler, the rookie from USC, fifth round draft choice. He has replaced Mickey Stems, the defensive left tackle in this series. Gets it to Cleveland 37, first down and whistle sound. Flags are down. The legal procedure against New York, that'll be for a movement by an interior lineman. That's an automatic call. Let's go back to Sports World. New time. It's now on Saturdays after the baseball game. Here's the call from the referee. And he was having microphone problems. We're not picking it up. But anyway, that's what it was. False start. It's on Chris Ward. On the AAF World Series of Dragon Field on Sports World, we had the Oslo Mile. You saw Sebastian Coe, 349 flat. So the Zurich Sprints and the coverage of that same race, you saw Sebastian go set the world record at 1,500. And we now go to Brussels and the 10,000. That'll be on next Saturday. Robinson drops it off. Pass is complete to Bruce Harper. And he is down inside the 40-yard line. Pass is complete, but not for very much. Generally, the, uh, the running backs, the responsibility of covering the running back is a linebacker, and the linebackers were out on him at that. Clay Matthews is the man who got him. It'll be second down, 12. 39-yard line at Cleveland. One twenty-four. time remaining, first half. Robinson deep over the middle. Passes. Oh, yes, after a one-hand catch. Pulls it down. 23-yard line, first down. Jets are ready to go. Apparently, he's got to be smiling after that one. That was a great catch. New York takes the timeout. 1.08, time remaining. And you can take a look here. It's not well thrown because it's thrown behind him. And this, this is what concentration is. Look at his head. Look at his eyes. It's looking right at that football. Now what he has to do is worry about how he's going to yeah, land. Yeah, look. <laughs> Look at the ground. We'll be back in a moment. We're tied. So the defense, who's been very gritty in this third and fourth quarter, will be called upon again. Ron Springs, Wade Manning back deep. This guy has exploded. O.J. Anderson onto the NFL scene. Here's Wade Manning. Manning may go. Look out. Ken Green is over there, and he knocks him out of bounds. And another rookie has put on quite a show as he's all the way to the 47-yard line of St. Louis. And here's the young Ohio State baseball player. Nobody seemed to want him in baseball, so he thought he'd give a shot to the Cowboys because they give any athlete that wants one a walk-on or anything a chance. Incredible run back. 48-yard return is all. And now this crowd chanting defense, and Tom, we played a whole season here today. We've seen it all. I have to get a better tape job before the next one. From the 47, first down for Dallas. Down by two points. 3.33 left in the game. Stavik on first down. has got time. Throws. Complete. The catch made by Tony Hill. No, Springs. Correction. Ron Springs making that grab. That will be to the 41-yard line. And Seattle now falls in the rears. 10 to 3. Two very fine offenses. 
And Kansas City's leading Baltimore seven to nothing. And we've got to keep in mind that Septian only last week got into this same situation and kicked it as time ran out. So you're not doing something for the first time. Exactly right. He kicked 147 yards against Pittsburgh. Second down, three yards to go. Robert Newhouse trying to go wide. He's got the first down. He's almost to the 30-yard line. Make it the 32. How did it get out of there? I think Sprague's must have gotten a good block for him. And it looked to me like Eric Williams thought he has him. Watch the left part and see what we can pick up here. There's Newhouse doesn't look too fancy, but I'll tell you, he's hiding behind Springs, who does seal off a couple of people. You know, for a guy that's only 5'10", he gets those legs pumping, doesn't he? Well, I'll tell you, he first guy to practice, the last guy to leave. And look at that. He's over 100 yards today. Kind of did it quietly, didn't he? First down now to 32. Dallas is coming right back. And this is the typical Dallas team you see. What poise they have. Roger Staba gives the new house again. And he's tripped wow. up, or he might have gone quite a ways as Tim Carney got it. And it looks like Newhouse is hurt. Boy, that's tough. Boy, hit him right on the kneecap. Obviously, Carney was just trying to throw himself in front of the ball carrier and dead. Robert Newhouse, who last year suffered that broken bone in his right leg and now sustaining an injury. This is the action. The proper medical people are on the field to see. There is the rolling linebacker who gets anything he can. That's Kearney. Boy, he's hurt right away. He holds the ball to make sure that there's no fumble. You want to know what a great catch is? Here's one. The ball is not thrown well. It's wobbly. It's thrown behind. But number 81, Derek Gaffney. That's a tremendous. That's the Super Bowl catch right there. And great coverage by our cameramen here. Yes, They're all on our line. Thank you, man. And also to Mike Weissman, Kenny Fouts in the truck. All right, first down Jets, 23-yard line. The draw, it'll lose at least a yard. While Alzado was there to stop Clark Gay. Well, they've got, the, this is their two-minute drill. They've got less than one minute remaining in the football game. They had two plays called, hoping that they would break that one, but it didn't work. They'd probably have a pass play now. Second and 11 into coverage tipped away no good he is not throwing that ball well that ball is floating he's not getting a good rotation on the football and i'm sure that walt michaels is taking a very close look at at uh, matt robinson you're seeing you're seeing scott durking right there but uh, durking's the intended receiver and matthews broke it up but watch the pass he's bringing that ball way down around his hip and throwing it look at how oh, it's wobbling down there and it, it isn't it isn't getting to the receiver with any velocity on it and I've seen him throw before. We saw him throw a couple of weeks ago, and that's not the same Matt Robinson. Actually, Durking is the one that knocked the ball away. It would have been intercepted. That's a good play by uh, by Scott Durkin. Third down and 11. Gets it thrown 24. 44 seconds left to go. First half. Robinson drops it off. Right flat. Good play. Clark Gage. He will come up shy of the first down. Uh, he shouldn't call timeout now. It's fourth down. They got to go for the field goal. <laughs> It'll be fourth down and a couple jets of the timeout. 31 seconds left. We'll be back to Shea Stadium in a moment. We're tied at 10-10. Number three, the mascot of the New Orleans Saints. One quarter to go here, and it's. And in overtime, the first of 79, and wouldn't you guess it, Atlanta, New Orleans. Last year, Atlanta, on last second, Big Ben plays, pulled them out. And now Chicago has won it over Green Bay, 6-3 to three in Soldiers Field. Wouldn't it be something if Erksleben settled that New Orleans game with about a 55-yarder indoors? Boy. Boy, what action we've had in the NFC. Second down five now. Staubach is 19 of 33, 262 yards in this game. Two minutes, 26 seconds remaining. The Cowboys trail by two, 21 to 19. Doug Cosby has come in a tight end. That's him in motion. Here's Staubach. Pass complete to Tony Hill. One on one. Harry Smith trips oh. him up, but he just couldn't get him to go down. He goes to the 20, and that'll be a first down. I've never seen such pursuit by the Cardinals in my life. That time they they rally around. It looks like they're going to hold Tony to absolutely nothing. 
Here's the fake. They're all over Roger, too. Now watch this bunch start racing toward number 80. If he knew what was going on behind him, maybe he wouldn't even run, but he stays on his feet and doesn't even go down. Boy, we've had a lot of one-on-one -on -one isolations out there, haven't we, where the backs had to make those stops or at least slow them up. First down at the 20-yard line. The field goal would give the Cowboys the lead, but they're going for six now. We're approaching the two-minute warning. Here's a give to Scott Laidlaw. He goes nowhere. Laidlaw with his first carry, and you can see that defense is tough. Charlie Davis led the charge from the nose tackle spot. And now the two-minute warning is here. Saturday, it'll either be Baltimore against the Red Sox or the Dodgers against the Reds on baseball coverage. But now back to football coverage from the 22-yard line and a depth of 32 yards by Leahy. He is hit already from 35 yards out. This one is up. It is no good. It is no good. It is off to the right. So Leahy misses from 32 yards away. And, and Cleveland will take over. You can see what happens to field goal kickers when they miss. Their heads are down. No one will greet them over there. You don't have to look at the official to see whether it's any good or not. All you do is watch the kicker right there. He'll tell you whether it's good or not. 28 seconds left in the half. We'll be back in a moment. Well, the fortunes of this game may rest on number one's toe before this is all over. You know, if you're a kicker, you got to hope that your team scores so you don't have to go out there under all these pressurized conditions. Uh, you can't like having to stroke that thing and win it all the time, but this young man's good at it. There's Bud Wilkinson. This team lost last year in overtime to the Cowboys right here in Bush Stadium. That was Rudy Feldman next to him as assistant there. Second and ten from the 20. The Cowboys haven't given up thoughts for a touchdown, however. Two minutes left in this game. Here's Dabak throwing caution to the wind, spreading out. He's going to run it, and he is going to be knocked out of bounds at the 12-yard line by Steve Niels. He's Boy, only he's about something. two yards short of that first down. He's something. A tenth-round draft choice, a future taken by Dallas. Went to the Navy. Never shirked anything. Look at this. He's had over 2,000 yards rushing, so you know he's a good runner. He's also had separated shoulders and the normal injuries from it. But a big game situation. Number 12 gives you just darn near everything he's got. We understand that Newhouse suffered a sprained or twisted ankle. He will not return to the action. So they're down to one fullback with a minute 54 left. It's a lot of time. There you see what they have facing them. And now Starbuck calls timeout. First down, you got to be in a position to use the fourth down to kick from there. That's probably what the Dallas thought was. Now, let's don't be too silly, just get an easy first down. We got to make sure we get the first down. What a football game this has been. And immediately following the U.S. Open, we'll be switching there for live coverage. Third down, a yard to go. Here's Saldi. Starbuck to Laidlaw. And Laidlaw diving for it. I don't know. Very hard to tell from here. Laidlaw and Springs were moving around. It looked like some kind of an adagio dance. They Neither one knew exactly where to line up on the shift, and it was sort of a strange-looking shift. They did get down and hold so they didn't get penalized. Is that Calvin Hill's old number, that 35? It, That's right. It, uh, Calvin used to go up and over a lot. Now they've got a fourth down, Tom, and here comes Septian. They're not going to waste any, take any chances, I should say, or are they? Up, here comes Carano in. Fourth down. They didn't get it. And pressure on number one, Septian. And remember, last week, Worley blocked a kick. And I believe that Allen blocked one earlier in preseason. So St. Louis has a defensive chance to stop it. 28-yard attempt by Septian. Carano to hold. He mishandled a point after. The snap, the kick is on the way by Septian. It's good. Septian has hit it for hit. 28 yards, and I think it hit the it upright. It hit the it? upright on the inside left and bounced to the right, but it did go through. That was a billiard shot. Remember, he did it last week to Pittsburgh. Here's the high snap. Toronto gets it down. It's got to be a good hold. Now watch this and see if it hits the bar on the left. It did. And then through the boomerang. Oh, hello there. You saw Perry Smith just flailing at the ground after he saw it go through. 
Yeah. Well, they all count, don't they? That's like putting uh, your deed on the hard eight line in Las Vegas and rolling it and hitting it. So the field goal of 28 yards, the second of the day for And Mel Gray. And a guy by the name of Anderson. What a start to this 1979 season. Stepped in, hits it very well again. He has really kicked off well. Harrell will bring it out. Harrell out to the 20, out to the 25-yard line. And that's where the Cardinals will set up shop with 1-12 left, a last-ditch effort in a game that just emotionally, I think, is draining everyone. What are, what are Jim Hart's uh, statistics right now? Do you know? We'll catch him here in a minute. At the 25-yard line, that's where he'll set it up. Our director, Sandy Grossman, our producer, Bob Stinner, an excellent job, men. Thank you. And a game that, boy, it has really had a lot to cover. This one isn't over yet. That's right. Hard in this game, Tom. 10 of 24. 91 yards. Boy, that's good pass, Steve, as you hold him to 91 yards. Two interceptions, two touchdowns, and now the pressure on him. Stepping up, and he's hit. The ball will be incomplete. That was Larry Cole, 63, who reached in and just kind of plucked that ball out of his grasp. Was it, or was it Harvey Martin coming around the bend? Let's see on the replay. It's Larry Cole. He always saves the big plays, doesn't he, till the last. Second and ten, a minute seven still left in the game. The Cardinals have tried to somehow pull this upset. They came in here about five one underdogs and now down by one. Second down ten from the 25. Hart with Randy White giving chase. Here's Wayne Morris. Morris is to the 30, 33, 34 yard line. That's a couple of yards short of the first down in St. Louis. Asks for a timeout. They have two remaining. Tom Myers to the 45, to the 50. Tom Myers returns it. And he's trying to go long down the middle. And look at Tommy Myers playing free safety right there. Be sure to stay with us at halftime. NFL 79 will be updating all the scores across the NFL. Today, they'll also have some highlights. Sipe throws on first down from his own 20-yard line. And it is complete to Fisher at the 32-yard line. Bob Martin was there for New York. It is a first down. 22 seconds on the clock. You know, when, when they called time, when the Jets called timeout earlier, Charlie, I thought it was a mistake because they should have just let it run down. The only thing they were going to do is kick a field goal or attempt to it. Now they have uh, 22 seconds left, which they would not have had if they'd let the clock run down. That's not to say that they're going to do anything, but at least they have the opportunity now, which they would not have if they hadn't called time out so quickly. Sight to throw. Lots of time. Goes deep. Tip. Incomplete. Ozzie Newsom, the intended receiver. <laughs> Excuse me. Schaefer Suggs knocked it away. It'll be second down and 10 back at the Cleveland 32 yard line. Good point that you made because you simply do not want to give another ball club an opportunity to have the football. Let it run down about five seconds and you kick the field goal. And if you miss, it's halftime. Look how many games last year, crazy games in the last uh, play or next to the last play that change the complexion of a ball game that uh, won it. I can think of New Orleans Atlanta two ball games where last play of the ball game won it for the Atlanta Falcons. Second and ten. Sight is hit. Pass is incomplete. He just threw that one away or either that or one of the receivers went in a direction that <laughs> Brian didn't anticipate him going in. It'll be third down and ten. Now we have ten seconds left in the first half. Don Cockroft for the Browns with a 31-yard field goal. Pat Leahy for the Jets with a 35-yard field goal. A sight to Greg Pruitt pass and Robinson in from a half a yard out on a short drive after Burgess Owens picked off an interception. That's been the score. We got him overloaded on the right side here. Three wide receivers on the same side. Sight to Logan. It is intercepted. Burgess Owens has his second interception of the ball game. And there's pushing and shoving in front of the Cleveland bench. The clock 
can stop now with two seconds. Jerry Shirt was in there along with Doug Deacon, Greg Buttle for the New York Jets. But after these sort them all out, the Jets will have the football. Well, that all he was trying to do there, I'm talking about Brian Cypress put that ball up in the air and he had number 85, Dave Logan, out there hoping that he would come up with it. And Burgess Owens, his second interception of the ball game. The Jets now at the Cleveland 49-yard line. Two seconds left in the first half. Well, I'm sure what he ought to do is go back. Number 85 is Wesley Walker. Look at the defensive men. They're 30 yards deep because he should just put the ball up in the air and hope. Four-man rush. He's in trouble. Breaks loose. Now he's got time to throw. He goes deep. It is tipped incomplete. Ron Bolton knocked it away. Gaffney, the intended receiver. That is the end of the first half. The score is Cleveland 10 and the New York Jets 10. Here we have 58 seconds left in this game. A third and two for the Cardinals from their own 33-yard line. They've used the first of three timeouts. They trail by one, 22 to 21. Tilly and Gray, the wide receivers. Morris, Anderson, the running backs behind Jim Hart. Hart gives off to Anderson, and Anderson falls forward for the first down. And are they going to use another timeout? They are. They use their second timeout, and that took only four seconds left. And only one timeout. Obviously, Dallas will keep everybody in bounds if they can. But that doesn't mean you can't complete a ball and get the guy out of bounds. And I would expect Mel Gray to get a call here and maybe look for a deep interference call even. They bring in another defensive back. Aaron Mitchell came in. Larry Bethea checked out from the 37-yard line of first down. Hart back to throw. Protection is very good. Throwing up the middle, and Fiotis Brown, or O.J. Anderson, correction, had a crack at that pass, as did Al Chandler. Right over the middle. Getting up kind of slowly back there is Thomas Henderson. Good protection, but Randy White went by like a, a train in the night. They just did block him and take him beyond the pattern so that Hart had time. Again, here's, yeah, here's the field goal kicker, but again, I think a good play in this situation, and this is just personal opinion, would be throw the ball on a long shake-and-go pattern to Mel Gray and look for interference down the end. They have to stop the clock, and I'll tell you, in order to cover him, you've got to almost interfere with him. Gray is split to the top of the screen, Tilly to the bottom. Second down, 10, Hart 11 of 27 now for 99 yards. Been a long time he has not been in triple figures in passing. Flag on the play. Hart throwing, far side, there's Gray, can't get to it, Randy Hughes over there, along with Aaron Mitchell, but what's the flag all about? Five yard offside, Dallas. Looks like Keith Wartman's having trouble with the helmet, he's taking his off, he's running to the near side asking for another one. <laughs> Harvey Martin's been beaten on that one, that one may be destroyed. He didn't like that one either. George Collins threw one to him, Tom Banks is offering his to him. With a five-yard penalty, moves it across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Let's listen. Number 63, defense, offside. That's Larry Cole. Now with 43 seconds. Getting a little closer down the Same call. You got the play. Second and five. Go down the sidelines and hit 85 as deep as you can. Morris in motion. Anderson. Oh, boy, they were ready for him that time. Randy White made sure of that. That may have been the play they broke earlier. Taking the lead in this game with 116 left on a 28-yard field goal. Pretty close, huh? Can't get much closer than that. <laughs> Not a very good call, the last running play. Uh, that's, you know, you, you really are praying for a rookie to carry the whole team on one blast to get you. Know, the guys that tackled him were the most valuable players, Harvey Martin and Randy White. You don't block them all day and uh, run over the top of it. Los Angeles, well, that lead of 14-0 now has been whittled down to 14-10. Jim Hart on a third and three from the 44-yard line. You see the time remaining. And Aaron Mitchell, the young, aggressive left cornerback, is going to be on Mel Gray again. Mitchell will hit you. 
sometimes illegally, which you've got to play for. Jim Hart on the third and three. Protection good again. Throwing. This is Tilly. He's got it. Tilly breaks loose. He's to the 42. They have no timeouts remaining. They've got to huddle up and get going. Dennis Thurman made the stop. They have a first down. And the defense has to move quickly, too. And now they, he'll bring his arm down. Now it's going. 15 seconds left in the game. Hard again. He's got to kill the clock. Far side. He throws it away. And with nine seconds left. Well, they never said it would be easy. And neither one of these teams are going to forget this game very quickly. Aaron Mitchell and Randy Hughes, depending on that last play. Tom Landry. Talking things over as Willard Harrell now comes in, replacing Otis Anderson at running back. But what do you do now? Uh, on, on defense, you got to make sure you keep keep everything in front of you. Bud Wilkinson, he's not showing any pressure either. This, I, I still would have to go to Gray with it, but Tilly looked good on the last reception, didn't he? A second down, I should say first down 10. Here comes Hart throwing Mel Gray. Can't get it. That was the right idea, I guess, as both Aaron Mitchell and Randy Hughes over there defending on it. They have given Gray a tough time today. It's an awfully tough pattern, though, for both the catcher. He makes him run a post corner instead of just flying up the sidelines. And that's Mike Wood, that's, uh, that's uh, Randy Hughes that's covering him there. You know, they're going to bring in Wood now. This is going to be a Herculean effort by him. He's standing at about the 50-yard line. And he's kicked only one official field goal for the St. Louis Cardinals. He's now, he good. had six field goals of 50 or more yards in college. But as I told you, he's kicked only one, and that was in the preseason, 39 yards. insurance companies. You're in good hands with Allstate. Michelob Light. Good taste runs in the family. And by AC Delco. Quality automotive parts for quality motoring. AC Delco. The NFL on CBS is a presentation of CBS Sports. Turnovers, the two interceptions by Burgess Owen. Two, two, and the one was really a big one. The second interception really didn't mean much, but the one gave the uh, the Jets a touchdown. I think you look at the time of possession. There's a five minute difference. The New York Jets had the football. First downs are reasonably close. Rushing offense, the Jets a little more. Passing offense, the Browns a little more. Total offense to the New York Jets side. Side completing. 6 of 13, and Robinson completing 8 of 14, but as you pointed out, I mean, he simply is not throwing the ball that well, and they do have Richard Todd. Will we see him in the fourth quarter if it's still close? I, there's a possibility, but Walt Michaels is the type of individual that when he names a, a quarterback, he goes with that quarterback until something indicates he should get him out. 
Number 89 is Keith Wright for the Cleveland Browns. Number 83 is Ricky Feature. And Pat Leahy will be kicking off to start the second half. It is Cleveland 10 and the New York Jets 10 at halftime. I was just going to say, Charlie, with all those stats, they were so close to indicate maybe it's a close ball game. And I wonder if we look 30 minutes of action away, we're looking at an overtime possibility. They, they played one last year. Last time they met, they certainly did. Five yard line is Keith Wright. 20, 25, 30. Near the 50 yard line on the return. Tim Moresco finally stopped it. Cleveland's ball at their own 49 yard line. I tell you, I'm really impressed with uh, Keith Wright, number 89 of the, of the Browns, and number 42, Bruce Harper of the Jets. When they get that football, they are headed toward the goal line in the opposite direction. They've turned on the afterburners, and they've come up with, I'm talking about both sides, they come up with great field position for the offensive units. Here's near the 50-yard line. Brian Seitz, the quarterback, Greg Good, and Mike Good, the running back. Reggie Rucker, Dave Logan, Ozzie Newsom, the receiver. Good fake, Logan. 47 yard line. He will pick up four yards. It will be second and six. Donald Dykes makes the tackle. The fans think that he fumbled it. But when you come down and make contact with the ground, if you have possession, then the ball is dead. This is a quick screen, getting the ball out to number 85, Dave Logan. But he has one man to beat. The, the offensive lineman doesn't quite get there, but he's scratching and trying to. That's Doug Deacon. But up over the top, I know that uh, Donald Dykes isn't that tall, but Dave's got to figure he's a little taller than that to try to hurt him up there. Second down and six. Bruitt sweep right side. No gain, he's stacked up. Greg Buttle was there and Schaefer Suggs moved up from the secondary. No, they'll mark it for it. No, it is no gain, the 47 yard line. Third down and six. That offensive line, Doug Deacon, George Beeler, Tom DeLeon, Robert E. Jackson, and Henry Shepard for the Browns. Defensively, for the Jets, Lawrence Pillars, Joe Pellegrini, Joe Klecko, and Marty Lyons. Up front, Greg Buttle, Stan Blinken, Bob Martin, the linebackers. Bobby Jackson, Donald Dyke, Safer Suggs, and Burgess Owens in the secondary. Third and six. Flag down. Five on the pattern. Logan incomplete. You mentioned it's a free play. A free play. Ryan Seip knew that the defensive line jumped off sides. He knew that they were going to get a five-yard penalty regardless of what happened. He threw into a crowd there. Ordinarily, you wouldn't throw into a, a crowd like he did when, when three defensive men were around the receiver. But he knew that no matter what happened, he was going to come back and pick up five yards. He's changing the cadence too, which is really good. If you get that defense, defense offside, tuned to a certain cadence, counting the change up, a lot of times you'll catch those defensive men moving. And that's what happened on that play. So it's third and one. Carl Weather, Curtis Weathers comes in. Calvin Hill comes in. Two tight ends. Full house backfield. And he'll pick up the first down as he goes to the 40-yard line. Stan Blake of the middle linebacker, along, along with Joe Pellegrini and Joe Klecko, make the tackle. Number 43, Mike Pruitt out of Purdue University. Now, he, he was told on that one, just, hey, just get moving. Go as hard and as fast as you possibly can. We only need a half a yard. Hopefully, the offensive line will have a standoff. And that back will surge forward for at least a yard for the first down. That's what happened that time. And the Jets 40-yard line first down. Five out of the pattern. To Logan all alone. Has it. Good move. Gets an extra six or seven yards. Dave Logan in his fourth year from Colorado. Well, I'll tell you. Ryan Seip did an excellent job of getting this ball off because Joe Flecko was coming, but it was a good throw right on the numbers. Brother, that's where you want the football. And now coming up with a good move, picking up a couple of extra yards. But I said number 73 is, is Joe Flecko. Now he's 
much like Alzado. He's coming all the time. And so I've got, this is this is what I get for my efforts, eh? At the New York 17-yard line, first down, Cleveland. Type to throw again. He's got him. He's got him. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson at Shea Stadium, and Brian Seib, a touchdown pass to Ozzy Newsom. He's it covered 17 yards. Here it is. Wide open, a fine pass, right, right where you want it. And look at that. Number 82 is Ozzy Newsom looking the ball all the way. He had his man beat. It was with a, a pattern toward the corner of the end zone. As you can see, the ball is perfectly thrown. Number 22 is Burgess Owens. He didn't have a chance. That is Newsom's first catch of the ball game. 51 yards of the drive in five plays. Extra point is no good, but there is a flag. So we'll have a look at the penalty here. The penalty against Cleveland, it is refused. They missed the extra point. So the score, the Browns, 16. The Jets, 10, 11.55 left to go, third quarter. Completed nine of 16 passes for 105 yards, two touchdowns, and he has been intercepted twice. Well, that Bruce Harper and Ken Troy are deep. Go that ahead. That last pass was really an excellent pass by Brian Seipen. It was a good call, too, because the play action pass on first down, he came up with man to man coverage on Ossie Newsom. Cockcroft kicks off. It goes through the leg of Harper. He picks it up. He's back to the dead. 50, 18 yard line. So New York has the ball on their own 18-yard line. First and 10, Ricky Feature making the tackle, along with Clinton Burrell. Now for the Jets, first opportunity on offense, second half, with Matt Robinson, the quarterback. Scott Durking and Kevin Long will be the running back. Derek Gaffney, Wesley Walker, the wide receivers, Jerome Barkham, the tight end. Offensive line, Chris Ward, Randy Rasmussen, Joe Fields, Eric Cunningham, and Marvin Powell. Robinson to Walker, and he is dumped immediately by Clay Matthews. They started out the second half just like the Cleveland Browns did with a quick screen out to the sidelines to a wide receiver, but that time two players defensively, 21 Oliver Davis, the cornerback, and number 57 Clay Matthews, the linebacker for the Cleveland Browns, they were going to have none of that. They played it very, very well. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Mickey Sims is back in at left tackle. So it's Mike St. Clair, Mickey Sims, Jerry Shirt, and Lyle Alzado, that front four for Cleveland. Pass is high, pulled down by Gaffney. Picks up the first down. Gaffney with his second outstanding reception. The first one in the first half was great. This was outstanding. Well, I'll tell you, Matt Robinson is not putting the ball where he wants to, and I'm, I, I believe that the thumb is bothering him. The ball takes off. It's high. It's a fine catch by number 81, Derek Gaffney. Really, it's good coverage by the defensive uh, back of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, that's, the, that's the second. I think the third really good catch. Anyway. He scooped one off the ground once, too. You're right. Kevin Law jumps to the outside, cannot get around. As the free safety, Tom Dart moved up to bring it. Oh, that was a fine play by number 27, Tom Dart, coming up with that tackle because had Kevin Long been able to get outside of him, he probably would have picked up a first down. All right, let me set the rest of the Browns' defense. Charlie Hall, Dick Ambrose, and Clay Matthews are the linebackers. Ron Bolton, Oliver Davis on the corners, Clarence Scott and Tom Dart at safety. Now, in case some of our viewers joined us later, after this play, would you point out the problems, again, of Matt Robinson, the Jets' quarterback? Yes, sir. All right. Burgess Owens in motion. Scott Durking. Near the 40-yard line and near a first down, Dick Ambrose, the middle linebacker, is the man who stopped him. Now, you were talking about uh, Matt Robinson, number 17, the quarterback of the Jets. What happened? He won the starting job over Richard Todd, but 
a day or two, I guess two days ago, he injured the thumb on his throwing hand, and there was a lot of question as to whether he would play today. He hadn't taken a snap. They took a look at him in, uh, in practice prior to the, the start of the game, and he's able to take it, but he has not been throwing the ball well today. That's, that's something that's bothering him. That right thumb is all taped up. situation they're all coming toward the quarterback or getting penetration in the backfield that's what happens if you break that line of scrimmage there's nobody there and only the great speed of number 21 Oliver Davis brought down Scott Durking preventing a touchdown it was third down and one and it is now first down at the Cleveland 21 yard line Play action, pass complete over the middle to Jerome Marshall. He's trying to get that middle linebacker, Charlie. He's trying to fake, hold that middle linebacker, come up and hit that tight end quickly. Trying to freeze the linebackers. That time it worked. And even at that, the pass is completed. And I've seen some people like Bobby Lane and Billy Kilmer throw passes that never had a spiral on it. But I've seen Matt Robinson throw before, and he does. And he does it today. First down, just outside the 10-yard line. Bruce Harper. Harper to the step. Clay Matthews with a tackle. Well, I'll tell you, number 42, Bruce Harper, is not a real large man. 5'8", 177 pounds. But I think when he took off and made his cut on that run, he thought he was 230 because he was lowering his head and his shoulder going straight ahead. Now the ball at the six yard line. It is conceivable the Jets, if in the next three plays do not score, could still pick up a first down about a half a yard away from the goal line. Kevin Long is the remaining back. And Long carries. Harper with a block and he is overwhelmed on the left side, as is Kevin Long. Bruce Harper on the left side was trying to put up a block. It was a valiant effort, but he was just pushed aside. And Tom Darden, Oliver Davis came up to stop the play. Now Clark Gage will come in. Kevin Long comes out. The line of scrimmage is now the nine yard line and it's third down. Third down and eight and a half to go for a first down. And of course, third down and nine plus a few inches for a score. Robinson may throw to the corner. No, swing pass. Game. Seven yard line. Number 59, Charlie Hall, the linebacker for the Cleveland Browns. Give him a lot of credit because he was not going to let Gaines, number 21 Clark Gaines, get outside on it. He prevented him from getting downfield. Field goal team is in. Jim Moresco to hold, Pat Leahy to kick. From the 14 yard line, an attempt of 24 yards. Thirty-one time remaining, third quarter. It is up, and it is good. So the score, the Browns 16, the Jets 13. Here at Shea Stadium, we'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. Sports World on Saturday throughout the football season on our new day after baseball and this Saturday the Marlboro Cup the IAF World Series of track and field from Brussels and the FINA the FINA World Cup swimming championships from Tokyo Ricky feature number 83 and Keith Wright number 89 the deep backs for the Browns as Pat Leahy will be kicking off Charlie Six. Leahy's been doing a good job kicking he's gotten it about four yards deep in the end zone most of the time and it's going in there again Ricky Feature on the return to the 15, 20, about the 24-yard line. Ken Troy tripped him up. Neither quarterback has an incomplete pass in the second half. We haven't seen the punter for the Cleveland Browns, have we? 
Evans? Johnny, Johnny Evans, we certainly haven't. That's right. Does he kick with both shoes on? Or? As far <laughs> as I know, we haven't seen him. Yes, he does. <laughs> Cleveland now from their own 23-yard line first down, and they have been able to move. About the 29 yard line. Greg Buttle and Stan Blinker, the two linebackers, stop it. Second down and four. Cleveland Browns, they get that running attack going. Uh, not only are they moving the ball and scoring points, but they're taking up a lot of time on that clock. It isn't a big factor right now with less than six minutes remaining, but the next quarter it's going to be. That was a good play by the defensive unit of the Jets in particular. I think number 93, here he is, 93, Marty Lyons, a rookie. Now, Doug Deacon, 73, is the, the offensive tackle trying to block him, but he's stringing out the plays. You can see right there, and comes up with a big hit, coming up with a tackle. It's an outstanding play by that young rookie. I guess he meant it, Charlie, when he said he wanted to uh, show the Cleveland Browns they might have made a mistake by not selecting him when he had a chance. No gain, third down four. Type to throw. It is there. Reggie Rucker. Rucker, to the 50, needs one block. Does not get the block, and Bobby Jackson pushes him out of bounds. Oh, I tell you, if Dave Logan should have kept his feet, he shouldn't have left his feet and just kept running with him. Good throw by number 17, Brian Seip. Reggie Rucker, 33, making the play. Now going downfield, number 85 is Dave Logan of the Cleveland Browns. And you see that number 40 is Bobby Jackson. Logan left his feet. Had he stayed, been able to stay on his feet and shield him, perhaps Reggie Rucker could have cut back inside and scored. At the New York 38-yard line, first down Cleveland. But Charlie, I'm sure the Browns are happy to be on where they are. Quick screen. Keith Wright, the speedster, down the sideline. Boy, he can fly. He ran right by. Woo. Donald Dice, number 26. I think Dice was looking for to make a move, and he just caught the ball and took off. Gain of 13, first down. Quick screen out to number 89, which is Keith Wright. And right here, he just takes off. And I think that right there, 26, Donald Dice is looking for perhaps a move or cutting back to the inside. Bob Martin finally got him. 25-yard line of New York. Sam Reticliano, he has done a great job with the Cleveland Browns. And he always gives you about three opening lines for your telecast. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Freud runs down a blocker, and he picks up maybe two. Sam Blake brings him down. Marty Lyons was also there, and Schaefer Suggs was there for the secondary. Well, I'll tell you, number 93, Marty Lyons is all over the field. It's Walt Michaels is uh, not too happy at the present time because his defense has not been able to to hold the Cleveland Browns, his old football team. But number 93, Marty Lyons, is, he is primed right now for a reverse. Now, 89, Keith Wright, is in the ball game, and he is in the slot left side with Logan split away. Second and nine. Greg Pruitt goes away from the slot. There's a flag down. He almost breaks it at the 15-yard line, but there was a flag down in the neighborhood of the 20. Last year in the overtime game, all of the yardage, including the kickoff return leading to the field goal that won it for the Browns over the Jets, was by number 34, Greg Pruitt. Walt Michaels, when he played for the Browns, wore number 34. He said they should have retired my number. <laughs> it was the number that did it last year. And Pruitt is doing it again this year. He's having a great ball game. Walt Michaels, I played with him in Cleveland. Right? I was there and watched him play. Now, he was an outstanding linebacker, but he didn't have the moves that the district first. Holding, number 65. Holding on Henry Shepard, the right tackle. So bring it back to the 34-yard line. It'll be second down, 19. And Mark Gastineau comes in at defensive left end. Second round draft choice from East Central Oklahoma. That's in Ada, Oklahoma. And he is a designated rusher. They also brought in... Uh, Number 38, Ed Taylor, an additional 
defensive back. They're in their, their nickel defense or a prevent defense. Second and 19. Four on the batter. Deep over the middle to Rucker. Oh. He holds up for it. Rucker. A fantastic catch. I thought Derek Gaffney came up with a great catch, and he did. But Reggie Rucker just came up with a superb catch that, on that last play. Number 17, Brian Seip going back. He's got plenty of time to throw. He's looking over the field. Fires the ball. Jackson well is good covered. Cover. Well covered. He hangs onto the ball while falling down. Great catch. You talked about head and eyes of Gaffney. You watch the same thing with Rucker. Concentration all the way. 12-yard line, first down. Greg Troy. Eight-yard line. Picks up about four. Burgess Owens makes the tackle, and Greg Buttle was also there. Number 99 is, is uh, Mark Gastineau. He's a young rookie. He's a very aggressive individual. Now, there are certain things you don't do or you shouldn't do, and one of them is this. Now, that's a quarterback talking, right? Well, not only that, but the ball is gone. He could have had a, a flag thrown. It had been an additional 15 yards. Once the man doesn't have the ball picked to the quarterback, you're not supposed to pound up, beat up on him. At the nine-yard line, second and seven. Four man on the batter. Gastino almost got tight, set him up, and Pleco did. Bob Martin was also there, but it was Gastino that really set it up. And that will be the first sack for the New York Jets. Well, I'll tell you, Gastineau is an enthusiastic individual out there. There was some speculation that he wouldn't even play. If you're taking a look at Joe uh, Kleckel trying to catch his breath. Number 99, Mark Gastineau apparently uh, injured his shoulder. He came in with a sling on, and they didn't know whether he was going to play. But as they say, when the bell rings. That's right. He is there. That's what you call a player. Regardless of how he feels on Sunday, he's going to get out and suit up and go out and play. Third down, 17. At the Jet 19-yard line. Going into the corner to Logan, he can't get to it. And pressure was put on by Bob Martin. He was blitzing. He dropped side. Sight turns in, I believe, to Mike Pruitt and said, you were supposed to pick him up. Somebody's supposed to pick him up, not me. He did the wise thing of just getting getting rid of the football. He didn't have a chance on this one. He even gets set. Here you see 59 Bob Martin coming in right in his face. So he's just unloading the ball. Somebody's supposed to pick him up is, is true. Generally, it's a back's responsibility to pick up a linebacker. And now Don Cockrock, field goal attempt of 36 yards. He is hit from 31 yards out. It is good from 36 yards away. It is now Cleveland 19. The Jets 13. We'll be back to Shea in a moment. A double header on NBC again next week. So be sure to check your local listings and following the kickoff, as you look at Walt Michaels, head coach of the Jets, we'll be giving you a rundown of all of the games that we'll be covering next Sunday. Walt didn't look very happy, did he? No, he didn't. Harper and Stroy are deep. And it'll be Bruce Harper at the nine yard line. To the 20, 25, 30, 35, 37, 38 yard line, an excellent return by Bruce Harper. Pat Moriarty of the Browns is the man who made the tackle. Moriarty from Georgia Tech is a free agent. Now, we mentioned the doubleheader. Here are the games. Of course, it'll all start with NFL 79 at 12.30 Eastern time. First half, well, we'll be in New England for the Jets' New England game. Also, there's Houston at Pittsburgh, Cincinnati at Buffalo. Second half, Oakland, San Diego, Seattle, Miami, Cleveland, Kansas City. So, Check the local listings in your area for the game that you'll, the two games that you'll be watching. Play weekend. fast. Robinson has all the time in the world and it's intercepted. Clay Matthews. Matthews to the 45, 40, 35, 30, 25. Clay, 
He takes a lot of time when he makes his interception. He's following his blockers down there. He's running like a fullback. Matt Robinson did not see number 57, Clay Matthews. He was looking to go to Wesley Walker from the beginning, but Wesley Walker is flushed out of the pocket, as you can see here. Number 77, once again, Lyle Alzado putting some heat on, but he, he didn't see Clay Matthews at all. He was looking for his receiver. And that's the thing that a quarterback has to do is pick up the defensive end first. 121 left of the third quarter. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back the Jay Stadium in a moment. No, I think his thumb is definitely bothering him. He tried to throw across the field or across the green on that last pass, and that's, that's always a dangerous move to do that. Matthews with the interception. Cleveland at the Jets 24-yard line. Rucker in motion. Greg Pruitt, good hold. 21-yard line. He has three. It'll be second down seven. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson in New York, where the Cleveland Browns lead the New York Jets 19-13. Schaefer Suggs making the last tackle. Cleveland has the ball of New York 21 yard line. Second and seven. Side gives to Greg Pruitt. A pickup of six. Joe Klecko makes the tackle. It'll be third down and a yard at the 15 yard line. Once again, he came up on a quick count trying to catch that defensive unit perhaps unprepared. It was a good move because they picked up good yardage. Now they're in a short yardage situation. Cody Risen, the rookie from Texas A&M, comes in. Calvin Hill comes in, and the rookie tight end, Curtis Weathers of Mississippi, comes in. Third down and one, short yardage. They'll show a full house backfield. And it is Calvin Hill. This will be close. Calvin Hill from Yale in his 10th year in the National Football League. Clock has been stopped now with one second left to go in the third quarter. We're waiting to see if we'll have a measurement. Change coming out. An interesting decision on what uh, Sam Rotigliano is going to do. Whether to go for the first now because three points, three big points now, they lead by six. And now the clock will be wound, and that will be the official end of the third quarter. After three complete with one to This is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson. As we they're going for it in this situation. Three points ha would happen to be three big points because it means they'd have to score a touchdown and a field goal to go ahead of the, uh, the Cleveland Browns provided they made it. Excuse me, I said third and one, and it is fourth and about an inch. They, but any good football team, when you get a foot or so, and if you don't say to yourself, we can make a foot, then you're not going to. However, they lead by six. And a field goal takes away a touchdown. Well, they're hoping to, to ice this thing up or try to ice it up with a touchdown. But even if they make the first down, that doesn't guarantee that they're going to get in and score a touchdown. Fourth down, and it's his full house backfield. Flags are down. Pruitt carried Mike Pruitt, and I believe he jumped too soon. There was a flag down. Waddle led the defensive charge. Schaefer Suggs helping the officials on the call. That's it, illegal motion. Now the field goal team could well come in if they picked up the first down. But they'll have to bring the change out to see if it was a first down. If it was not a first down, the Jets will take over on down. Well, if it was a first down, the Jets will take the penalty. And then I would imagine the Browns would go for the field goal. 
the offensive unit of the New York Jets. They were coming on the field. They didn't think that they had made it. What about it? They didn't make it. No, they did not make it. So forget the flag. The Jets take over on down. Here is the last play. The left guard leads to Sue. That's George Beeler. I also believe that Mike threw at the ball carrier left to Sue. It was not a real good exchange between the quarterback and the running back. We've got a timeout. The Jets have the football. The Browns have the lead. Jets need something. They, they don't seem to be controlling that line of scrimmage, or they haven't for the last couple of series. Second down and seven. Gaffney goes wide to the right side. Walker goes wide to the left side. With Durking and Long, the two running backs. Matt Robinson, the quarterback. Both backs in the block. Throws knocked away. Good defensive play by Ron Bolton. Gaffney, the intended receiver. Walt Michaels helping the officials on the far sideline. I think Walt perhaps felt that he had uh, his left hand on the receiver. He got his right hand around to make the, the block for the knockdown right there with the right hand, but he's, Walt may be saying that the left hand is on the receiver. Close call. Bruce Harper and Clark Gaines that are now in the backfield. Third down and seven. Pressure, he is dry. Mickey Sims, that is the fifth sack of the ball game for the Browns. Mickey Sims came up with the uh, with the sack of the quarterback with number 81, Jack Gregory, the seasoned veteran. Take a look at him here. He flushes Matt Robinson out of the pocket. Here he is meeting Chris Ward. He's dead there. After the first few steps, he's got him. Matt Robinson had to step up or number 81, Jack Gregory would have tackled him. Take your choice. Do you want Sims or do you want Gregory to nail you? Here's the punt by Ramsey, and it's not a good one. End over end, but takes a jet bounce and goes out of bounds. Just outside the Cleveland 40-yard line. We'll call it the Cleveland 41-yard line. The Browns have the football, and they have the lead. 19-13, 13, 13 minutes plus to go. Their own 41 yarder. They couldn't find the right camera. <laughs> it's hard to look over, find the camera, and turn back and see yourself before the picture changes. Brian Stipe, the quarterback, he has had an outstanding afternoon for the Browns. Rucker in motion. Jackson, the cornerback, goes across the defense with it. Pruitt is a trouble slip as he comes back and he's covered by Marty Lyons. Greg Pruitt. Now let's update some of the scores. Final, Dallas over St. Louis in a close one. Had a field goal that won that ball game. Chicago defeats Green Bay. Atlanta defeats New Orleans. Another close one. Well, that was an overtime game. That was Ooh, Oakland has the lead now over the Rams. San Diego still leading Seattle. Denver leading Cincinnati fourth quarter. Sipe goes down in to the tight end. Got behind Burgess Owen. He's overthrown Charlie. He had him beat by about two steps. And no one knows that more than that man right there, number 17, Brian Seif. He said if I'd have just hung it up a little higher or pulled it a little more, it would have been six points. Great speed by number 82, Ozzie Newsom, the tight end of the Cleveland Browns. Third down and 50. Kansas City leading Baltimore, 7 nothing third. Mark 
Gastineau comes in for Marty Lyon. And Ed Taylor for Sam Blink, a five in the secondary. Sides to Greg Pruitt, first down. Ed Taylor made the tackle. There were five men in the secondary. And still the Browns picked up almost 25 yards on the play. Sipe is looking for single coverage. He found it. Number 34, Greg Pruitt. He had single coverage. 39, Ed Thompson. He was supposed to be guarding him man to man because they were doubling the outside receiver. 12 minutes, 55 seconds. Time remaining in the ball game. The head coach of the Jets, Walt Michaels. His club trails the Browns by six points, 19-13. Cleveland at the New York 40-yard line. Sipe to Rucker. Incomplete. Well, he is human, isn't he? I think he had his hands on that football. Looked like he did at least get to touch it. Everything else has gotten near him he's come up with. Keith Wright comes in. Rucker comes out. So it's now Dave Logan and Keith Wright, the wide receivers. Ozzie Newsom, the tight end. Sam Ritigliano, the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. We'll have a slot offense on the left side. Newsom the tight end on the right side. Sipe to throw. Here's the three to the tight end Newsom. Oh, yes. Good defensive play by Greg Bottle. Tight end screen. Sipe set it up perfectly, but Buttle was there for the defense. Number 51, Greg Buttle did a fine job on that one. Here it is. He's trying to influence the defensive end to come in. The defensive end did. Now he slips out, makes the catch, and hopefully he has some in out in front to block him. But number 51 right there, Greg Buttle was going to have none of it. Came up, make an open field tackle. Really a fine play by Buttle. Loss of a yard, third and 11. Blink out, Taylor in. Now five in the second area again. Last time in this situation, Sipe went to Greg Pruitt. He gives to Greg Pruitt. A gain of three. It'll be fourth down as Joe Klecko and Greg Buttle makes a tackle. And for the first time in the ball game, Johnny Evans of North Carolina State, wearing number eight, is in the kick for the Cleveland Browns. He might be rusty out there. He hasn't moved that leg. Here it is, 11 minutes and a half to go in the football game. He has yet to kick his first one. Probably going to try to angle it out of bounds someplace or angle it high or hit it high, giving his men an opportunity to get under the football. Bruce Harper is deep with Ken Stroy and Tim Moresco. And he does hang it up. Oh, Jets yes. get away from it. It goes out of bounds. Good kick by Johnny Evans. Jets are in the hole. They have 11 minutes and 20 seconds left. The Browns have the lead. We'll be back in a moment. for the two games to be seen in your area. Cleveland has the ball on their own 15-yard line, and we have 9 minutes, 35 seconds left in the ball game. It is Cleveland 19, the New York Jets 13. Dodd Cottrell with two field goals, but one missed extra point. Pat Leahy has two field goals for the Jets. Clutcher in motion. Mike Pruitt. Okay, a gain of five. Greg Buttle, Sam Blink to make the tackle. will be second down five. Right now, what the Cleveland Browns are thinking, Charlie, is let's establish something on the ground. If we can pick up a few first downs with the clock working in our favor, we're going to be in a great, great position. And that's not to say that they don't want to score, but the, the type of plays that they're going to run, just like that one, that was not a fancy play. That was straight ahead. It was not designed to lose. Couldn't lose any yardage on it. Chances of picking up four or five. Second and five. Mike Bruin. Same thing. 
and another five yards. He'll have the first down. Dan Blinka, Burgess Owens on the stop. Coming up with the first down. Now they've gone through one minute already, or almost one minute, since they've maintained possession of the football. Two plays, so they can continue this. Now, you have pointed out that it's past the nine-minute mark, nine minutes plus. They started thinking this way. Is that about the time when you have a lead in the fourth quarter? You start thinking in that situation about the nine or ten minutes to go? Yes, and then you can also pick, if you're moving the ball like they are in the last two plays, you can pick a time, you guess right, the play action pass or throw the ball and you might catch him now and Mike him up for six. Throw it around the corner from the 26 to the 29 yard line. Again, a three second seven. Schaefer Sugg made the stop. And that was a play there, number 34, Greg Pruitt. Now, he stopped the clock. That isn't what he wants to do. If he'd had an opportunity to, to plant and go back inside, he would have. But number 51, Buttle, the linebacker of the, uh, the Jets, made sure that he didn't. But he's, you can see number 51, Greg Buttle, is, is right here, pumping and pushing his line. <laughs> there he is. Get out there. Get... <laughs> but a good play is stringing out the ball carry so that he couldn't cut back. Second and seven, passing down. Mike Broad. He'll come up about two yards shy of the first down. Big play coming up for both teams, particularly the New York Jets. Third down, short yardage situation. They need to stop them right now with less than eight minutes remaining in this football game. Bob Martin and Stan Blink on the last tackle. It'll be third down and two. Calvin Hill comes in. Greg Pruitt comes out. Dave Logan comes out. The power eye. Third down and two. Now they make it a full house. Calvin Hill will come up short of the first down. Hey, Charlie, if ever a situation, if you really wanted to gamble, that was it for uh, number 17, Brian Sight, because 11 Jets were around that football. Now the officials will bring out the chain. But when Calvin came down from our vantage point, I did not think he had it. I thought he missed it by at least the length of the football. We shall soon find out. That much. Just an inch away. That's a, that's a small so football. Seven and hit. A very <laughs> short football. <laughs> And Reticliano is going to gamble. He may be. He may be just going on a long count trying to draw that defense offside. Good point. Sipe would come up. He'll never snap the ball. Wanting to pull that defense. He'll change cadence. Use the full 30 seconds and then bring the kicking. I, I can't imagine him going for it here in this situation. But he is. Mike Pruitt. He is pushed back. The Jets have held. The Jets take over. Burgess Owen for the Jets is the man who stopped Mike Pruitt. Place in the ball game. The Browns have gone for it and have been thrown back for the jet defense well i'll tell you this is a big big play pitch out to number 43 mike Pruitt, trying to get up but it's being strung out number 22 burgess owens coming in up on play 53 with 26 donald dyke from the cleveland 34 yard line Durkee will lose yardage mickey sims and clear scott are there for cleveland He loses two to the 36. Second down, 12. Well, they got an opportunity, the New York Jets I'm talking about. Now they must take advantage of it. A little over six minutes remaining in this ball game. Five 
on the batter. Over the middle. Get it complete. Jerome Baco. Baco inside the 10. Clay Matthews. Here, Kevin Long. Oh, Charlie. Kevin Long. I'm Coming out of the backfield. Good throw by Matt Robinson on that. That time he hit him right on the number, going full speed, giving him an opportunity to get upfield. As you can see right here, the ball is going to be thrown right on the numbers, right where it's supposed to be. Now he's going straight for the goal line. Somebody's got to make a tackle. 57 is Clay Matthews. He comes up with the play. Not before he gets a first down inside the 10. First down, goal to go. It was to Kevin Long. And now Bruce Harper carries. Six-yard line. Second down, goal to go. Tom Darden with the tackle. Five minutes, 18 seconds. Time remaining. Clock is moving. Brown leading by six. 19-13. Jets have the ball on the Cleveland six-yard line. Charlie might go back that twice. Remember, they were leading by six. Field goal range. Here before, they decided to go for it. Didn't make it. Walt Michaels looking on for the far sideline. He's going to get in. Oh. It is tied up. 1919 extra points to come. Well, uh, the Jets took advantage of that situation. Coming up with a couple of real big plays by 33 Kevin Long. He's got the football. He's going to keep it too. That will win his trophy case, Charlie. You bet. Tim Marisco to hold Leahy to attempt the extra point. Normally, Robinson holds this game. Marisco has held. He misses to the right side. We are tied. Tim Marisco, a new holder. Burton Eaton. And Burgess Owens cannot believe it, nor can Pat Leahy. It is tied, 1919, 4.48 left in the game. number 44 who came up with a football but that is unofficial at the Cleveland 23 yard line Ricky feature 83 making the catch he's carrying that ball in the wrong hand it should be in the other hand away from pressure that's the no. reason that thing was fumbled it was Mark Merrill Mark Merrill who recovered the fumble at the Cleveland 34 yard line first down Kevin Long Long has been devastating in the last five minutes of play. Charlie Hall was there along with Lyle Alzado. Right Kevin Long turn looked like it was nothing into about a four or five yard gain on that play. Just inside the 19 yard line. Clark Gaines will be the remaining back. Two tight ends. Second down and six. It is game. They string him out. He gets around the corner. Darden finally brought him down. Lyle Alzado was also there. Gaines has picked up about 15 pounds this year. His weight up to 209. First down. There it is, 355. That is the time left in the game. That's controlling that football game right now for both teams. New York Jets want to use as much of that clock as they possibly can and get a score. Cleveland Browns want to stop them right here. Make sure that they settle for a field goal attempt. At the 13-yard line. First down. Uh, 
Nothing, good for Carl. Nothing fancy. Straight ahead, trying to look for an open hole, trying to get that four or five yard gain. That's what the New York Jets are working on right now. They've got two tight ends in the football game, making sure they have maximum blocking either to the right or to the left side of that offensive line. So that's one remaining back, but he can go to either direction. Jerry Shirk and Dick Ambrose on the last stop at the 10 yard line. It is second down and seven. Two tight ends are in. Gaines, the remaining back. Schuler and Barkham are the tight ends. Second and seven at the 10. 317 on the clock. Gaines, straight ahead. Five yard line. Just inside the five. Charlie, I'll tell you something. Straight ahead. Nothing fancy. Straight ahead blocking by the offensive line. Number 65, you see, is Joe Fields who is one of the most underrated centers in the National Football League. He really does a fine job. But straight ahead, picking up four and five yards at a crack. The tough yard is going to come right now because they're inside the five-yard line. It's going to be bunched up down there. Third down and two. Kevin Long is the remaining back. It'll be close to the first down. It didn't look like a very good exchange between the uh, the quarterback and the running back on that play. Robert L. Jackson, the defensive linebacker, makes the tackle. We might as well wait till the two-minute warning comes up. Officials wind the clock. It will be fourth down and about a half a yard. Pat Leahy with Tim Moresco to hold. Moresco number 37. Normally, Matt Robinson, the quarterback, is the holder. He has the bad thumb. It is wrapped, so Moresco is holding. The clock moves to two minutes. We'll take a timeout. We're tied at 19-19, two minutes to go. Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson, two minutes to go in the ballgame. Fourth down, about half a yard to go. Pat Leahy is in the kick, and his holder, Matt Robinson, the quarterback, jam, thumb, and all, will be holding for Pat Leahy. Well, I'll tell you, a holder for a next point field goal kicker is kind of like maybe a catcher for a knuckleball thrower. They have to feel that confidence that that man is going to do the job. And he, did the he did it. He did it. It is there. From the 11, 21 yards away, the Jets have the lead. Pat Leahy, after missing the last extra point. Very good hold. Straight up, no laces. Follow through by the kicker was excellent. You see him jumping off the field, you know that he made that one. <laughs> Time game though last year the Browns and the Jets it was Greg Pruitt who set it up with a kickoff return and then he carried uh, either carried or received the ball on every play. Charlie, who do, you, the field. who do you kick it to now? Do you cut Pruitt back there and keep right? <laughs> oh, I think I <laughs> kick it through the end zone so they can't return it. Either that or a, a line drive float type of kick. Nope, except Pruitt. Pruitt at the five yard line. Greg is to the 20, the 25, and they drop him at the 27 yard line. Flag is down. They're going to get the Jets for piling on or under Terry Ruffin. Very aggressive, but you can't be overly aggressive because that could add to the 15 more yards onto that play. Personal foul, clipping against Cleveland. That will hurt the Browns. I saw a New York Jet hit Greg Pruitt late, too. They spot the ball at the 13. I was 
Bears trying to give the Browns another 25 yards. Here. So Cleveland now with 153 remaining. Their work is cut out. They trail by three. Dice goes deep into coverage. Newsom, a great and reception. Oh, coming up with it. It's safer side. He steals the ball away from Newsom. The Jets have the football. Dice with the best of the day, or maybe the decade. He took that ball right away from number 82, Ozzie Newsom. Newsom almost came up with a great catch. The ball was underthrown. Schaefer Suggs just took it away from him. The officials are back there now debating the situation. Take a look at it right now. Number 82 almost coming up with a great catch right there. He's taking the ball away from him. Schaefer Suggs stole the ball right there. Now, is he down? That's what the officials are debating out on near the 50-yard line. I would say he'd be down at the point of interception. Sipe throwing the ball. Intended for 82. Newsom got his hands on it. He's going down. Schaefer has the ball away from him. Yeah, but uh, down in contact with Newsom. Right. So it should be the Jets ball at the spot of the interception. <laughs> and a moment ago, we saw Doug Deacon, who was down for Cleveland. And we believe he's up and all right, although I haven't picked him up yet. That is what the officials call the Jets have the ball at the interception, spot of the interception, which is the Cleveland 48-yard line first down with now a minute 38 remaining in the game. Charlie, I think to clarify a situation, you don't have to tackle a man. All you have to do is touch him if he's down with the football. You cannot advance it after that. And now Doug Deacon is being, he was still on the far side of the field, is coming across the field with the team doctor. But Deacon is coming across the field under his own power at the left 35-yard line. I'll say this about Walt Michaels. He doesn't get or show that much excitement. He has things pretty much under control on the sidelines during the football game. And I know he is not always that way. But you go back to the gamble with six minutes and 44 seconds to go. Cleveland Campbell, fourth down and inches. And they did not make it on their own 34-yard line. Now the Jets just need to run out the football. Flag is down. Now, I think what has happened there, an offensive lineman looked like jumped off sides before the snap of the ball. This has happened. What you don't want to do, I'm in the, when you're in the huddle, the quarterback's telling those people, look, two things we don't want, we don't want any... Any penalties, don't be offsides, do not hold. And you backs, when you get the ball, get both arms around that ball, clutch onto it, don't cough it up. The illegal procedure called against New York. It'll be first and 15. That took up only two seconds. Now there's 136 remaining. The ball now at the Jets 36 yard line. Cleveland Browns have two timeouts remaining, Charlie, in the, in the event that they get that football back. Yet I told you both arms around that football, and he didn't want to—he didn't want to continue outside because they'd have run him out of bounds, and that would have stopped the clock. Mike St. Clair is the man who covered Kevin Long, and Cleveland takes the timeout. Stopping the clock now with 1.29 remaining, and they have one timeout remaining, according to our account. If the Jets hold on to the football and they don't stop the clock because of the penalty, it's going to put the Browns in a tough situation. They've called timeout after this play, but it'll be uh, third down coming up. So they can run out almost. Uh, the Browns get the ball back. It could be less than 30 seconds remaining in the ball game. And be sure to stay with us immediately following the ball game time permitting. NFL 79. And a recap of all the scores across the nation in the National Football League this afternoon.
At the end of the first quarter here, Cleveland led 7-3. It was tied at half, 10-10. At the end of the third quarter, Cleveland led it 19-30. It was then tied at 19 all. And now the Jets hold a three-point margin, 22-19, with 1.29 left in the ballgame. and 15. Scott Durkee. Durkee to the 50. To about the 48 of the 47-yard line where Ron Bolton and Charlie Hall made the tackle. I'll tell you, there was a block thrown out there, not by one of those great big old offensive linemen, but by number 85, Wesley Walker, coming back, cracking back on a defensive back. It has to be above the waist, and does he ever? Defensive back had no idea he was coming in. Third down and nine. Clock moving, 55 seconds and counting. Now he's got it. There's nine seconds remaining on that 30-second clock. He ought to be watching it all the way. The snap with three seconds remaining on the clock. Turkey carries. All right, now Cleveland will call timeout. Okay. And they do, stopping it. 37 seconds remaining. It will be fourth down and about four yards to go. Tom Darden and Clay Matthews in the last tackle. The ball spotted at the 43-yard line. They're going to have to go after it, Charlie, hoping to block this punt because if they get the punt off, they're going to have a long way to go with no timeouts remaining. So they can hope if they get in and can get a piece of that ball, they get the ball in good field position with the accuracy of Don Cockroft, the fine field goal kicker of the Cleveland Browns. They might have a chance yet. It is fourth down and four at the Cleveland 43-yard line. Keith Wright is dropped back as a solo safety. And Chuck Ramsey will be kicking. Now, you may recall earlier in the ballgame, Ramsey kicking deep in his own territory. The rush was on. They almost got the block, but instead, they ended up going into the kicker. And it was Gerald Iron. Gerald Iron. So for running into the kicker. Coming up the middle. Eh? From Mississippi. Curtis Weathers, the tight end, is in to put the pressure on, as is Gerald Iron. And Ramsey is back 17 yards. He took a couple of extra steps. Yeah, they're coming after it. it off. Not that good a kick, and it goes out of bounds. That stops the clock with 30 seconds to go. And the ball is at the 16-yard line. This is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson at Shea Stadium. 30 seconds remaining in the game. Moments ago, it was tied 19 to 19. But then Pat Leahy, after missing an extra point earlier, as is Don, did Don Cockroft, this time Matt Robinson, the quarterback, with a bandaged thumb, his normal holder, came in and held for him. Tim Resto had been holding before. Leahy split the uprights with a 21-yard field goal. That was after Ricky Feature fumbled the kickoff return. And the Jets recovered it. And they now have the lead. Side throws to Logan, far side. He's out of bounds. 25 seconds left to go in the game. Cleveland does not have a timeout. No timeouts remaining, and what the New York Jets are doing, they are conceding the short stuff, hoping that if the man catches the football, they can tackle him in the field of play. That's all they need to do at once, because with 25 seconds remaining in the ball game, it's going to be tough for them to get off another play. So Bryant, or Sipe has got to hit the fringe area or hope to go up top, but he's not going to get behind anybody. Burgess Owens is back there about 25 yards deep playing free safety. Dyke throws, almost intercepted. Yes, sir. Donald Dyke. 
The Jets are back deep. And take a look at Burgess owns at some about 20 or 25 yards deep. They're playing a zone defense. They're saying nobody is going to get behind me. Number 26, Donald Dykes almost came up with an interception there. It may not make any difference, but one of the official clocks says 20 seconds to go. Another official clock says 21 seconds to go above the message board. Second and 10. Sipe throws deep over the middle. It's incomplete. Looking for number 82, Ozzie Newsom. Got a hit in front of somebody, but there's no way, as I said, that they're going to be able to get behind this New York Jet secondary because they're lining up 20 or 25 yards deep. Quick recap of the scoring. Play here, 35-yard field goal. Brian Sipe, a touchdown pass to Greg Pruitt. Matt Robinson, a quarterback sneak from a half yard out. Cockrock, 31 yard field goal. It was tied at halftime, 10 10. Second half, Sipe to Newsom, 17 yards. Leahy, a 24 yard field goal for the Jets. Cockrock, a 36 yard field goal. Kevin Long from six yards out. Two missed extra points. Then Pat Leahy with a 21 yard field goal and the lead. Deep far side. It is tipped. He's caught. Inbounds. And then out stopping the clock. 32, maybe 33 yard line. Eight seconds left. Dave Logan. This is a prayer shot here. He's just throwing it up in the air, hoping that number 85, Dave Logan, a basketball player, along with being a football player in Colorado, can come up with it. And he comes up with a great catch. This is following the football by, by the receiver, number 85, Dave Logan. Defensive men are in great, great position. That's number 26, Donald Dykes. He was in great position, but Logan just came up with it. Eight seconds, seven seconds remaining. One says seven, the other says eight. With less than 10 seconds remaining in the ball game. And now, Cockrock, number 12. His experience matches his numbers. Penalty against the Jets. Now well within field goal range. Let's listen. Number 99, defense, personal foul, roughing the passer. First right. down. Yes to no, call for roughing the passer. Charlie. Our intention, we were looking downfield, I never saw it. Do you remember early in the game when Sipe threw that pass, and number 99, and our, our, our crew caught it when he yes. pushed him? He said that that is a no-no. From the 25, a kick of 35 for the tie and overtime. Cockroft, it is up, it is good. Five seconds still left. We are tied, and we look to overtime at Bay Stadium. Cockroft is now hit from 31, 36, and 22 yards out. Here's another look at the kick. The most accurate kicker in the National Football League over the years, number 12, Don Cockroft. He's kicked a lot of pressure kicks over the years. I'm sure none any bigger than right now with four or five seconds remaining regulation of this football game. He's going to have to squib kick at this time or just dribble along down the field and let the clock run out. One thing he doesn't want to do is kick at the Bruce Harper. Now, inside of the last two minutes of each half, which we obviously are, the, the clock on the kickoff does not start until it has been touched by a receiving player. So we point that out in case something comes up. Well, I'd kick it to one of those offensive linemen. Just kick it 10 yards to the force to pick it up, right? I'll kick it past that first wave of players, kick it to the to the wedge back here that will be situated back about the 35-yard uh, line. Bruce Harper is deep along with Ken Troy. About the only way, Charlie, that they, they'd have a, a chance, the Jets would have a chance of, of scoring on this kickoff is to kick it deep. got to figure any of those men up front they're not going to be able to run 60 yards or so for a touchdown and now Cockroft will be kicking off yeah, that's 
exactly what they did. You're right. All right. Coming up with the football is John Hennessy. And with Hennessy's return, time runs out in regulation play. However, we're now into overtime. We will go to first point scored or the end of another 15 minutes of play. That would be the end of overtime, and it would go in as a we tie We've got to find out who wins the toss first. They're going to have a coin toss. And the call here is just <laughs> as important as anything else that may transpire. Randy Rasmussen comes out, and Burgess Owens comes out for the Jets. Cockcroft is out. Ryan Seif is out. Along with Charlie Hall for the Cleveland Browns. The New York Jets had a lot of breaks late there to, to get ahead. It's all going their way, but one break for the Cleveland Browns. Tails is strong. The Jets win the toss. They will receive. At the end of regulation play, we are tied. 22-22 will return with sudden death action in a moment after these messages from your local station. We start overtime. The New York Jets winning the toss with Bruce Harper, number 42, Ken Stroy, number 48. They are the deep back. Don Cockroft will be kicking off for the Cleveland Browns. And you may notice that Cockroft immediately wanted to kick from this end of the field. He wanted to force the Jets to be running on the infield of the football, of the baseball configuration here at Chase Stadium early in the ballgame because Cockroft immediately came to that side trying to see if there's a wind advantage. And with a swirling wind here, the flags seem like they're all blowing out of the stadium, so you can't tell from here. Well, they want, they want them to run out of that dirt. The dirt and also... Number 99... Mark Gastonot, he was the he was the man called for roughing the passer. He's going to have to live with that because without that 15 yards, Charlie, they're not in field goal range. They still would have, they still would have gone for it, but then it would have been a 50-yard kick. Yes. The wonderful world of Disney, part two of the sky's the limit, will be seen immediately following the conclusion of these telecasts over most of these stations, West Coast and Mountain Times. We'll see it at its regular time. Now let's get the football. It is high and it is short. And it is Bruce Harper. Harper leaving a trail of dust behind him. Ricky Feature Ricky makes the tackle. And the Jets have the football on their own 33-yard line. First down. We're in overtime. Tied 22-22. First score wins it. Gaffney comes to the near side. Kevin Long. Long outside the 45-yard line. 47-yard line, first down. Matthews makes the tackle. Number 33, Kevin Long, particularly in this second half, has really come up with a lot of big plays. None bigger than that because that's a first down. This is overtime. They've got to get some momentum going. They've got to move that football. And even if they don't score, if they have to punt, they're going to put the Browns in a situation where they're going to be tied up back by their end zone. Matt Robinson in regulation play completed 14 of 24 passes, 158 yards. He goes to long again. Scott Durkee at 76 yards rushing. Wesley Walker, three receptions, 47 yards. Sims with the last tackle. Second and nine. That's what the Cleveland Browns wanted to do, put him in that second and long situation as opposed to second and medium, second and four or five. Force him into a passing situation. They stay on the ground. Durkee. Good play, good blocking by the offensive unit of the New York Jets. For 66, Randy Rasmussen leading the plays out there. And 
for Randy, this is uh, his 169th game as the uh, the Jets. Here he is coming out, putting block on Clay Matthews, number 57. He's still doing it, isn't he, Charlie? After sure 13 is. years, he is what the third uh, player with the most uh, most games played for the New York Jets. That's right. At the Cleveland 46-yard line, third down, two. We're two minutes into overtime. Durkee, oh, first catch. down. Scott Durkee. Yes. 42-yard line of Cleveland. And he said, any way that I can get there, I'm going to have to get this first down because it's very important. This time it meant going up over top, and he went up over the top of, uh, looks like number 78, Mickey Sims. Yes. Up and over. He must have been a hurdler in... Uh, in high school back in Chicago. Just inside the Cleveland 42 yard line. First down, Jeff. We're in overtime. Tied 22 22. Yes, Pass sir. Is there. It's to Wesley Walker. First down, 26 yard line. Oliver Good play. Davis, Good play. The Cleveland Browns that time, they were looking to stop the run. They wanted to make sure they didn't get much yardage on first down. They were in man-to-man -man coverage. Matt Robinson saw that, I'm sure, and he went to a man that is very difficult to cover man for man. Number 85, Wesley Walker. First down, New York. Cleveland, 26-yard line. this time. Durkee carries. Ambrose and Sims. Now, here's a quick look at all the finals since we will not have a post-game show. You just pick them out. Clark Gaines comes in for Kevin Long. It is second down and eight. 24-yard line of Cleveland. Three minutes, 20 seconds into overtime. Bootleg. Bootleg. Didn't go for it. Lionel Alzado drops it back at the 31-yard line. A loss of about seven. It will be third and 50. Yes, sir. This was a bootleg. Everybody look at number 66, Randy Rasmussen, going to the right. It was a call play to the right, hoping that Alzado would chase. It worked earlier in the ball game. Well, you, you know, an old pro, a guy that's a seasoned pro, he, the next time he's going to take a look to make sure that you've handed off the football. Third down and 15 now at the 31-yard line. The field goal kicker, Matt Lay. They need to pick up some yardage, though. It's a long field goal. Clark Gage. People here are complaining they thought that maybe number 74, Mike St. Clair, who come leaping into the pile there late, should have been called for unnecessary roughness. The line of scrimmage, the 26-yard line. It is fourth down and 11. Leahy is into a tip. Matt Robinson will be holding jam, thumb, and all. 34-yard line. A kick of 44 yards and the win. It is up. It is no good. No good. Leahy, who missed earlier from 32 yards, misses from 44. He does have three field goals in the ball game, as does Don Cockcroft and the Browns take over. Ball is down. Good hold. You can tell right there, number 17, Matt Robinson tells you exactly where that football went. It did not go through the upright. Now, since the line of scrimmage was outside of the 20-yard line, Cleveland takes over at that point. Ball is down. Looks like a good hold, and he has done that. He made the last one, but barely inside that right uh, crossbar. And the extra point he missed, he, he missed, missed wide right. right. All right, Cleveland, their first opportunity in overtime for their own 26-yard line, first down with 10 minutes and 19 seconds left in overtime. That's the maximum. Pass is complete to Mike Pruitt out of the backfield. From the 26 to the 32, it'll be second down and four. Greg Buttle makes the tackle. 
So the Cleveland Browns have dodged the bullet from 44 yards out. The bullet was wide to the right is what it was. And well, now they have their first opportunity at overtime. Well, I'll tell you, I'm sure they'll look at it, too, with Matt Robinson trying that naked uh, bootleg reverse that Lyle Alzado did not go for that lost about eight yards. That's the factor in that ball game so far as far as the field goal range is concerned. Second and four. Reverse, fake, fake reverse. reverse. Ruin Keith. Greg has the first down outside the 40, 41 yard line. Barnes Spillers and Stan Blinka make the tackle. I'll tell you, a reverse wouldn't be a bad play because number 93, Marty Lyons, that rookie for the New York Jets, he really chases. During regulation play, as you watch this, Greg Pruitt, 60 carries, 56 yards. You can add this onto it in overtime. Dave Logan, the leading receiver for the Browns, five receptions, 94 yards, including that key one right at the end of the ballgame. And Seif has completed 16 of 29 for 243 yards. And the Browns in the first down on their own 41-yard line. Greg Pruitt, Mike Pruitt, block out in front. Maybe a yard, and that is it. Yes, sir. Good gang tackling, good hustling, and good pursuing by the New York Jets. We have now eight minutes and 39 seconds. Time remaining in overtime. Only one overtime period to be played. It takes the full 15 minutes. It will go in the book as a tie ball game. First score would win it within this period. That was a big play for the Jets. Now they put the Cleveland Browns in a situation with nine yards to go. They're on the passing yard line. Right. Reggie Rucker is wide to the near side. Oh, Throw it is nailed. Oh, Blinko really Dan nailed. Blinko, the rookie from Sam Houston State, number 54, taken in the fifth round from Rockdale, Texas, a town of 4,000. And he said, I was not even the best football player there. Well, I'll tell you, he guessed right on this one because he's coming straight ahead and gets a shoulder and arm into number 34, Greg Pruitt. A loss of a yard. It is third down and 10. Yeah, now they now they got to throw the football. Now, if they get any kind of pass rush on site, put a lot of pressure on them. Pass is there. Oh, caught hell. by Newsom, and he is decked immediately by Bobby Jackson. He is stunned and he holds on to the football. Ozzie Newsom. He was really... He was failed. It's amazing that he, that, he, that he held on to the football, Charlie. And if I read lips, he says, I'm all right. Well, he probably got the wind knock out of him and he really did because he makes the catch right here and look at the concentration on it. Coming up is Bobby Jackson, number 40, times it just after he gets his hand on the ball, and he does maintain the football. Big play for the Cleveland Browns because it picks up a first down. Now Jackson is 5'9 and 175. Newsom is 6'2, 232. If it had been the other way around, oh. Charlie. <laughs> the ball would have gone <laughs> way at the Jets' 44-yard line. First down. Big third down play. Slot left side. Seven minutes, seven seconds. Time remaining in overtime. Rucker in motion. Greg Pruitt. Dan Blinka with the tackle. Joe Klecko was there. Burgess Owens was there. Just outside the 40. Second down and six. At 639, left in overtime. That's a four-yard gain, Charlie. It didn't look like much, but four yards is pretty good on first down. Particularly, looks like the New York Jets are playing the run on first down. Now, Cleveland is on the dirt part. Does that affect their running game? Sure it's going to, because they're going to go from dirt to grass. Plane coming overhead, and the wide receivers can't hear the call. It looked like a checkoff, too. Seif goes deep to Logan, tip incomplete. Dave Logan with Bobby Jackson covering him. And you're right. The plane's either taking off or landing in LaGuardia. They're taking off, coming right over Shea Stadium. 
And on the checkoff, the wide receivers could not hear. You could see Dave Logan, number 85, turn to the quarterback and move in so that he could hear what he was saying because the airplanes around Shea Stadium. It was a good defensive play by Bobby Jackson, number 40, the New York Jet. Third down and six. Ozzie Newsom is back in at tight end, number 82 for Cleveland. These fans here at Shea Stadium are coming alive. They know this is a big play. Timeout. Right calls for a timeout. I'll tell you why, because it looked like it was going to be a safety blitz. We're in overtime. We're still tied. 22-22. We'll be back to Shea Stadium in just a moment. Wednesday, Real People exposes the never-revealed side of the Dallas cheerleaders. And families named Nielsen examine the socially redeeming values of television. Why don't we talk about Cheryl Keith? And Real People searches for a Johnny Carson replacement. Ah, oh, take my husband, please. Plus, women boxing and a town that fought to keep its chicken on Real People. This is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson. We have 6.08 time remaining in an overtime period. There would be only one if there is no score. It would be a tie ball game. The ball is at the Jet 40-yard line, and it is third down and six. It is 22-22. Don Cockrock with three field goals. Pat Leahy with three, but Leahy has missed twice from 32 yards away and 44 yards away, and they both missed an extra point. Sipe drops it off over the middle to Mike Pruitt. It, it will be close to the first close. down. Very close, depending on where close. they set that ball down, Charlie. He was not the primary receiver. He was looking elsewhere. But he knew that he had to get rid of that football because the pressure was closing in on it. They spotted at the 35-yard line, and the change will come out. Here's a reminder, the wonderful world of Disney Part 2 of The Sky's the Limit will be seen immediately following the conclusion of this football telecast over most of these NBC stations. Those on the West Coast, <laughs> you will still see it at its regular time. Have we seen this situation before? Time and time <laughs> again today. They're going to go for it again. Maybe Sam Rattigliano, the head coach of the Browns, feels the third time may be a charm. Twice he has gone for it in fourth down situations, and twice the Jets have held. A field goal attempt from here would be a 52 yards in length. Oh, this is a good move on Sam's part. He's got to go for it. You've got to go to win this football game. Pushed back. There was movement on the right side of the Cleveland Brown line. Burgess Owens for the defense met the play. We do not there know if he got it. It is the, the right, right guard. guard. I believe that is Robert E. Jackson. If we can pick up his number. 68. 68. Yes. yes, it is. The penalty Coming being Hill marked up, so apparently he did make it. Forward progress was over the... Uh, first down this is you know it's bad for the Browns but they get the punt off they're gonna put the Jets back in the hole once again and Johnny Evans is in the kick 533 that is the time remaining in the game with Bruce Harper D and they're gonna Jets. destroy and Tim Moresco will be on the way Jets are gonna call a timeout they want to get organized out there and make sure they know exactly what what they're going to be doing while we have a timeout, here's a rundown of all the scores. Houston, Houston coming from behind to defeat Washington. Everything is a final. Philadelphia over the Giants. Miami edging Buffalo. Minnesota over San Francisco. Dallas barely defeated St. Louis. Chicago over Green Bay. Atlanta over New Orleans. Oakland defeating Los Angeles. San Diego down Seattle. 
Denver shut out Cincinnati. Well, looky here. Kansas City looky over here. Baltimore. Your ball club. They've only given up three Ooh, points in the last three games. We were talking about the planes taking off from LaGuardia. Well, there's the, the next one that wins. <laughs> that is the noise battered at Chase Stadium. Bruce Harper will be deep with Ken Stroy and Tim Moresco on the wings. They are primarily there to block. And Johnny Evans will be kicking, I believe, for the second time in the ballgame. This man was a quarterback in college, so I know he can throw the football. I don't know whether the Browns would ever want to chance it, but there's, you know, there's room back there. He could do it. He could have in the middle area to cover anybody. He could have tricky footing, too, because he goes to the skip. Blocks it! Block. Donald Dyke! Dyke blocks it! The man who blocks two in preseason play. He blocked 12 in college, and he blocks his first official NFL kick. Cleveland, Cleveland it, says that they recovered a fumble. It down doesn't there, make Charlie. any difference. There was never possession. It will be the jet ball. What's the kick is blocked? You have given it up unless the receiving team has possession and then fumble. There was never possession. It's a jet ball. One thing I didn't think that they'd go after the after the kicker try to block it, but they did. Big big break for the New York Jets. You're right, Charlie. Never had possession of it. at the Cleveland 34-yard line. First down. 5-24, left in overtime. Donald Dykes blocked two kicks during preseason play, starting out the regular season with a big, big block of a punt, an attempted punt of the Cleveland Browns. Kevin Long. Mickey Sims with the tackle. They need some yardage, though, Charlie. I'm talking about the New York Jets because they are not in field goal range right now. Five minutes left in overtime. So we are two-thirds into the only period of overtime we would play if there is no score. Second and ten. Cleveland 34-yard line. Kevin Long, straight. Inside the 30, maybe at the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and six. Dick Ambrose, the middle linebacker, with the tackle. That is now field goal range would be 47 yards. That's the holder seven yards back and add another 10 for the end zone. That's a long kick. They're bringing in number 42, Bruce Harper, and number 21, Clark Gaines, in the backfield. They like to throw to them in this situation, third and six. And here is Pat Leahy. He's not nervous. <laughs> He's saying score a touchdown. Please. He's three and three. Three field goals. He has missed two field goals. He's missed an extra point. No Lovely sir. pass. Flag is down. There's a marker down. Yes, Lyle Zeta was pointing to number 72, Chris Ward. Holding against the Jets. That takes him out of field goal range. <laughs> but they will have the down over. If they accept the penalty. Oh, you and I would have to accept this penalty, wouldn't you? Number 77, Lyle Alzado in the white, in the green. Number 72, Chris Ward. Oh, now we will have controversy over that penalty. We can look at that again. This is what the Jets were talking about against the Giants. And they say that in this situation that Chris Ward has his hands inside of the frame of his own body. That the defender is the man who turns. And his hands are inside the frame of his body. Unless he has a hold of the jersey. He might uh -huh. he that is the key out. Back to the 40-yard line. Third down, 16. Robinson throws. Wobbly pass incomplete. Mark is the intended receiver. Walker was deep, but Robinson did not have a chance to go deep. That's what that pass rush will do for your defensive unit because he threw that football way before he really wanted to. Chuck Ramsey is into punt. We now have four minutes and four seconds left in overtime. Keith Wright is set for the return. Well, I think the Cleveland Browns make 
take a chapter out of the, the book of the, the Jets, and maybe they'll try to go after him. We would have to do it with an eight-man rush. No, they drop no, back for the return. Be no Ramsey return on this one. For the corner. Goes into the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20-yard line. So now Cleveland will have three minutes and 55 seconds left in overtime. 22-22, tied after regulation play. No one has left this uh, this Shea Stadium ballpark. I have an impression, and that is that both ball clubs, particularly offensively, have played so well, they deserve the tie. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll tell you that they're, they're look back and they could say, these, if this hadn't happened or we hadn't done this, we created our own problems. They're all correctable mistakes that they made. But the, both teams have had opportunities to win this football game. It's not over yet. Stipe goes to the air, drops it off. Out of the backfield is Mike Pruitt. To the 26-yard line. It'll be second down four. Schaefer Suggs and Stan Blink will make the tackle. That is the time remaining in the overtime period. It was tied at halftime, 10-10. It was tied after four quarters, 22-22. And it is still 22-22 as Dave Logan comes wide to the near side. Brian Seif, the quarterback. Quick count. In his sixth season. Greg Pruitt. Close to the first down. Got a flag down. Holding against Cleveland. They're pointing a finger at number 73, Doug Deaton. He's debating that call. You take a look at those players out there right now, and they look tired, and I'm sure that they are because it's been a long, grueling afternoon for both teams. And uh, they've got to play again next week because there's a, there's going to be a ball game for the next 16 weeks but mentally is the, the way that it affects you not so much physically because in a day or two you're back physically and there's no no major problem don't forget the wonderful world of disney part two of the sky's the limit will be seen immediately following the conclusion of this football telecast over most of these nbc stations on the west coast and most mountain time zone stations the wonderful world of disney will be seen at its regular time into the Cleveland backfield, number 30, Cleo Miller, came running into Ryan Seip to give him a play. So this play is coming from the bench. Second and 14 at the Cleveland 16-yard line. Greg Pruitt outside the 25, near the 27, possibly the 28-yard line. It'll be third down and three. Calvin Hill comes in. Cleo Miller comes out. I think that's the first play that Cleo made. He made a fine block on number 51, Greg Buttle, springing uh, Greg Pruitt for that gain on that last play. 2.27, time remaining. Overtime. Third and three. Side. Oh, he's knocked away. Good the play by Bobby Jackson. Rucker, the intended receiver. Fourth and three, and Johnny Evans will be kicking. Got 2.18 remaining in, the, uh, in this football game, regardless of what happens. Bruce Harper is back by himself. The Jets now with 10 men on the line. I'm sure they're looking to wear and number Dykes boots <laughs> inside. Well, they're looking for him. Dykes is third in from the defensive right end. He didn't waste much time getting that kickoff. A good kick. Harper takes it over his shoulder. He's back at the 21. That kind of crawls to the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. A great kick by Johnny Evans. So the Jets take over. We have 207 left to go. And let's do a little of our house uh, cleaning because as soon as this game's over, will be going away. Not now, of course, but when the game's over. So this is a reminder. The executive producer of NBC's football is Don O'Meyer, and the telecast of today's game has been produced by Mike Weissman, directed by Ken Fouts, 
our technical director, Bruce Berquist, and Randy Wands, our associate director. And gentlemen, along with everybody else on the crew, including our cameramen, who do a tremendous job, have done it once again. The Jets on their own 25-yard line, first down. Robinson, over the middle, Wesley Walker. Look out. Walker, oh, Wesley. Walker to the Cleveland 41 yard Flag is down. And a flag is down back at the 12-yard line. And Alzado says it's on the New York Jets. Holding against the Jets. That penalty will show up as 10 yards. But it's closer to 50 yards. Yes, sir. The gain that they made, taking it back what they lost big big play number 68 holding holding on the rookie right guard eric cunningham of penn state right guard eric cunningham he's a rookie a good pass blocker too you see they're doubling up on jerry shirk they got a hold of everything there got a hold of his jersey And there is the play that is a race to Wesley Walker. And now the two-minute warning is given to both benches, and an official's timeout is taken, just as it is at the end of the first half and at the end of the regulation ballgame. And so that is the timeout here. And, of course, the, uh, the quarterback and the defensive linebackers will go and have a discussion with uh, their coaching staff. This is downtown Flushing, New York, <laughs> as the sun has set here. As we look well, to... Well, that's a tight game. Nine to seven, Miami over Buffalo. That surprised a lot of people, I'm sure. There's another one. Yeah, and I think Dallas had to come from behind to win that football game. A lot of close ball games. That's more today. points, I think, than Atlanta scored in the whole preseason. It may be half of last year, too. Don't forget about the Oakland Raiders, folks. Denver shutting out Cincinnati. <laughs> Your ball club did it, right? They're a much improved football team. Are they really? Yes, sir. Now, next week, we've got a doubleheader on NBC. Check your local listings for the game to be seen in your area. We'll start it all at 12.30 Eastern Time, NFL 79. There's a rundown of the game. Now let's get back to this one. First down and 20 at the New York 15-yard line with two minutes to go in overtime. The draw, Clark Gage. Gaines will pick up five yards to the 20. It'll be second down and 15. Charlie Hall and Tom Darden wrapped him up. Yeah, they were, they were standing him up, him up, and what they want to do is strip him of the football, but he had a hold, pretty good hold on that ball. Second and 15. One thirty-six clock moving. Time remaining. Four on the pattern. Now five. Pass is complete to Scott Durkee. About five yards, maybe six yards shy of the first down. Where it'll be third down. They got that hurry up offense in, but it's third down and long right now. No, you're right. It'll be third and about seven. A minute, a little over a minute to go in a football game. They've got a couple of the first down here, and they've got it. First down, New York, to Jerome Barker. Ron Bolton makes the tackle. Clock moves on the one minute mark. Time remaining. They've got one timeout left. They've got to get moving right now. Barker is hurt. Each team receives two timeouts in overtime. Pass is high and incomplete, stopping the clock, 42 seconds left. 28, Ron Bolton, he had his hands out saying, no, I didn't touch him, I didn't touch him. Mickey Schuler has replaced Jerome Barkham at tight end. The ball is at the New York 38-yard line. It is second down and 10. 42 seconds remaining. They have plenty of time to do it, and they still have one timeout remaining in this football game. Needless to say, the Cleveland Browns will be uh, playing pass. And Wesley Walker will get their attention. Second and 10. That goes deep. Look it is wobbly. It is short. It could be intercepted. It was too short to be intercepted. Oliver Davis had the coverage. Tom Darden was there, and it was just such a bad pass. They couldn't get back for the interception. 
It looked like maybe somebody had a fair catch this ball. This is what you call a wounded duck coming out. It looked like he got it out in front of Wesley Walker. He'd had a chance. It had been a long throw. But once again, with that thumb bothering him, it's affected his throwing today. In case you joined us late, Matt Robinson jammed his thumb a couple of days ago. It is taped, and he has had a problem throwing the football. Not in leadership, only in throwing the football. Third down and 10. From the New York 38-yard line, 34 seconds. Flag is down. Going deep. Intercepted. Is intercepted. It is picked off by He's got a lane Davis. down here. Back to the 50. To the 40. Davis inside the 35-yard line. But don't forget the marker. We'll have to see what the call is on. Who the call is on. It's going to be on the New York Jets. <laughs> Clock is stopped, 24 seconds. Zone defense. Ball is underthrown once again because one thing you don't want to do is throw it short. Either it be long enough or too long, but never too short on a play like that. So Cleveland will have the football at the New York Jet 31-yard line, first down. You see the pass here. Way behind the offensive receiver. Number 21 is Oliver Davis coming up with the interception. 24 seconds left in overtime. And one timeout left. Don Cockcroft is on the bench. An excellent kicker. They, they've got time to do it. Dave throws. Wide Logan. open. He's got him. Got Dave Logan at the 10 yard line. It'll be first down. 18 seconds. Remaining in overtime. And they'll do it right now. They don't want to wait. Cockcroft is there. One good reason why they're doing it now, if there's a bad snap from center, this is first down situation. They could fall on that ball, call timeout, and still have another opportunity to kick it. They don't care. You know, it's just... That's the thinking of a veteran quarterback. Right. Way to go, Lindoff. All right, from the 17-yard line. 27 yards. And the victory. Logan holding. Takra, kick is there. It is gone from 27 yards away. 14 minutes and 45 seconds into overtime. 27 yards away, Don Takra, his fourth field goal for the ball game. to the home of the New England Patriots for this, the official start of our 1979-1980 ABC Monday Night Football season. 
And what an opener we've gotten. A lot along the way, too. We'll have three Thursday night specials. One Sunday night special. The first Thursday night special. This Thursday at Denver. The opposition, the Los Angeles Rams, still smarting from that upset yesterday at the hands of the Oakland Raiders. But now, tonight, what a matchup. The Super Bowl, Pittsburgh Steelers champions against perhaps the most offensive-minded team in football, the New England Patriots. And it's a supercharged team, these Patriots, emotionally. Why? Because Darryl Stingley, who suffered that fateful collision August 12th a year ago with Jack Tatum, has come back home for the first time since that tragic accident. And you'll be meeting him exclusively at halftime. In the meantime, there is some internal discord on the Patriots, and it's only right to recognize it. Remember, some two weeks plus ago, they traded Leon Gray, the brilliant all-pro offensive tackle, to the Houston Oilers. I asked the new head coach, Ron Earhart, if he were in favor of the trade and what impact that trade had upon the efficiency of the Patriots' offensive line. This is what he told me. I was reluctant to make the trade. Of course, I'm the head football coach. I'm selfish. I didn't want to break up a combination we had up front, uh, the combination that led the NFL last year in total offense. Uh, as far as uh, how much it's going to impair us, Howard, uh, I can put it this way. Uh, when you take a rookie and try to replace an all-pro, it, it just isn't done overnight. So that's the Leon Gray situation as Ron Earhart, the head coach, sees it. There may be a quarterback problem, too, on the Patriots. What a delight to have back the great experts to discuss that problem. Dandy Don Merrick. Oh, it's good to be back. I really am happy to be here. It's 10 years of ABC's Monday Night Football. Son of a gun. Nice to be here. Now then, that quarterback situation, that is a little bit tough, but maybe not as tough as we're trying to make it. Steve Grogan is the number one quarterback. He had knee surgery last year, and they're saying, well, maybe he won't be the running threat that he's been in the past. Well, I don't know. I know this, that, that he's got a couple of good backups. Matt Cavanaugh's a young player, and so is Tom Owen that can both throw. We heard a rumor that if things don't go well in the first half, particularly quarterback, that they're going to substitute one of those guys, and they call Owen and Cavanaugh about the same. So the only thing I can say is it's going to be a fun year. Now, then, Frank, outside of Pittsburgh, having world championship, great quarterback, great coaching, and all that sort of stuff, what else they got working? I guess we should kick off. They don't really have a major problem. If anything, they have minor injuries at their cornerback position, and they may have a little bit of a trouble uh, at the beginning of the season with their offensive line, a right tackle there. They're hurting just a little bit. But believe me, it's nothing serious. When you have Terry Bradshaw coming off the best year he's ever had, 28 touchdown passes, he became truly a leader, and he's been that over the past few years. But I don't believe anyone fired the football in a lot of years like Terry did at the end of last season. He was really a remarkably gifted quarterback at the end of the year. And, of course, you have Franco Harris. And while New England has the great offense, number one in the NFL, well, Pittsburgh gave up the fewest points in the NFL last year. A classic matchup, if you will. We say that many times, but this one happens to be. the pressure man wide open oh, yeah one hands it oh yeah we have seen him do it for many times well the last person as we look at it again from the end zone to leave daryl stingley in the administration building up there before the game was russ francis and he said i'm gonna get three tonight but daryl they are emotion charged I like to call that man the all-world tight end. Nobody was ever better physically constructed for the position than Russ Prince. Now, wait a minute. He's coming off that line, a little stand-up block. They're trying to hold him in there, then moving back across that side, across the flow. And then he is wide open. Give me that one hand on it, and it's mine. <laughs> Third and goal. Steelers down by seven. Sidney Thornton found a big hole over Sam Davis and Mike Webster, and he's into the end zone, and the Steelers are within one of tying it up. All right, let's see. What are they doing up there? Man, that's just kind of straight away. They're counting on Nelson to fill that middle, and he had a good move on him in the inside. And that's Mike Webster that they followed. Just shot out there and got him. Open up, did not tell you. You have to fill those gaps on a goal line defense. You can't take them head on. That looked like what they called a little outside 4-3. <laughs> Matt Barr. No good. Welcome to the NFL, Matt. <laughs> and I started to say that Matt Barr has just scored his first NFL point. Matt Barr has just not scored his first NFL point. Steelers down 
down by one. At this time, we would like to make a very special player introduction. Please give a warm New England welcome to a very important member of the New England Patriots who is seated in the press box tonight. Number 84, wide receiver, Darrell Stingley. Darrell Stingley, whom you will hear from at halftime in an interview with Howard Cosell, making his first return visit. There's an absolute capacity crowd here, a standing ovation for number 84, who was injured, of course, tragically last October, August the 12th. He has returned home. He is going to be executive director of playing personnel. Has a very optimistic outlook on his future. Has regained movement in his right hand after being fully paralyzed for so long. And as I said, you will hear from him at halftime. This is a moment to remember as one fans the stands, looks at these people, one realizes what an athlete can come to mean to a population. And this has been a remarkable athlete, number 84, Darrell Stinger. And it happened on August 12th, a year ago, the collision with Jack Tatum. Not only were the fans applauding his teammates on the sidelines, facing up to the press box, applauding number 84. It's impossible to really try to imagine what's going through his mind. It's, it's something that's so far beyond most of us. Well, when you meet him at halftime, you'll see the kind of young man he is. Uh, another special kind of courage. Owner Billy Sullivan announcing today that he would be the executive director of playing personnel for New England. He wants to scout college personnel. Plans in the coming future, whether it be one year, two years, five years, to be able to move around the country, look at film, see young college players. Those faces are lit up as if they are one. And from the way Darrell was greeted when they wheeled him into the administration building here tonight, as the tears roll down his face, you know what they meant to. And those players, they poured in to see him. Let the moment speak. I suppose it would continue for many, many more minutes. Darrell, I'm sure, would not want that to be. The ovation continues as play. Well, it cannot be resumed as Steve Grogan obviously cannot call the snap numbers. And Grogan leads his teammates away from the line of scrimmage, applauding Darrell Stingley. Steve 
Brogan trying to quiet the crowd, looking over first and ten. New England, the ball at their own 33-yard line. The handoff to Cunningham, and Cunningham spins back and goes down in the arms of Gary Dunn after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. 9.50 remaining here in the first half. New England scored first. Pittsburgh answered back, but they missed the conversion, so the Steelers are down by one. Here's Johnny Smith who won his job back from posing. Johnny Smith from Southern to England. Yes, I remember him well. Struggled through last year, the first three games with a torn thigh muscle. Finally had to go on the injured reserve after three games. 31-yard attempt for John Smith. Englishman. I'd say so, right through the upright. And New England has extended their lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Steelers have to be troubled. Bradshaw has gone to the locker room. 10-6, Patriots over the Steelers. And out comes John Smith. 32-yard attempt. right through there. That's right through there. Smith he hits from 32 yards out and the Patriots have a 13 to 6 lead. There's one second on the clock. Third and 10. All 11 are at the line of scrimmage. Grogan tried to get it off and he did. Oh my gosh. Flag is down. And Mel Blunt catches Morgan at the 5 yard line. What a fun play. Oh boy. Let's see it again. Oh, I like that. Huh. Let's see what the penalty is. Well, let's see. Oh, oh the motion. Oh, oh, England, they'll bring it back. Grogan upset. <laughs> uh-huh. He says, wait a minute. That time, they threatened the blitz, and they came with it. Grogan switched it up, which you do in a situation like that. Went for the fly, and they're going to bring it all back. The home of Miller Bomber, Sherman Tech, and Austin College, of course, too. Mr. Rick. Logan away to the also. He doesn't get that double coverage anymore. On first and ten. Bradshaw, wide open. Ah, be darn. How did he get set? Sidney Thornton. Well, they have a way of doing it. Rolled out of the backfield. He should have been picked up by a linebacker. They probably totally ignored him because he is not known as a receiver. And he was wide open. He was wide open. My gosh, this thing, I told you, you know that thing, I, you can just feel things. I just knew that was going to be it. We're going to be here for a while. We are a conversion away from a tie ball game. Matt Barr, he missed his first attempt tonight. Granted, it was a bad snap. Not so this time. We're tied at 13 with 4.09 on the clock. All right, let's see if we can pick it up. I'll tell you, they gave you play action, Don. That helped. Well, I didn't see it. Norton just came out from the other side of the backfield. The fake was to Franco, and somebody just missed him. That's all. You're right. He watched that one in, didn't he? Oh, he looked it over. We'll be back in a moment. We have 158 remaining to play in the fourth quarter of play here at Foxborough. It's all tied up. The New England Patriots 13. Harry Bradshaw hit Sidney Thornton for a 21-yard touchdown a short while ago. That tied it up. Right now, the Patriots are looking over a third down and 13 with the football at their own 40-yard line. Rogan not having a spectacular night. But how many quarterbacks do against the Steelers? Deflected and up in the air. Man, he got popped. Grogan, who has been on the ground many times tonight, is down there once again. Going into that, he had four sacks, minus 36 yards. His net passing yardage on the night, 87. 161 yards for New England, Russia. So they didn't get the field goal opportunity. Eddie Hare has punted seven times. 
done a good job and tremendous pressure again the Steelers both their punt returners T Bell and Jim Smith have been injured they can't play so Lynn Swan's back there you just saw him standing at the 20 and they are rushing 10 men on every punt he kicked, he kicked another fluffer but he gets a fairly good bounce and it's going to be at the 31 yard line so the Steelers will take over with 142 remaining at their own 31 yard line and that time Eddie Hare had a good average going he kicked 114 a while ago this one went 24. of a referee's timeout. I think they're trying to quiet the music a little bit. It's a little noisy down there. We were down there earlier this evening and it, the speakers on the sidelines would make it very difficult for the quarterback to call his play. And that was the situation. We're ready to go. Bradshaw. Trying to get a screen off to his tight end, Benny Cunningham, and New England wouldn't let him off the line of scrimmage. And the fans are really screaming about that. They have to throw away. Benny Cunningham was trying to get out into the pattern. But somebody had a double arm lock on him. Bradshaw definitely hobbling all second half. Definitely hampered. Has to have affected his efficiency. Yet Pittsburgh hung in there with defense. Even with Green out, Greenwood out, Pinning out. Really remarkable under the circumstances. Second and ten. All right, Franco Harris nailed for a loss of a couple. That was old. Richard Bishop who's been playing in there a lot for Ray Hamilton tonight. So it's going to be third down at 13. And New England is going to stop the clock. They want to win this thing in regulation if they can. Don't forget Saturday NCAA college football is coming your way here on ABC. That'll follow the soccer bowl which will match Vancouver. We had that big victory over the New York Cosmos this past weekend. Tampa Bay of course is in there. They've been in the soccer bowl three times and then immediately following well you're going to have Alabama versus Georgia Tech. Alabama number one last year. Georgia Tech coached by Pepper Rogers. He was a fine collegiate coach. And they've got that good young quarterback Mike Kelly coming up. That Saturday and Thursday night will be in the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado, for the Broncos and the Los Angeles Rams. You're high on Mike Kelly, Frank. I'm high on a kid named Ford from Meredith's alma mater, SMU. SMU. Yeah, Mike is. He's going to be a good one, Howard. Or he is already, I guess. They got some good horses down there. Mind you, again, the time for our start in Denver will be 8.30 Eastern time. Terry Bradshaw limping back in. We've told you about him leaving in the second quarter for x-rays, coming back out to open the second half. But he's going to be sore right now. It's really going to hurt the morning. Third down, 13. The wing has stopped the clock with 124 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Stallworth is open. And Stallworth stepped out of bounds at the 45, and he's got the first down. Eight. Stops the clock at 114. Good job, I think, by Terry that time. You'll notice that he got some pressure, uh, dropped a little bit deep, did a slight scramble to the left, picked up Stallworth, who did a good job of coming back to meet that ball. Look at, look at him strong arm that. Yep, he does have that arm, doesn't he? Mike Haynes. Yep, that's where he stepped in. 114, and the Steelers have three timeouts. Stallworth now six receptions on the night for 95 yards. I've got a feeling at old Matt Barr is going to have a chance to redeem that missed extra point here in a little while. Bradshaw in trouble. Well, maybe I'm wrong. And did he get it off? 
No, they're going to bring it back to the 40. They say his knee had touched. A little that bit of rough nothing around there. I'll tell you, that could be as a result of the new rule. That's right. The referee has got to, all the officials are alerted. Anytime the quarterback is in an obvious grasp of a defender, they are to blow a quick whistle. Again, another rule instituted this year. And the idea is safety, but Bradshaw is a big, strong dude, and he gets a lot of them off in the arms of defenders. Now, that's when they're going to whistle. You see right now, yep. the back of... You're right, Tony waving his hand, so it was in your rule. Good call, Giff. Second down, 15. Third sack of the night for New England. Uh-huh. This will be the fourth. Uh-huh. Back to the 29-yard line. That time it was Rod Choke. Yeah, he's having some ugly things to say to Terry. <laughs> Choke got the sack, but it was the middle of that line. Elm uh, Lunsford and Hamilton that caused Bradshaw to get out of the pocket. Look at that. That's Sugar Bear that had a clean shot at him, and he had to make him move up. So Rod Choke came in and put him away. And New England stops the clock once again with 35 seconds. They would like to force the Steelers to punt the football, give them field position, and try and win it in regulation. But the Patriots now are down to one timeout. Might be a good chance to see them come in and try to put that pressure on the punter. They, we haven't seen New England do that really that much tonight. But they do have some gifted punt return guys. I imagine they would rely on that too. 35 seconds. Son of a gun. He Third down and break it. Clayburn can break it. The rookie Sanford can break it. Third down, 24, and I think Pittsburgh now is thinking in terms, let's get it into overtime. They will be a little bit careful with how they put the football up in the air. If indeed they even put it in the air. John lost him a contact lens. They ain't putting that data back in there. That's really done a lot. You know, a lot of the players that wouldn't be able to play if it wasn't for contact lane. They've got a man where you can put them in there and leave them. Third and 24. Stallworth comes in again. New England now with one timeout. Kind of a nice opening for the new coach here, don't you think? I'm not so sure. I mean, uh, at least he's right in here, you know. I mean, they've got a lot of action going. Quickly as they cheer you, they can boo you. If Ron wins the game, he's a temporary hero. If he loses, just as quickly a go. Well, a little confusion on the field. Now we're ready to go at third and 24, 35 seconds remaining. That shot will put it in the air. Maybe. Oh, and I go, they're going to get him for throwing it away, I believe. Yeah, I think they are, too. There was a receiver fairly close, but it was an underhanded toss. Tony McGee was breathing down Bradshaw's neck, and they're going to get him for throwing the football away. And I'll tell you, that could help. 27 seconds left. He was trying to spring out to the outside, looked to me all along there. But they was a good move by McGee. That little roll to the outside. Bishop's coming in there. Boy, that McGee, look at those strides McGee's got. Yes, golly. He's not a wolf that ball. <laughs> and ball. That's a tough penalty because that is also penalty plus loss of down. And that means it'll be fourth down. And Craig Colquitt will be putting from somewhere around the 10 yard line. They put Stanley Morgan back in to receive the punt at the 36-yard line. You did have to speculate that New England's going to go for it. They have one timeout. <laughs> Pittsburgh senses that. They tighten up. Colquitt gets it off. Morgan calls for the fair catch at the 43. 21 seconds on the clock. New England has one timeout. Here we go. It'll take a bit of doing against this Pittsburgh defense to get into field goal position. You're absolutely correct. If we go to overtime, there'll be a three-minute break. Toss of the coin. We'll be in sudden death. Any word from our director? He's ready.
21 seconds and one timeout. The receivers are Harold Jackson splitting now to the left. Out to the right comes Stanley Morgan, the tight end, number 81, Russ Francis. Francis wide open and again, Grogan under pressure was pounded to the turf once again. Could not get it to him. But the crowd is taking it out on that young man and indeed, as I poked my head out of our booth a couple of minutes ago, Writer on the Boston Globe said, why don't they put in our quarterback? Well, those things happen. He is uh, taking it out on Grogan. Didn't uh, Francis look uh, extremely open to you that last time when yeah. he was kind of standing there by himself? Right down the middle. They must be trying to protect those sidelines instead of that middle shot. They got one shot down the middle, 16 seconds to go. 18, 17, four. Second and 10. 16 seconds. That's it. Grogan had the time yeah. that time. There were no receivers open. He's dropped back at the 38-yard line. Loss of five. John Banizak was in there. Tom Beasley, number 65. Banizak, 76. They were both there. Now you got to consider, well, now do you want to really take the chance because you don't have that much time? Maybe they decide they, they're going to use it, aren't they? Grogan calls his last timeout. Moves over to the sideline. And like Pittsburgh a few moments ago, we're going to win it. We're going to win it in overtime. Again, in the overtime period, there are two timeouts per team. Well, our first Monday night telecast is not, well, not yet in actuality, but we are nine seconds away from sudden death. And they'll play to the first score. Grogan hangs it high. Looking for pass interference, probably. Doesn't get it. Russ Francis was down there with the entire Steelers secondary. <laughs> It's time for one more of those plays. That's what the defenders have to be very careful about, that they do not give up a pass interference call because the period would not end on a defensive foul. New England. They we were 11-5 last year. Steelers 14-2. They lost only to Houston and Los Angeles. Then New England going into the playoffs were shocked with the departure of their coach, Chuck Fairbanks. Houston came up and also came on after defeating Miami, and they trounced the Patriots right here. And it's picked off by Dwayne Woodruff. Oh, Dwayne fell down. Regulation time is over. I think he's still going on Frankie Lateral. What is going on there? Now it's over. Well, it kind of summed it up, didn't it? Yeah. So we are going to go to overtime. There will be a toss of a coin. We will have a three-minute intermission. And we'll play some more football. Oh, boy. Area game stats. First down. Pittsburgh a slight edge. Rushing New England the edge. Passing Pittsburgh a big edge. Frank. And the New England Patriots along with the Steelers must labor on. Actually here in the East it is no longer Labor Day. <laughs> Jack Lambert he's labored a little. All tied at 13 after regulation play. Chuck No looking for his 100th overall victory as a professional coach. Entering his 11th year of play. A remarkable record. It all got tied up this way. Sidney Thornton comes out of the backfield, number 38. New England overlooks him. Well, why shouldn't they? Sidney Thornton has caught six passes in two years. This was a big one. That tied it up. 21 yards. Bradshaw to Sidney Thornton. Bradshaw playing on a damaged toe. Our, the rookie from Penn State out of the conversion. And that's where we are. All right, down to it. Let's go down to it. I'll tell you what. Wait a minute, wasn't Denver, Minnesota our last overtime game? That's right, a year ago. Yeah, that was yeah. our last one. 
Now at the very top of the telecast, Don Meredith in his discussion of whether or not New England had a quarterback problem. Told you that the fans were not happy with him. He's been getting his rips in the newspapers. And if he had not had a decent first half, Don suggested we might see Kevin Hall one in the second half. But you're not going to see a new quarterback now in the overtime. Hey, yeah, Grogan is 11 for 31, but he's also has been on his tail about 11 times also. Oh, yeah. He has not had any passing room back there to speak of. He's been lucky to get off as good as he has. Matt Barr kicks it off. Alan Clark, the rookie of Northern Arizona, is deep, but it will not get to him. Taken there instead by Rick Sanford, the number one draft pick out of South Carolina. And Sanford gets it out to the 27-yard line. So here we go. Hope you don't have anything big planned early in the morning out there. <laughs> What are your plans, Skip? Well, it's already early morning here. Well, we had two overtime games yesterday. England beating the Jets. Atlanta beating New Orleans. First and ten. New England has the ball. They won the toss with their own 27. Andy Johnson, left side. And he runs into John Banizak on that right side of the Steeler defense after a gain of a yard, a yard and a half, giving second down and eight. Second and eight, Rogan rolling out. What was that? Well, at least he didn't hit one of the Steelers. But it, well, I don't even what that was. Who was he throwing to? Well, if Francis was in the area. Cunningham was semi in the area. I see. In the low 80s at, game, at the kickoff time. Sure, it's much cooler now. Third and eight. Cunningham is in motion. That first formation tonight. Grogan going for Morgan. And Wagner was there. He'll be booed, but he could not throw it. Good coverage by Wagner. And it'll be fourth down. And Eddie Hare, who has been very active in his first NFL game, the rookie from Tulsa, comes out to do the punting for New England. Lynn Swan positions himself between his 30 and 35 yard line. There's Lynn. Back in 74, he had over a 14 yard average and was the last Steeler to return a punt for a touchdown. That also in 74. Fair catch called for by Swan at the 30. Steelers have the football, 31 yard line. Bradshaw puts Swan out to the right. Setbacks remain. Franco Harris and Sidney Thornton. Harris gets the call and finds a little opening, ducks his head, and gets an extra couple of yards out of it. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Harris now 23 attempts, 57 yards. Tough New England defense. And the world's champions were working on them. I think that means something in these overtime games. I really do. Back with they've won. Second and six. Swan is right. Stallworth is left. Sidney Thornton. There you and go. he was the man that tied it up. And he's looking good tonight. Inside New England territory. Close to the 48-yard line. Tripped up there by Tim Fox. He really has come on to have a big night. And the late going early on, no. But... Needle them most. Look at them there. That big hole opening for him. Another fine block by 57, Sam Davis. And it appeared to me 57 on the other side overran it. That was Steve Nelson. He tried to cut up on the inside and catch it and ran right past the runner. First and 10. Ball inside the 49. Franco Harris. Thornton with a good block. Harris has some running room. And a good open field tackle by Mike Haynes, but not until Franco Harris had uh, picked up five yards. It'll be second and five. Here's the time to get one of those feelings done. Don't you get the feeling that Pittsburgh is the team now that's alive, that's coming on? I thought they would do it before the regular season. I mean, before the, re the end of the regular uh, regulation game. 
But uh, I see them moving around there. They're getting together. You mentioned we both talked about, all of us talked about the injuries, but they seem to have something working for them right now. Yeah. Second and five, the ball at the 43. Franco Harris inside. Uh -huh. Good block go. again by Davis. And Harris breaks it down to the 33-yard line. That was a beautiful piece of execution. You had a perfect view of the whole opening and the way Franco. Look at it again. Amazing quality, I think, that Franco has. Uh, Look at that. Well, he, he, in a big game, you're going to put him in there, and uh, he's going to come through for you. So a big game, whatever this is a key situation, he seems to always come up with one. They're getting close down there now. That's the heart of the place kick. Rookie from Penn State. Missed the opening conversion tonight on the Steelers' first touchdown. Two kickoffs were poor. Ball inside the 33-yard line of New England. All tied at 13. In case you just left the late movie. Franco Harris, right side. Strung him out. Out of bounds. Top to box. Inside the 32. Steve Nelson there again, 57. Great performance by Nelson tonight, all over the field. Hunt was over there as Hawkins, and they all strung that thing out. You're right. That's back to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be second down and 10. And we're going to see the designated pass rusher, they call him up here, Tony McGee, come into the lineup, number 78. New England thinking pass from Bradshaw. They in there 3-4, however. Lots of time. This is Sidney Thornton. Look at oh, this oh, big oh. man. And Thornton short of the first down, close to the 25, where it's going to be third down and a long three. Just pulled them over. Oh, he hit Tony McGee a shot. Tony McGee weighs 260, and Thornton goes 230. Now, that's going to give you at least in terms of physics quite a violent collision good protection that offensive line that time and he did run over it, didn't he and a good call third and four I bet you nobody's pulling harder for them to make a first down than Matt Barr <laughs> get it closer well we're going to see a field goal attempt now on fourth down Thornton short of the first down well and what pressure to put on a youngster in his first pro football game. This yeah. is Matt Barr, the sixth-round draft pick from Penn State. Beat out an eight-year veteran of the Steelers, Roy Jarella. He's kicked them a lot further than this from the Nittany Lions. If Joe Paterno is watching, 41-yard attempt. And, and New England calls timeout. <laughs> they want him That's to think right. about That's it a little right. longer. Old tack. Not a bad timeout. Understandable tactic, frequently used. You know, he broke most of his brother's records at Penn State. One of them for most in a season. He kicked 22 yard, 22 field goals a year ago. What was the longest one? Do you have that figure? 48 there? yards at Penn State. 48. Yep. He missed one earlier here tonight from 43 yards out. He got little foot into the football on his kickoffs on the one he missed. But maybe now, having scored one, going in country. Oh, it'll be a 41-yard attempt. For a wonderful opportunity, don't you think? <laughs> the uh, healthy thing to Chuck Noll, I'll tell you. Craig Colquitt is the holder. So I don't think we'll have any gymnastics. The respective coach by the holder. On Mike, hard there. Mike Home Webster is snapping the ball. Chuck no. <laughs> Played a little over five minutes of overtime. Tied at 13. This could undo it. 61,000 fans are still here and they're on their feet. Right through the middle. I think he's got it. You betcha. Right through. The rookie from Penn State has won the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Matt Barr, 41-yard field goal. You saw a quick shot of Ron Earhart. His head dropped. 
<laughs> as Chuck Knoll has won his 100th game as a professional football coach. What a game for that man to have won and for his team to have won. Broken down by injury. So many of them you almost couldn't count them. The game itself became a recital of who was hurt, who was not in there. Yet, compellingly, they held together. As you look at the field goal again, and the young man who missed the point after and kicked so poorly in the early going winds up the hero. That's the way he did it for Joe Paterno. He doesn't care much about pressure. Good placement there by Colfitt. Yep. He's got the foot into it there. He knows, look at this. He says, you did it, you little rascal. God, the dang. <laughs> kickers love kickers. Yeah, they do. They are a special breed. But, <laughs> all right. Once again, the final score, Pittsburgh 16, New England 13 in overtime. Be sure to join us this Thursday night. 8.30 Eastern for a special Thursday night edition of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The NFC Western Division champion Los Angeles Rams takes on the AFC Western Division champion Denver Broncos. The travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be made by United Airlines. United is building the largest airline in the world around you. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.